Hi, pals. Sorry, I was taking a minute to, like, update the Does the Dog Die page, because I realized I hadn't done that in a minute, uh, and I meant to yesterday, and then forgot to do it. So I was doing it now, <laughs> and I don't know if some of the, the things that I updated actually, like, saved. It's fine, though. Um, reminder, if you make an account with Does the Dog Die, you can, you can fill out the content warnings, too! <laughs> um, yeah. It's early. It's earlier than normal. Uh, it's also not what I usually do on Saturdays, but hi, I have death mark brain rot, um, and it's all I can think about, and it's all I can, I can focus on right now. So we're, we're just playing Deathmark. Oops all Deathmark. I hope you like Deathmark, cause it's oops all Deathmark. Um. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I do, I do have the Deathmark. Um, you can't see it, but it's there. Oh boy, it's there. No, I, listen. <laughs> I, like, I woke up this morning and I saw that, like, Vampire Survivors had, had a new update and they had a couple of new achievements, so I had to do that again to get myself back to, like, 100%ing all of Vampire Survivors. But the entire time that I was playing, I was just like, I'd rather be playing Deathmark. Consider. What if I was playing Deathmark instead? Um, so, like, we're here now, playing Deathmark. Um, it's, fortunately, despite it being, like, a shit ton of reading, it's a, it's a pretty easy game to play. I don't have to do a whole bunch. Don't, I, I don't have to think too hard about it, except in, like, a select few situations. So we might be able to just kind of, like, vibe all day, and that'd be exciting. But, uh... Yeah, that's 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 the plan. We're just gonna stream until I don't want to stream anymore because it's Saturday and it's been a rough couple of weeks. And you know what? I deserve to just not do anything this weekend <laughs> that I don't want to do. Um, I've already made food for the weekend. Got all my cooking done this morning. Did most of the cleaning that I needed to do. That's needed to be done. <laughs> Uh, so we're just gonna be here. I will have to stop at some point, uh, to do some of my, like, my physical therapy exercises and stuff like that, but, like, we can do that during a break. Um, yeah, oh, hope you're doing well. I hope things are going good. And, uh, I hope you're ready for this dang silly video game. I <laughs> say silly. Oh, it's just a silly little goofy game. It's not. It's horrifying. Um, I need my other Joy-Con to turn on. There we go. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. We just spoke to everyone in the infirmary, didn't we? And then we were gonna go somewhere else. Yeah, we gotta go get the silly ghosts. We gotta be like, hey, Kashima, what's going on, ma'am? What are you doing? What do you think you're doing? Um, and then tell her to get out of here. Oh, right, we have to go investigate the other, the other things, right? We have to go investigate the gym, uh, cause we did the art rooms yesterday, and Michiho was possessed, and that was horrible. Uh, we were talking about the, <laughs> the piece of shit scale, and, and trying to figure out where, where the, the adult teacher fell on it. And it kept sliding wildly from piece of shit to okay guy. Um, I don't think he's gonna be a, a great guy. I don't think he can go all the way to the one end anymore. Because he was doing it bad with the student. Even if he wasn't, like, actively encouraging uh, the inappropriate behaviors. <laughs> he wasn't discouraging it either. <laughs> At least not in the way that he should have. Um, so let's, let's get to the gym. I think we have, I think we have one more tooth to find. I'm trying to get all wiggly. I did, I did decide to wear my, my 
my, my slip mouth woman shirt today. I don't usually wear it because it's kind of scratchy. And it's really hot because it's made out of like a, a cheap polyester material. But fortunately, it's pretty chilly today. So it's it's an appropriate wear. <laughs> but um, yeah, we have one more tooth to find. The gym is the only other place that I can think of that we needed to investigate from yesterday. And anything else we'll we'll figure it out figure out as we go. Yeah. Uh I leave the special building and walk to the gymnasium. Pull out the key, I borrow it and unlock the door. Right, Sakamoto gave us like the keys to a lot of the buildings, didn't she? The light doesn't work at night, huh? Is it a spiritual disturbance or something? I mean, probably. Let's be real. <laughs> Perhaps. Chills rack my spine. A very, a very bad feeling all of a sudden. There's no turning back now. We're looking for like a dark stain in the... Oh, God. What is this feeling? I feel strange chills and an intense pressure the moment I enter the gym. I was about to say, we're like trying to find... A dark stain in the storage room of the gym, right? Um, I don't think that's, like, our top priority at the moment, though. <laughs> Can't breathe. Well, that's normal for you, bud. <laughs> Let's be real. <laughs> Bad. The Departed's laugh is ringing in my head. Is this also part of their curse? Staying here for too long won't do me any good. I'd better end the investigation quickly. Once you enter cursed place, your spirit will decrease, even if you simply stand in the area. Also, you can't run in these places. Great. Keep a watchful eye on your spirit gauge and escape from danger. When places are cursed, there's always a source. Explore the vicinity while playing cl paying close attention to your remaining spirit. Okay. Wow, this is horrible. I'm not allowed to run. It's too dangerous to proceed. We need to find the cause of the curse. Oh, okay. It's an emergency exit that connects to the field. Something small falls to the floor. Toof! Oh, why does it look like that? I feel severe chills radiating from my palm. Is the severe cold being generated by the, the this tooth a curse? Boss, is this thing perhaps what's making us ill? Yeah, I think so. Isn't it better to throw it away then? Wait, how about we just smash it? Put the cursed tooth on the floor and quietly step on it. Cursed tooth shatters into pieces. Yeah, it's the worst tooth? But it's fine, we're not dying anymore. <laughs> I hear a frustrated scream, then my chills subside. In order to stop the curse, you need to shatter the cause of the phenomenon. The cursed tooth. Why teeth? I know we kind of asked that yesterday, but like... Why teeth? <laughs> okay. But I still need my other tooth. Yeah, oops, all teeth. Um... <laughs> it's teeth? Always has been. Uh, there's an iron basket for balls. Did they forget to tidy it up? But is there another tooth that I can find? This door that leads to the backstage. Okay. We're not doing... And then they guess. Mwah. Sorry. Uh... <laughs> it's teeth all the way down. It's too many teeth. Uh, we are coming back here just so that we can, like, heal up. Um... Because... <laughs> Because that kind of hurt. Yeah, it was bad. It went... Our health was going down fast. I didn't like that. And it was happening even when I wasn't moving. It, it was not great. Is the thing. Oh! Oh, hey! Oh, I see that! Uh, inside the room, all kinds of sports equipment for PE classes has been arranged. This seems like it's the storage room. Since we've come all the way here, let's examine this place thoroughly. I mean, that's the dark spot that they were talking about, right? 
Cool. Uh, but before we look at it, a few large rubber balls are lined up here. Aren't these something you use for exercise? Read about it in a sports medicine book. Um, there. Mm -hmm. Tooth. Sloppily folded mat. Is it just me or is there some dark object moving behind the shadow of the mat? Turn it over. Fine, but be careful. Put my feet on the vaulting box in front of me with one hand on the mat. Farley, can you stop? Hold on a second. Hey. Hold on. Can you stop? You're both being very cute, but your tail is hitting my monitor. And it's and it's wiggling the connection. <laughs> Please, sir, cut it out. Sorry, Farley is being a menace passively. Just by existing. Uh, and then I swiftly flip it over at once. A massive swarm of black things burst out, scattering everywhere. It startled me. Those were insects, right? Probably. But is there a tooth? Find something on the mat. We found the other tooth. Pick it up. It's an eerie tooth. We can get it a plus one to our bag again. Isn't that exciting? Oh yeah, it does unlock, like, pages and stuff for people. I'm... <laughs> it's the bug tooth. I am worried. Like, I want to read these, because, like, it's unlocking new ones. Or new things about them. But there was one for Sakamoto, right? <laughs> Um. Okay. Sorry, I was like, I was concerned that it was gonna pull like a deadly premonition and like put spoilers in the things that we've unlocked. I assume that uh, maybe like the thing that it unlocks is 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 this just this funny page of information about them. Whatever. It's fine. Or maybe it just unlocks their, their page in general. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. It's just information about the character. We don't... We can look at those if we need to later. Um... I mean... <laughs> fair. It, it does seem like it's probably just Deadly Premonition that's gonna pull a Deadly Premonition, but... But what if something else does, too? I'm scared. Uh, there are black stains across the wall. Is this what Abe was referring to with that bit about the walls died with black stains in his note? Surely examined it well. Can I, can I inspect? Hold on, I have to get the cats out of here. They're fighting behind my monitor. Get down, get out, go. Both of you, go. Go on, get. Thank you. Oh my goodness. Wild creatures. Um, it looks like the black stains are oozing out from the wall. What's causing it? Dust? Defective building materials? Mold? Even after examining it closely, I can't tell what it is. <gasps> Hi, Salvia. Don't worry about it. <laughs> what do you mean, WTF? It's fine. It's just it's just water damage on the wall, probably. <laughs> <coughs> How's it going? Cost? Is it just me, or does that stain resemble a face? You're just imagining things, Damon. Don't worry about it. <laughs> now that he mentions it, the stain does kind of look like a human face. It mentioned this in this note. The wall in the storage room is dyed with black stains. They are traces of regret left by the dead. Vengeful spirits make their appearance known to those who take interest in them. And you must never touch that stain. <laughs> right? <laughs> Yeah, they uh they took like extra extra care to make sure that nose was very like 
distinctive. <laughs> it's like the the eyes and the mouth. Yeah, we can probably like, you know, play that off as as water damage or something. But that nose. <laughs> Uh, you must never touch that stain, huh? I'm gonna touch it. Here's the thing about this stain. I'm gonna touch it. <laughs> um, hold on. Do I have anything that I can touch it with? Not really. Okay. Um. <laughs> Big art pieces and art attack made of like dirt or salt for some reason. <laughs> I could see I could see that. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> oh jeez. I've I have heard of it and I have seen clips of it is it's it's something that I have recently in like the last year learned about. <laughs> but I think I know what you're talking about. It's like specifically the like the, the 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 dirt sculptures or whatever. I don't fucking know. It's weird. It's weird. It's a weird thing, and I'm gonna touch it, despite being told specifically, don't touch it. Step further inside, approaching the stain. You gonna give it a try? Never change. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cautious, cautiously extend my fingers and touch the stain. I think I think you're the one who told me about it, Fruity. <laughs> told me about Art Attack. Uh, will a vengeful spirit really appear? I mean, probably. Jump scare warning. Seems like nothing happened. Okay, never mind. It was all it was all a ruse. I guess this rumor was a baseless one. They're gonna get us when we least expect it. What? I hear something. The sound of someone moaning. I think. Oh, what the fuck? Oh, what the fuck? Before I know it, she's already there. Female student with scissors piercing both of her eyes. Hold on, sorry. I'm trying to process this. It's taking me a minute to understand what's happening. Is this the vengeful spirit from the rumor? Is it just me or are the scissors piercing through their heads strangely huge? I mean, her head is very large and the scissors are very large. When you have a very large head... The only, only cure is very large scissors, right? That's how you fix that? That's not true. Could this be the spirit of student S who went missing in the gym? The fact that she appears this way means... What should we do, Cost? Should we get out of here? I don't think we can. Nah, no, we're looking for the truth behind Kashima. We can't leave now. Her ghost backstory is that she ran with scissors. This is why you never run with scissors. Do you want to end up like this girl? I will say, um, Deathmark has never disappointed uh, in regards to its monster designs, but they've really, like, upped their game for this one. Um, I think, I think Miss Zoo is still probably, like, one of the more disturbing monsters I've seen in in a in a situation like in a in a game like this or in something that's dealing with like ghosts like this um but the ones in this one so far have been very good um and I'm just happy to see that they're they're still absolutely killing it yeah very good horrible things <laughs> uh and I'm glad that we went back to the infirmary to heal up because of us, uh, of us having a suspensive act to deal with now. Am I dead? Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you're dead. No way. What should I do? 
How should I tell the spirit about her death? Oh shit, I don't remember which one was which. Hold on. Oh, I can't- okay. I forgot that I could get to the menu. Um, that's nice. She's supposed to be Miss S, right? Because this one talks about the gym? Yeah! But what did... So we can look at the yearbook as well. Okay, that just talks about her haunting the gym. Not necessarily what happened. So we want to use newspaper article B, right? Oh, Damon's got like real good scores for those. Um, I mean, do we want to tell her it was an unfortunate incident or killed by Kashima? Hold on. What is what? Probably should have like actually read this again. She went missing. Last seen in front of the gym. She was trying to run away from something. Looking back over her shoulder several times as she ran. I think I th I do think it was <laughs> kind of actually genuinely she was running with scissors. She fled into the gym and was never seen again. Uh, it's no way she would have been found. Kashima's grudge killed Miss S. So her co corpse disappeared from the world. Okay. It's true, this is what happens. If you run with scissors, you're gonna disappear, haunt a storage room, and then come back with a pair of giant scissors in your giant head. Um... I don't... I guess we'll tell her that she was killed by Kashima? And we'll have Damon do it because he's got good bedside manner. <laughs> Damon shows newspaper article B to the spirit of the female student and points to the cause of death. Let's say the person in this article is you. Did you die by Kashima's hands? Hey, afraid. Kashima. I knew it. Kashima had something to do with her death. Good! Okay, cool. Don't know... Who am I? Did she just ask, who am I? Yeah, she doesn't even remember her own name. I mean, I would be forgetting a lot of things, too, if I had a giant pair of scissors jammed into my head. Um, at this point, we would use the yearbook, right? Oh, which one is she? Uh, sorry. Looking back at our items. Because I don't remember the specific names. This isn't helpful. Hold on. Shida, Shinohara, or Shinji? It's not really like... Because those three names are, are the people that were in... Are like the... Are just... Are people with like the la a surname that starts with S in the art club, right? Sorry, it was, took me a minute to like figure out how to say literally anything. <laughs> That's... The teacher's... Thing. Okay, none of that is helpful. Um. What options do we have? All of them. We have all of them as an option. And I don't remember if when we were talking with anyone yesterday if we got confirmation of who who it was. I want to say it's... Wait. I thought that was supposed to be... Seiko? 
Hold on. Yeah, okay. So it's not Chinohara, because that is just incorrect. And it's Miho... Hold on, sorry. Miho Shinji Hikarashida. Hikari Hikaru. Infinite Dog. Infinite Hello. underscore dog is raiding with a party of four. Kesh and the gang welcome you. How is it going, pals? How are y'all? Yeah, we're <laughs> we're 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 puzzling right now. Um, give me just a second to get a shout out. Blasted Plastics Duck Simulator. How was that? How was stream? How are y'all? Oh, excuse me. Um, welcome on in. Uh, my name is Keisha. You can call me Keish. I use they them pronouns. I'm a queer mystery and horror game streamer. We're playing some spooky games right now. Um, <laughs> we are in 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 a bit of a pickle at the moment. Um, <laughs> but we're we're having a good time. Uh, playing a visual novel like video game called Deathmark. Um, it's full name Spirit Hunter Deathmark 2. Uh, it's the third game in the series, despite it being it's having the, a two in the number or in the title. I don't know how to talk right now. Oh my god. Um, it's good. It's great. It's spooky. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, because I tend to play horror games, I do offer. Uh, content warnings for all of our games. If you would like to check those out, they're there. I would recommend it for this game. Um, the the page is not fully filled out. Game is very new. Um, and so there are probably some that we have missed <laughs> so far, because I am just updating it as I'm updating the, the content warning page as we play. Um, but there are some, some general guidelines in there for you. Um, but yeah... It was chill, you were doing some art in the background while you watched the ducks float. That sounds delightful! Um, definitely a very different vibe over here right now! <laughs> uh, so buckle up! No, uh, that sounds delightful! Uh, and I'm glad it was- it was chill. We like- we like having a nice calm time from time to time. Um, well that sounds lovely. Uh, yeah, like I said, we're playing we're playing a, a scary game right now. It is, like I said, it's a visual novel, so it's very reading heavy. Um, I would say it's light on the horror. It's not, but I know for some people it's a little easier. It's more palatable just because it is a lot of, um, you know, like stills and stuff like that. It's all hand drawn, uh, or it's a, a drawn art style. Um, but it's, it's creepy. So, heads up there. Excuse me, I had to sneeze. Um, yeah, but, uh, we do, we do what we can to make it a, a good fun time. Regardless. <laughs> well then, if you love creepy, you're in the, in the right place. Uh, Deathmark is, is probably, like, one of my favorite games right now. Um, it's, like I said, like, it's part of a series. There's three games in the series as a whole right now. Uh, the first one, this is a, a direct sequel, uh, to the first in the series. The second one, just kind of in the same universe, different characters, though. I could take it or leave it. NG was not, not the greatest. Um, but this one has been delightful so far. We're only in the second chapter, or I guess third chapter, technically, huh? Um... But we're going around investigating uh, some hauntings and trying to do our best to put the spirits to rest while also trying to figure out who this weird spirit is that's that's professing its love to me. Um, but it's a good fun time. However, just, just to state, you've probably been streaming for a little while, so if you or anyone who's come over on the raid need to, need to run, um, Please do. Go do whatever you gotta do. It's important to me that you take care of your dang selves. Go get food. Go get water. Uh, do a little stretchy stretch. Make sure that you're, like, not staring at a computer screen or a, or a, a phone screen for too terribly long. Um, I plan on being here for a good long while, though. We've really only just started streaming. We've only been here for, like, let me see, not even 40 minutes. 
Um, so if you do want to hang out, feel free to lurk or come back later. Um, <laughs> it's, it's still technically here. We're just on a different screen. It's, it's, it's a lot. I know it is, Salvia. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but, but we're all, I think we're almost done with this section. This little bit. It's a bad creature. Um. <laughs> valid. Here's a nice thing about this game, though, because it is a visual novel. It's just, I can, I can just read everything, and you kind of pick up on what's happening based on, on what I'm saying. Um, but also, very valid. I know that, I know that you specifically have mentioned that you're like, you're dipping your toes in, into horror with me, and I, I appreciate that. I appreciate you being here. I appreciate you trying something new. I love that for you and for me. Um, thank you for trusting me uh, to to give you a good time. A good scary time. <laughs> You're just listening to the audio? Well, perfect. Um, I'll let you know when it is no longer on screen. Um, but yeah, uh, so yeah, <laughs> Infinite Dog and, and friends. Like I said, if y'all need to, to run along, uh, to go take care of whatever you need to take care of post-stream. I totally understand. Not a problem. Um, if you're still gonna stick around, though, we love to see that. Uh, and welcome in. It was a very long range spiel. I don't usually witter on for that long, but hey, sometimes you gotta. <gasps> Fruity, thank you for the contribution to the gummy hunt! How close, like, how, how, how far along are we with that? <gasps> Almost a quarter of the way there. Let's fucking go. <laughs> Robot did say to click the button. Uh, and you did. And that's that's appreciated. <laughs> I know that I know that like when I have a community challenge up, um, it's it's easy to forget that it's there. I even forget that it's there from time to time. Um Which is why I was like, hey, I should probably set that as a timer for the bot to tell everyone so that we can all remember together. Okay, we're trying to figure out her name. It's not Shinohara because the first name for that one didn't doesn't match what's in the, the yearbook. Her... It's Hikari. I keep wanting to say Hikaru uh, because Hikaru Shida is a, is a wrestler. Um, <laughs> so, you know, but it's Hikari and then Miho. All right, back to looking at the scary face. Hikari and Miho. I want to know if it's Hikari Shida. Damon points at a name in the yearbook, trying to let her know her name. Is it Hikari? Ma'am, are you Hikari? That doesn't mean we've done it right. That just means we were able to show it. Your name's right here in the album. Hikari Shida from Art Club. Don't know, can't remember. Okay. Oh, jeez. It's like that name isn't ringing any bells. Okay, so then it's gotta be the third option, right? I know there might be clues. Here's the thing. Is it Miho Shinji? Even points at her name in the yearbook. I mean, I'm glad that he's got like such a good, like a high success rate on these, because this would suck otherwise. Miho Shinji. I'm Miho. Miho. Yes. Miho. And she's gone. The lady is officially gone now. <laughs> Looks like this is the right choice. Great. I think we might have had like some dialogue yesterday that like let us know it was Miho. But that was yesterday. And it is now today. Victimess, the ghost of Miho Shinji disappears. <laughs> Something lying on the ground where the spirit stood earlier. A folded piece of note paper. Adorable pink paper filled with small letters. 
Dear Mr. Hirose, I was so happy when I got that birthday present from you. I really treasure it, and it really, uh, tells me how you feel about me. Because you're an adult, you can't say the words, right? Yikes! Um, you can, you can come back in, Salvia. It's safe now. For now. <laughs> but that's fine with me. I can feel that our hearts are connected. I love you as much as you love me. It's a shame my graduation is still so far away. Once I graduate, we will no longer be student and teacher. We can stand beside one another as equals. My mother will surely love you. I want to build a happy family with you one day. Do you get my feelings? I don't need an answer because I already know how you feel. I love you, Mr. Hirose. I love you so, so much. Ma'am, this is inappropriate! This looks like a love letter. One that's addressed to a teacher. Love letter to teacher has been acquired. Teenage years are a sensitive time with a lot of new hormonal changes. Can't be too judgmental about her feeling deeply in love. I mean... I can. <laughs> I, I get... Listen, I think I think it's I think it's for a lot of people, not everyone, but for a lot of people, I think it's normal to have a crush on like a teacher. But like to profess your undying love is a little intense and also highly inappropriate. <laughs> they are so much older than you are. And they have a moral obligation to to draw those boundaries. I was talking about this yesterday, but like of. Uh, though the kid who wrote this seems to be quite the daydreamer. She's allowing her fantasies to warp reality, and that's a rough road to go down. Yeah, and he's not helping by, you know, not saying no. <laughs> Clearly and explicitly. Instead, just being like a weirdo about everything. Turn to the spot where the ghost was standing. Did Miho Shinji write this? <laughs> Why did that hurt us? Ugh. Sudden dizziness sends me reeling. This feeling. Away. Are we gonna get another ghost? Oh no, we're getting another vision. Vision is projected into my brain. Is it more inappropriate visions? <laughs> in my mind, I see three girls talking in what looks like the art room. Uh, that is the storage room, actually. Why did you call us here, Manabe? I have a prep class soon. Quit your whining and read this letter already. That bitch slipped this into Teach's uh, sketchbook. Seriously? Are they dating or what? What are you gonna do, Manabe? You love him, don't you? It's gonna be hers at this rate. Ugh, oh, shut up. I know that already. I made up my mind. I'm gonna do the thing. And then, and then that's when she gets all inappropriate and touchy-feely with him, and they take a picture, even though he's like, this is- don't do that. That's gross. For real? Both you and him are gonna be in such deep shit if you do that. Oh, come on, Shinji. Manabe's already made up her mind, you know? We're her friends, so we should support her decision, right? No! No! <laughs> Fine. Kamio and I will be hiding, then. Make sure you're ready to capture a crucial moment, okay? Okay. This is how I'm gonna take him back from her. I- this is- no. What do we do with this letter, though? Keep it, Shinji. We may be able to use it in case our plan fails. The vision fades, as does my dizziness. My heart rate is returning to normal, too. The three girls I saw just now were Manabe, Kamio, and Shinji. Was that scene from five years ago? Frost, you look pale. I'm fine. Just feeling a little lightheaded. Rest for a moment if you're feeling unwell. Should I tell Damon about what I saw? I'm not entirely sure what was really happening, though. We'll gather more information to avoid leading him down the wrong train of thought. I, uh, you should probably tell him. You should probably just let him know. Just share a little bit. Can you at least tell him you're having visions? <laughs> Consider. Say, cost. 
I think we've done a solid job of gathering information about Kashima. At this point, we might benefit from organizing our thoughts before continuing. How does that sound to you? Sure. Let's go back to the infirmary and discuss what we've learned with the others. All right. All right, all right, all right. It scares me sometimes. <laughs> we go onto a new a new screen and like our our companion ends up in front of us, but when the screen loads in, they're like walking towards us. It's just there just shouldn't be any movement. There shouldn't be any movement when we go to a new screen. Share all the information we've gathered so far with the other mark bearers. Uh, we will, but first, uh, I want that. I want that enhance. Excuse me, it goes up by two percent. Yeah, hell yeah. Better bag. Just to triple check. Yeah, cool. We found them all for this chapter. Thanks, Moy. Uh, let's talk to everyone. Let's go. Shared all the knowledge we've gained with the other mark bearers. Hmm, super complicated case with a bunch of people involved, huh? In situations like this, my boss always tells me to organize the information chronologically. Guess this all started with Rei Kashima and her teacher's love affair. Kashima seemed to be blindly in love with the teacher. That love letter we found in the gymnasium makes it pretty obvious. Kashima must have written that. Her feelings sure were intense. She got a pair of scissors from him and already started thinking about marriage. Who's the teacher? Uh, it was... I don't remember his name, but his initials were SH, right? Uh. SH's notebook in the pencil case? Sorry, I. My neighbors are actual shitbags. <laughs> Hate them. Uh, even with noise canceling headphones on, I can still hear them stomping around. Uh, the notebook probably belonged to the teacher. So the teacher had the initials SH, and he was the art teacher. Wait, it was Hirose, right? Or Hirose? And whatever his first name is. And he said he lost his brass pencil case somewhere. Hold on, does that mean... Yeah, it's most likely the pencil case show and I found. Right! Sosuke Hirose is engraved on the case, and our own known teacher's initials are SH. Note in the case belonged to the same person, that can only mean one thing. Impressive cost. I agree with you. The teacher Kashima was in love with was Sosuke Hirose, the art teacher. He didn't strike me as someone who was hopelessly in love with his students. That's because he wasn't. He was just really bad at, you know, drawing boundaries and telling them no. <laughs> Even if he admired Kashima, he still maintained his distance as a teacher. Oh, he never let Kashima know that what, uh, that was what he was doing. Yeah, exactly. If he made that clear, Kashima wouldn't still be clinging to her love in the afterlife. What a passionate girl. Can't believe she'd continue to love her teacher even after death. So what made her become a spirit anyway? It is strange. The dead only become spirits if they have grudges. Which means that Kashima remains in this world because she's trying to avenge herself. So what's her grudge? We've yet to discover that, but... Her target's mentioned in the rumor. Wait, for real? Um... Which part of the rumor points us towards Mouth Kashima's target? Sorry, my brain just said, nope, we're done. I mean, she just stabs people from the inside. So I don't think that tells us anything. And she haunts the cemetery, right? <laughs> Thank you for the lurk, Salvia. Enjoy your game. <laughs> um... 
And the words, the words that she says are just nonsense, right? It's the like, Abe, the ocean, Gmon, whatever. I don't know how I'm able to like recall any of those. I don't know if those are right. I think that's right. There's like another one in there, and I don't remember. It's just like it's just like a bunch of gibberish. Which part of the rumor points us towards her target? I mean, I don't think it matters if I choose wrong here, so... It's think she chants. Yukami, Ocean, Jimon, Abe. Okay, I had like... Three of the four, right? Not in the right order, but they were there. That's her target. What?! You're not making any sense. It's just a bunch of random crap. How's that pointing to anything? Sound it out. And think about it, Shu. This is what she actually says. Are you Kamio Shinji Manabe? You Kami Ocean. Ocean. Jimon Abe. Oh! Oh! I thought it was just a bunch of nonsense. I thought Vincenzo was having a strong. Oh shit! <laughs> Sorry, that's that's cool. Kashima's searching for her fellow club members. Kamio, Shinji, and Manabe. She's definitely doing it to avenge herself. Sorry, that's really neat. It's real simple, but it's real neat. But Kamio and Shinji are... Exactly. Kashima already killed them five years ago. But she doesn't realize that. For her, time's probably stood still since the moment of her death. I wonder why she despises the three of them, because they 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 were all in on that horrible picture of them assaulting the teacher. <laughs> to tell you the truth about that, I was shown a strange vision on two different occasions when we were investigating. I recount the scenes I saw to the other I saw to the other three. First one was a scene of Manabe scheming something after discovering Kashima's love letter. The other one was of Asina Manabe seducing the teacher, along with the sound of a shudder. Attempting to seduce the teacher. <laughs> um. Wow, a spiritual vision. That's so amazing. No wonder you're called the spirit doctor. Stop trying to make spirit doctor a thing, Moe! <laughs> Pitch that story to my ba. Oh, come on, Watanabe. Take this more seriously. So in short... Manabe and her friends had hatched a plot to drive Kashima and the teacher apart. So that's why Kashima despises them. Correct. I have no idea what happened to Kashima and her beloved teacher after that. What the hell? That's literally the most important piece of info we need to discover Kashima's grudge. Um, cost? Miss Sakamoto might know something about it. She was working here when it happened. You think she'd tell me something like that? She hates my guts. With this much evidence, I don't think she can evade your questions anymore. Plus, you can always drop Mr. Konoi's uh, name if push comes to shove. Looks like the time to unwrap the dark secret of the tragedy five years ago has come. Tragedy that originated with Kashima's love. Alright. Uh, let's do a little CV save. God, have we really, like, played for 11 hours? Jesus. <laughs> I mean, I know some of that was me just like sitting around and not doing anything, but not that much of it. Goodness gracious. What else could you possibly want from me, Mr. Cost? It's getting quite late and I want to go home. Just wanted to ask you one last question before that. I want to know the truth behind the incident five years ago. I tell her what I've learned about the relationship between Kashima and the teacher, as well as Manabe and the others. I think you didn't cover that much so quickly. Just who on earth are you? I'm Vincenzo Gost. 
Tell me, Miss Sakamoto. What did Manabe and the others uh, do five years ago? What happened to Kashima and Hirose? Should never have worked overtime tonight. Not only did I work late, but now I'm forced to recall an unpleasant incident. Sorry about that. Oh, hush. It's too late for your apologies now. So what do you want to know? Um... <gasps> Stars! Thank you for the contribution to the gummy hunt. We're a quarter of the way there, y'all! <laughs> I'm excited for gummy hunts! Good afternoon to you, too! How's it going? How are you doing? Let's gill- Let's gill? Let's grill Ritsu Sakamoto! I'm good at reading. Why is she hiding the truth? Because it may affect the school's reputation. Can't let outsiders know about it. Whatever. It's a stupid reason. Just recalling the incident after you brought it up is already causing me great discomfort. Well, it's too fucking bad. <laughs> doing math this afternoon? I'm always doing math. Never not doing math. That's a lie. I'm very often not doing math. <laughs> oh, doing many maths, yes. Bless you. <laughs> Bad maths. Five years ago, a picture was posted on the school's bulletin board. Yikes. It was Mr. Hirose and a female student in her underwear. Well, this, okay. Listen, it's scandalous. It's not like she's not wearing a skirt and or part of her shirt. It's still very scandalous, but be a little more objective. That student was Megumi Manabe from third year. Naturally, we called them both in and inquired about the incident. Manabe admitted she was the girl in the photo, but claimed Mr. Hirose seduced her first. Meanwhile, Mr. Hirose denied it and claimed Manabe had set him up. Yeah, she's wearing it wrong, but it is there. <laughs> You can't say she's in her underwear when there are significantly more other clothes there. <laughs> but she is in, in a state of undress. That's, that's, that's how you can phrase it. It is scandalous. Let's not, let's not limit how gross this is. However. <laughs> um, anyway. Unfortunately for him, Manabe's father was a prominent figure in each city. In order to protect his daughter's future, he placed all the blame squarely on Mr. Hirose. That led to Mr. Hirose being dismissed in disgrace. Mr. Hirose was a delicate, artistic person. The dismissal and surrounding circumstances left him unable to even draw due to stress. Then he turned to alcohol. Womp womp. Oh, fuck. Okay. I understand now. Late one night when he was driving, his car plunged into the ocean, and he died. There were skid marks from the tires where the car left the road, but who can really know if it was a suicide or something else? That is what I know about the incident from five years ago. Uh, what about Kashima's suicide? Rei Kashima committed suicide after Mr. Hirose died. She tore open her stomach. It was beyond gruesome. Jesus fuck, girl. <laughs> The wound was so deep it almost reached her back and severed her body in two. That would explain why she has scissors for legs. So she killed herself after her teacher's death, huh? And the weapon she used, could it have been... The very same scissors she received from Mr. Hirose. Those things were tiny! Those scissors were tiny! Jesus! probably chose to take her life that way as a testament of her love for him. That is not what I would call that. Her family put those scissors in her coffin and cremated them along with her corpse. Why? Why would you do that? I have so many questions for everyone involved in that situation. <laughs> took a lot of chops. Neither took a lot of chops so those are some real great scissors. <laughs> Jesus. Sure know an awful lot about this, don't you? Right down to the present he gave her. I learned this from Kamio. What did Kamio tell you? 
Uh, she had been trying to cope with her feelings ever since Kashima committed suicide. It was around that time that she came to me. I guess she wanted to feel a little better by unburdening herself of that secret. So you were made aware of Kashima and Mr. Hirose's relationship at that time? As well as Manabe's evil scheme? Yes, Kamiyo told me. Since she seemed to regret her actions, I told her to visit Kashima's grave. And then she promised to go there with her friend. That friend being... Student S. What about Manabe? She didn't go. She hated Kashima far more than the other two. She probably blamed Kashima for everything that happened. But it was Manabe's fault! I mean, Kashima was being very inappropriate with her teacher, but Manabe was being even more inappropriate. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just gonna scream about how dumb these girls were. And how fucking stupid Hirose was for not, like, not telling someone and not holding a harder boundary with the, with, with Kashima. The fuck? Now I understand how their decisions affected their lives and deaths. Kamiyo and Shinji went to uh, S Cemetery. When they did, they were marked by Kashima. Manabe survived simply because she didn't go. And now I've told you all I know. Now I suppose you're going to expose the school's sordid past? Rest assured, I'm not going to tell a soul. Is that so? Speaking of souls... You remind me a bit of the late Mr. Hirose. Ew. Me? And Hirose? Mm -hmm. He had a hard time adapting to the school's etiquette. He was simply an artist through and through. He was always getting worked up over trivial things and could be a little childish. Why should an adult be so serious about a student's love or some silly rumors about the departed? I'll use your opinion as a reference. I'll be going then. Don't forget to lock the door. How hard would it have been to just tell me all this from the get-go? Miss Sakamoto grabs her rabbit-shaped handbag and leaves the place. Let's, have, let's head out of here too. We don't have any business here anymore. Oh my god. She's honestly just making my job more difficult. I mean, I know that there wouldn't be, like, much of a game if she just, like, gave us all the information right off the bat. But also consider. <laughs> is that Damon's phone vibrating? Oh, Nakamura is calling. What's wrong? All right, I'll pass the phone off to Cost. He has to talk with you. Sounds quite panicked. Grab the phone and pull it to my ear. It's me. Massive news, Mr. Cost. It's beyond massive. I had no idea she was just around the block. Calm down, Ida. What happened? It's Megumi Manabe, the gold prize. She's in H City right now. What the? I found her name on a local news broadcast. Manabe got off the bus in front of S Cemetery this evening. And then she suddenly just screamed and ran into the road. She got hit by a car. She suffered minor injuries, but she was taken to the nearby hospital just in case. Do you know which hospital it is? It's the one that we can get to. I think it's the one near M Tower Station, K Hospital. Got it. Thanks. Oh, one other thing, Mr. Cost. I'm about to take off. Do you need anything else? I'm good. I'll call you if I need anything. Thanks for today, Ida. No problem. See you later. I like Ida. He's, 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 he's grown on me. <laughs> what, what did Nakamatsu say? He knows where Manabe is. I'll share the details once we're back in the infirmary. I want Sho to know this as well. Okay. Um, can we take a short potty break? <laughs> Fuck off! I was just going to my menu! <laughs> I was going to the menu and then my vibr my, my my controller vibrated and then the fucking departed showed up and I was just trying to go to my menu. I just wanted in the menu. Um I still have a bit of Yeah, there's ghosts in the menu now! Can't get can't get can't go anywhere without there being a fucking ghost. Um Quick short break, need to use the restroom, chug the rest of this water, and then get more. Um, and yeah, then we'll, we'll be right back in, in just a matter of minutes. <laughs> Ooh. 
You can pet the dog, it's a 10 out of 10 game. Pet the dog, it's gonna be a great day. <laughs> Bedroom key, give me that. Pet the dog, we gotta tell him he's a good boy. Yeah, sure. Okay, Jack. That's cool. I'm gonna jump down here. See? Hot on my tail! <laughs> I was not prepared for that! Excuse me. <laughs> yeah, no! How did he get there? Please. <gasps> Jesus, fuck, shit, no! <laughs> Choice. Oh god, who are you? You're another dog. Okay. <laughs> That's fine. And a grandma! Show the photograph to Sintra. Oh, she just glitched out a little bit there. Did you see that? Oh, we fucking did it! <laughs> Ghost Man is a goddamn hero. <laughs> we love Ghost Boy, you're so good! <laughs> Gotta give him a big ol' smoocheroo. <laughs> we love you. you. One health for like half the fight, and it was just calmly. Really? We put the discs on top of each other. Just jam that into the disk drive. <laughs> Nothing horrible yeah. could ever happen. <laughs> this lady here will join us for dinner. That's all. For what? Take that goddamn mask off when you talk to me. You know I do. I 100% remember her moving like this. <laughs> It's awful. Okay. I don't like it. I don't like it. <laughs> I was just saying that she, she's here for dinner. <laughs> Good dinner. I'm starved. He's the witch. Yeah! Yeah! Holy shit! <laughs> Punching asshole. It lets you power a waste tank. Because <laughs> it's the only way it can show emotion. <laughs> <laughs> Won't even let himself cry in the helicopter. It's tragic. Jill is now following. <gasps> is that our baby? Jacqueline is now following. It's Gibbald! We found her! Her name is Madison now. <laughs> I'm picking up the strange teeth! You can't stop me! I was about to just, like, grab... I, was, I, like, looked at my desk as if I had teeth ready for me to grab to be like, Look! Um, no, the teeth that I have are in the other room. That's a normal thing to be said. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I He's much more It's just the teeth. It's fine. 
fine. Also, hi, Gucky. Um, you showed up right when we were in the middle of a, of a break. I needed to go potty and get more water. And then I chugged my water. And now I have even more water. <laughs> it, was a very, it was a very good clip. Uh, I was watching it last night when, when Stars posted it. And I could just see the gears turning in my brain after I was talking about teeth and just realizing how 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 odd everything that comes out of my mouth is um <laughs> yeah hey um so this is deathmark it's exactly like bloodborne no it's uh, it's very very different from bloodborne <laughs> but i just i just have clips playing during our brb stuff so that there's something happening um but yeah, welcome in. It's nice to see you, friend. I hope I hope the nannying went well, uh, and and I hope that you have a good a good iPad baby break. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes you just gotta like not do anything for a little bit before you have to go run stupid adult errands. Ugh. Proud of you for getting all that done, though. Go do it. Get that done. Um. Yes. Okay. I mean, <laughs> listen, Luna and I were already kind of talking about it. Um, it also vaguely, I don't know, I like I can't set anything in stone at the moment <laughs> just because uh, I am currently waiting to to schedule my surgery. Uh, we are officially yeeting the uterus, by the way. <laughs> um, but it's it's likely to happen uh in the in the in the next few months. I just don't know when. Uh yeah, we're do it's hey, we are definitely going to have a uterus party. Um <laughs> that is going to happen at some point. Um but there's definitely going to be uh assuming I'm not bedridden for for a week during the DLC release. Um we will, we will definitely be ringing them elders. <laughs> yeah, it's um. Fortunately, the way that we're planning on doing it, the recovery time is like full, full recovery, probably about three weeks. Um, time that I'm going to be down for, uh, they said just between like a week and a week and a half, um, possibly two weeks if I'm particularly slow to heal. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> they can do it to like, um, this is like completely an aside, but I thought it was really interesting. Um, I also just like really like medical stuff. We're not gonna get into too many gory details, don't worry, but they can do it laparoscopic laparoscopically now. Um, so like, they don't, you don't have to do like any huge incisions or anything like that. Just like three little points, little tiny points. Um, and then just, just get rid of it that way. <laughs> Wild wild <laughs> uh i was really excited to hear that too because i was fully expecting like a month um a month plus to to recover but i was also just basing all that on my experience with when i got my reduction done um which was actually closer to like two months <laughs> i couldn't do this for a while um right yeah i <laughs> it's uh, I, like, didn't... I, like, knew the basics of how they, like, how they removed the organ. Um, but I, like, went over, like, all the... all of the different ways that they can do it, and they were like, this is the one that we'll do. And it's wild. Um, and, yeah, like, as... as uninvasive as they can possibly be with, with that kind of stuff, which is really, like, super exciting. Um... <laughs> Thorgan. Billy Thorgan, my favorite singer. JK, that guy sucks. <laughs> Jorgen no Morgan. Um, I expect the same kind of energy during the the uterus party. But yeah, um so like I was I was shooting to have that done July, August-ish, maybe. But as soon as I know like an actual date. People will know and we'll be able to to plan around uh, the Elden Rings. Because, yes, please, I would love to just hang out and play video games with friends again. Um, but, yeah. Hey. Is this a Persona E game? It looks like <laughs> it looks a little Persona E. 
I've never played it, so I don't know. I've also never played a Persona game. I, I wouldn't say so. Persona's very, like, JRPG, isn't it? Um, this is very much more, like, visual novel. It gives off the impression of a JRPG just because we have a screen with stats. That is, that is far, is as far as it goes. <laughs> uh, but we're, we're hunting down ghosts, learning about them, figuring out how to, how to help them move on. Play video games with friends. This is doctor's orders. I mean, I can do that. I can do that. Um, but no, it's very like visual novel meets, uh, it's just, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. It's more or less just a visual novel. You get to choose some stuff, and it's really good. Um, <laughs> I am I am not into into uh, deck builders personally. That's a fruity thing. Um, but I have watched I've watched fruity play uh, Bellatro, and I'm not surprised that you like it. That definitely seems like a thing that you would be into too. <laughs> it's been very fun to watch. Um, I just, I don't know. I've, I've tried to get into, like, deck builders, and I just get annoyed with them, personally. <laughs> I like watching other people people play them, but it's, it's not for me. <laughs> but I'm glad that you know about it, uh, because it definitely, it definitely seems like a thing that you, you would dig. <laughs> That's awesome, though! Sorry, I'm just happy to see my friend Gucky. Hey everybody, it's Fucko! <laughs> Gucky's in the house. Um Oh jeez. Uh I'm just guessing, but do you think Manabe screamed out of nowhere? Because Yeah, she most likely saw Slipmouth Kashima. Um Thank you and Fruity got me into Vampire Survivors and 20 Minutes Till Dawn, which are both that fun pixely roguelike genre, and you just add some cards and you get Bellatro. <laughs> Can replace all your cards with rocks and play high card rock at the poker table. <laughs> what cards are you playing? Slams a rock on the table. <laughs> um. Oh. <Aww. laughs> I missed you too. I've been really. S I've been busy the last couple of streams that you've done. Um, and I was like, I was very annoyed with myself just being like, I have to like do all this like stupid important things. And I can't be there to see my friend. But such is life. We'll, we'll reconnect when we reconnect. But no, it's, it's delightful to see you. <laughs> just fucking show up to the poker table with Rock and win. <laughs> I mean, oh wait, I was gonna say Rock beats paper. That's not true, but it is in this case. <laughs> Sometimes that's that's just how it is, though. Schedules just don't line up, and you know other things come up, and he can't stream all the time, and that's okay. That's understandable. It's just nice. It's nice to see see you go live when you do, even if I can't be there. <laughs> I hope life's been treating you good, though. Ooh, excuse me. Um. Yeah, she most likely saw Slipmouth Kashima. She saw the lady. I'm giving you a big virtual hug. The biggest, the biggest of hugs. <laughs> this is me hugging myself, pretending to hug you. This is a hug for anyone who wants a hug. <laughs> I'll do virtual hugs, IRL hugs. We're a little iffy on, but I'll send virtual hugs. <laughs> Damn, isn't she like fucked right now? Well, that's one way to put it, show. <laughs> yeah, I mean there's like like I said, like it's it's understandable for some folks cuz it's like life is it's a lot to manage streaming while you're also working and doing all these other things as well. But it is sad that like you know, everyone's busy. <laughs> Understandable. But we miss the friends. Um, Kashima marked Kamio and Shinji when they were in uh when they went to her grave, didn't she? That means Manabe is That's really bad. You have to go to the hospital and protect Manabe. Or consider we don't, because she's a bitch. 
Some visiting hours ended a long time ago. It'll be tough to enter the hospital. I'll do something about it. Of course you will. <laughs> Mr. Conway's younger brother is actually the director at K Hospital. Maybe we can get a pass. Uh, maybe we can get a pass if we ask Mr. Conway. How do we get to the hospital? We've been there, show. We know how to get there. It's fine. Ain't a lot of buses running at this time. Are we gonna hop in your car then? I actually didn't bring my car today. Sorry. Same here. I took my car in for inspection. Let's just take a taxi then. Might be expensive, but you got the dough, right, old man? I am broke. Damon immediately calls Mr. Conaway and has him ask K Hospital's director for permission to enter. Doesn't take long before we uh, we're granted permission to visit Manabe. Let's head to the main gate once we're all ready. Called us a taxi. Oh, okay. Never mind. I guess we are taking a taxi. Uh, let's do a little save. And let's go to the hospital. What's the worst thing that could happen at a hospital? Uh, new building, right? That's where the exit is. Oh my god. Can the people upstairs please stop stomping? Oh, I'm, I'm making the man tired. We'll stop making the man tired. I'll make the others huff and puff, but I do feel bad when, when it's Damon, just because, you know, his body's already exploding all of the time anyway. That's fine. I, I don't know why we would want to come back. Well, I mean, I guess I do kind of understand, in case you've missed, like, any of the teeth or whatever. But we haven't. We're, we're done. We've gotten everything that we need from here. Uh, I board the taxi with Damon and ask the driver to take us to K Hospital. Oh, I wonder if it was to, like, switch characters. Maybe. It's fine. I'm fine having Damon. The entrance is this way. Come on. Let's go. Mr. Conaway is already inside the hospital, waiting. This fucking guy. Came as fast as I could once I got your call, Cost. Is the new target really here? Come to think of it, Mr. Conaway hasn't seen the new notice. I don't have the time to go into it too much or into too much detail, but the target, Megumi Manabe, is hospitalized here. Slit mouth Kashima wants vengeance for an incident that occurred five years ago. Sounds like a serious problem. Then why are you smiling about it, sir? The director has said Manabe's in room 303. Sorry, trying to make sure I'm not setting the glass on something that's gonna make it tip. Uh, she already knows we're coming. Let's hurry up and meet her. I'll be waiting here. It'll only cause problems if we all enter the room at once. Whatever, that's fine. I don't care. Both of us head to lift after... Uh, head to the lift after parting with Mr. Konoe. Keep skipping a word here or there and then being very confused about what any of it means. It helps to read the whole thing, I think, is what I'm getting at. <laughs> uh, we get off on the third floor and walk down the empty hallway. Our destination is room 303. Let's go! Oh! What? What's that? Uh, I just want to see if there's anything else I can look at. Because we're in no rush to do anything. Two silhouettes are projected on the curtain. One is a person sitting on the bed, and the other silhouette looks rather odd. Look, leave me alone already? How many times have you stood by my bedside and told me to come to your grave? I've gone there now. Are you satisfied? Please just get lost. I'm begging you. With a trembling voice, the girl who is likely Manabe pleads with the figure next to her. That figure must be Slipmouth Takashima. Manabe's in danger. What is this feeling? My legs won't move. My legs! They're as stiff as iron bars! This is bad. I can't even speak. Same goes for Damon. I can tell he's panicking. Give it back. Give his scissors back to me. His scissors, you said? Didn't your mother put them in your coffin during your funeral? I don't have them. But 
but I bought the same scissors for you. If this is what you want, please just go ahead and rest in peace. I don't want to see you ever again. I don't think this is gonna go well. Give his scissors back to me. Eek! Just take the dang ghost scissors. Just get out of here! Ucky! Oh, fuck! <laughs> Slipmouth Kashima's figure disappears. Well, at the same moment, I regain control of my legs. What was that? Well, I, th I think we know what that was. Wanabe. There's no answer. Kashi mu must have... She just had an accident with, like, a ketchup bottle. Um, you know, you know when, like, bottles get too hot and they kind of, like, they, they expand. And if you open it, they can, they can sometimes just, like, splurt a little bit. That's what happened. The ketchup bottle just got way too hot and it just fucking exploded. Don't try and sass the ghosts. Yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe don't. <laughs> it got splurted all right. Yeah, <laughs> I have to check the other side of the curtain. Um, I don't know if it's actually going to show what is there, but hey, probably content warning. <laughs> the curtains hide red with blood. We do. We got to see. I grab it with trembling hands and open. It's either going to be absolutely horrific or she's not going to be there anymore. The sharp smell of blood assaults my nose. Oh, no, yep, she's, she is, she is there. Oh boy, is she there? Lying on the bed is a corpse with scissors bursting from her body. The wet red scissors gleam brightly when bathed in the light of my flashlight. Her contorted expression reflects the fear and pain she felt at the moment when she was murdered. Moided. My thoughts start swirling amidst the thick, nauseating smell of blood. <laughs> she ate them! She ate all of the scissors. And and then this happened. It's like it's like you know when you were a kid and 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 like the adults around you told you never to eat the seeds in a watermelon because because then a watermelon would grow in your tummy. It's like that, except it's scissors. And when you eat the scissors, then they multiply, and then and then you have scissors instead of meat, and it's not good. You should just you should just keep your meat and not replace it with scissors. Yeah, yeah, you'll grow a scissors plant. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Stars knows what's up. Five years ago, Manabe's scheme sent both Kashima and Hirose to their graves. Yeah, don't eat the scissor seeds. <laughs> Listen, this is what's gonna happen if you do. Do you want this to happen? <laughs> it's true, though. You should just keep your meat and not replace it with scissors. <laughs> is that such a controversial take? I'm sorry, I didn't realize we were so pro-scissors here. Sorry, I'm... I don't know what's happening. <laughs> Delicious scissors and jam. It's my favorite. <laughs> it's part of my complete breakfast. <laughs> Five years later, after visiting Kashima's grave, Manabe falls prey to Kashima's vengeance. I mean, this is how we cope with this, isn't it? Just We just... We have a little... We just do a little joke? Make a little quip? Yes, this is an extreme case of what goes around comes around, please. <laughs> the lifeless figure on the bed is not a doll, but a human being who had lived over 20 years. She had a future ahead of her. She also had a family and friends that loved her. She was also a bit of a bitch. <laughs> Ha 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 ha!
<laughs> Sorry, the wow, they really said fuck around, find out, looking at a murdered girl. Well, well, she fucked around and she found out. Um, <laughs> no, I just, listen, what she did was horrible, but it did not, it's, this is, this is excessive. But despite the horrible abrupt ending, this isn't something you can simply label a tragic situation. This was also karma. Wow, they are laying it on thick, huh? <laughs> we'll just close that and leave, I guess. I know you must be shocked, Cost. We're in deep trouble if someone sees this. Let's tell Mr. Conaway immediately. <laughs> It was like a Horatio Kane one liner at the end there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Listen, I still stand by the fact that I think she was a bit of a bitch. Um, do I think she deserved to have scissors sprout out of her from the inside? No. Um, but she was a bit of a gun. If we're just, if we're being, if we're being honest. Uh, are you done with the questioning already? Mr. Konoy? I need you to stay calm and listen to me. Manabe is... Tell him what happened in room 303. What did you say? There's been another victim after Horikoshi. Well, yeah, but not... But this is different. This isn't this isn't Hanako. This is slit mouthed Kashima. Are you listening to me? Uh, I'll go check the room myself first and call my brother. I mean the director after that. Yeah, okay. I I go then. <laughs> I'm just gonna go. I return to room 303 along with Mr. Konoe. With Mr. Konoe. Why are we going back? Are we gonna go to see that it's all- yeah, it's all- it's all gone now. But that's just what happens. You know what? I will say. In- in the credit of the- of the ghosts, they make a big fucking mess. But they clean it up. And you know what? I appreciate that- that level of responsibility. I appreciate the fact that they're- that they're owning the messes they make. And then they just clean up after themselves. Thank you, ghosts. Minabe's grotesque corpse is also nowhere in sight. Why? <laughs> yeah, they're uh, laying it on a little thick. Where's the corpse? She, she should be here, lying on that bed. On the bed? There's only a small box here. Small box, you said? Is it Nart Edge? We edge in my nard again? There is indeed a small box near the pillow. She's the ghost janitor. <laughs> well, you know what? Again, I just, I appreciate the fact that she's cleaning up after herself. It's, it's nice and appreciated and nice and appreciated, you know? Sorry, I had to dink my oiter. Uh, small box is deceptively heavy. Stylish lettering reads, Subame scissors, which leads me to believe there are scissors inside. Great. These must be the scissors Manabe bought from Kashima. Okay. So, Manabe's corpse has, dis has disappeared, just like Izumi's and Hirokoshi's. Horikoshi, excuse me. Oh, for goodness sake. What strings am I going to pull to cover this up? Can I leave this matter to you? I, again, I don't trust him. And maybe it's just the fact that, like, he and his family are very powerful and can just kind of, like, continue to hide all of these ghost murders like they're nothing. But I don't trust him. He and his grandfather, maybe his whole family has done something to fuck that school up. And, and I don't like it. Sure, I'll find a way to do something about it. It sounds wrong, but I'm glad the corpse is gone. I can just say the patient ran away. While the hospital will be held accountable for this, we'll manage somehow. 
Got a lot of friends in high places. Uncomfy. Honestly, this guy's acting pretty immoral. But it's not like I have any right to criticize him. I think you do, though? Mr. Honoi is just doing some distasteful things in order to try and help us save lives. Is that... Thanks. I owe you one. No, you don't. You do not. If you don't mind, I'd much rather receive a report of this case being closed than your thanks. Make no mistake, I'm not risking my neck for you. What I do, I do to protect my school and my students. Well, you're doing a real shit job of it, buddy. <laughs> if you're done with your business here, then make sure- make yourself scarce. Things can only take a turn for the worse if anyone sees you here. Okay, bye! <laughs> we're just gonna- we're just gonna go now. Alright. And Mr. Konoi's urging we make a hasty exit from K Hospital. Oh boy. Failed to protect another one. We both failed again. You know that's gotta be tearing you up inside. Kick off! Mr. Konoe is a stale man. <laughs> Just a dried out loaf of bread. I failed to save Manabe and lost my lead in the process. All I've got left is disappointment. I didn't expect Kashima to show up at Manabe's place and tell her to visit her grave. Kashi uh, Kashima sure likes doing things the roundabout way, huh? Who knows? Maybe she can only attack people who have visited her grave? The only reason Manabe survived up to this point was probably because she never went to her grave. I guess humans and spirits are both bound by their own strict rules, huh? Why now, though? Five years have passed since the incident. The incident! Perhaps it's because of the departed. Like, maybe Kashima's been gaining power ever since the departed started to show up at the school. Sometimes the presence of a certain spirit will cause other spirits to behave in a more proactive way. I've had to deal with similar things on previous cases. So, what should we do now? Well, we don't have a lot to work with. So, we should go back to the school and reorganize for our next investigation. Works for me. Let's do that. Shall we take the bus back to the school? Time is no longer of the essence. Yeah, I guess. Oh, it's that guy. Abe. So we meet again, huh, Mr. Cost? It must be fate. Oh, God, what a dweeb. Are you following me or what? Who can say? Even a mere illusionist wouldn't let anything slip that would reveal their secret. Illusions, Michael! <laughs> Tricks are what whores do for money. Your inquiry is pure stupidity to me. Okay, whatever. Can you at least tell me your name then? Well, well. Oh my, have I not introduced myself? How rude of me. You're Bug Boy. The name is Haruaki Abe. My given name references the great exorcist who found Suchi Mikado. I'm sure you'll agree that it is a suitable name for one who possesses my talents. Can I yeet this boy into the sun? Is that an option? Unfortunately, my name uses different kanji. Haruaki Abe. That name sounds familiar. Yeah, I recognize that name. Well, no, I mean like IRL, not in-game. Um, but that's the one who borrowed the book. So you're the one who borrowed the graduation album. Oh, so you're aware. Seems my furtiveness has been weighed and found wanting. So you've also been digging into the spirit of the gymnasium. Mind telling me what you're trying to accomplish? Why, I have the same motivation as you, Mr. Cost. I wish to unravel the mystery behind the spirits lurking in Konoahara Academy. Excuse me. Including the true identity of the departed. Oh my god, hiccups. Don't play with fire. It's dangerous. It is I who wishes to convey the gravity of the situation to you, Mr. Cost. You should give up before slip-mouthed Kashima kills you. Bruh. Me? Killed by Kashima? My left eye perceives it quite vividly. The jet black thread anchored to your back. You have been marked by Kashima. She has branded you as her next target. 
I mean, whatever. <laughs> That's fine. Do you feel like running now? Not at all. This is my job. Oh, really? To be expected from one bestowed the moniker of spirit, Doctor. May you survive this devilish night. Literally, can I just drop kick him into the sun? <laughs> Abe throws us a mysterious sign before he leaves. Am I really her next target? If he's telling the truth, then... Nerd alert! Okay, sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Should have pushed him into traffic, but that would be more to investigate. It's true. And, and, and if you throw him into the sun, there's less cleanup. No one's gonna question it. It's just a lot easier that way. Also, I, I need to interact with the, the bus sign, not the, not the bench. This, is, uh, this bus is bound for Konohahara Academy. Ride it! I would like to ride the bus. Let me on the bus, please. I want to get on the bus. We are on the bus now, and we're going to the school. Some time has passed since the bus left K Hospital. Damon and I are the only passengers. We'll pass a cemetery soon. Manabe got off at this bus stop this evening. The only reason she came here was that Kashima kept urging her to visit her grave. And in the end, five years later, Manabe was murdered like Kamio and Shinji. I visited her grave as well. Her next target is you. Possibility was always there. Abe pointing it out to me merely reinforced it. Investigating spirits naturally involves bringing ourselves closer to them. Um, I need to grab a sweater real quick. Because my arms are a little cold. is better. Like I said, it's a little it's a little chilly today. Um, let's see. The more you approach, the more likely it is that you'll catch their attention. Learning that one has targeted me is nothing unusual. Oh! Oh, she's out there! Oh, Lord, she out there. Over there. On the other side of the window, the bus going the opposite direction stops. A tall woman stands near the bus stop. Half a woman stands by the bus stop. She perhaps... I mean, yeah. You... It's the hash slinging slasher. <laughs> the bus drives uh, past S Cemetery. Did you hear that? Yeah. The bus is approaching the M Town uh, Shop bus stop. Is it? Again, I spot her standing near the bus stop. You, Kamio Shinji Manabe's friend. Uh, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> Incorrect. Bus continues past M Town Shop. Is she following us? What, what should we do? Well, Abe's right. Kashima is targeting me. We need to improvise a plan before this bus arrives at the school. Uh, don't get off the bus. Hold on a second, cost. I'm fairly certain she'll simply continue to follow us. It won't do us any good. What should we do then? Should we go back to the school first? I feel like we won't get a second chance to fight, so I'd like to improve that chance. We should devise a strategy at her base. Fine, let's go with that. 
that, I mean, that's fine, I guess. <laughs> but also consider, we live on the bus now. <laughs> this is our home. Come on, Damon. Wait, I don't have that kind of stamina. Well... Yeah, this is fine. We jump off the bus and hit the ground running. Oh, Damon is exploding. The sound of footsteps along with the metallic scraping are following close behind us. You call me of Shinji Manabe's friend. Just a little bit further. School gate is just ahead. <laughs> Let's go! Where's Kashima? Oh, my poor boy! She's not following us anymore. Did she give up? We gave her the slip! I really hope so. She's a vengeful spirit who's been haunting this place for five years. Just killed Manabe earlier. He's just... His poor lungs! <laughs> <laughs> we might have brought, uh, bought some time, but she's persistent. She's coming after us sooner or later. Until then, I have to think of a way to appease her resentment and save her soul. What should we do? Only my beloved teacher can save my soul. Be my teacher at the place full of our memories. Do we have to go to the art room? What was that voice? The gentle whisper of a girl. Definitely not the Departed's voice. What's wrong, Cost? You look intoxicated. Ignoring Damon, I tried to decipher what the voice said. If only my beloved teacher could save my soul. Be my teacher and come to the place full of our memories. Come on, damn it. Think. What does she mean by that? What does she want me to do? Who is my beloved teacher? Hirose Sosuke? Kashima clearly considers Hirose to be her beloved teacher. That's who she uh that's who would have would have to save her soul. What does she mean by be my teacher? A scream, I'm a teacher! <laughs> that's definitely what she means. No, she wants us to pretend to be Hirose, which is gross. <laughs> Sakamoto told me that I was similar to Hirose in a way. <laughs> I'm a teacher! That means I may be able to get her attention by pretending to be Hirose. So her sleeve is like rolling up in a weird way. Please. There we go. Just like one one wrinkle on the top of my shoulder and I couldn't figure out what it was. But once I have her attention, I should be able to deliver a message her soul will hear. So where's the place full of memories? The old building's art room. That's it. That must be what the voice meant. For Kashima and Hirose, the old building's art room was a place full of memories. You need to go there and pretend to be Hirose. I got it. I know a way to remove Kashima's resentment and purify her. Can we just be like... Are they gonna let me be like... I care about the welfare of my students, but I'm not in love with you. Or am I gonna have to do the whole, I love you, Kashima, my underage student? Because I don't like that. Tell Damon my idea. I'm claiming that it's my idea because mentioning the gentle whisper I heard would just confuse matters. I see. That reminds me. Didn't you pretend to be a teacher in our first case together? Did I? Was the case- was the first case that we worked on with- With Damon Miss Zoo? Yeah, I guess it must be fate. Were we pretending to be a teacher then? I need to replay the first death mark, apparently. Now that we've got a plan, our destination is the art room in the old building. But first, we need to prepare ourselves. Who knows what we'll end up facing. <laughs> serial fake teacher. It's his favorite thing to do. He loves pretending to be a teacher. He's gonna tell you he hates it. That is a lie. Do not listen to him. Vincenzo Cost 
is lying to you. <laughs> it is his favorite pastime. White. This is... It's time. Hey. They get closer every time, it seems. Beyond my gazes, the departed. What do they want now? My dear husband. Kashima's resentment killed gold to prize. My dear husband. Okay, yeah, no, she just said that. You don't have to repeat it. Her next target is you. She, see, uh, see, she is coming. Should you survive, you will become my real husband. If it, listen, I could kind of get repeating it. And, and by kind of, I mean, minimally, if, if the original text sort of zoomed by without me clicking, but it doesn't. Why do you have to say it twice? I can hear Kashima's footsteps coming from the new building. With the departed in front of us and Kashima approaching from behind, this is the worst situation imaginable. Yeah, it's not ideal. Let your bride eat the soul. The soul of Kashima, who has been completely saved. Well, I'm gonna do what I can to save her, but I don't like the fact that the departed is eating these people. These ghosts. Should her soul taste awful, I shall eat the scapegoat's soul instead. And that scapegoat is its show, isn't it? <sighs> Delinquent! Your poor boy! Leave show alone. The departed's presence abruptly vanishes. Do they just take whoever you don't bring with you? So like if I had show in my party, uh Damon would be would be the next up. Is that how that works or it is or is it always Whoever is like just joined for this this one, I'm curious to to know. This is bad. Footsteps are coming closer. Let's run to the old building. Cost, but the next scapegoat is. We have to go quick. <coughs> Excuse me. Damon grabs my arm violently and drives me straight to the old building. Oh boy. Kashima's footsteps can still be heard from a distance. I have to hurry, yet I can't think straight. The Departed's next scapegoat is Delinquent. Delinquent has to be Sho. Should we fail to fully redeem Kashima's soul, Sho will be killed. Hey, Damon? Is now the best time? Let's focus on running. He's right. I can't save Sho if I don't deal with the pressing issue at hand. There's no way to save Slipmouth Kashima's soul if she catches us before I can play teacher. Alright, let's head to the art room. Oh, wait, no. The art room is upstairs. That's the music room. I know what's happening. There we go. D did you notice cost? I can no longer hear Kashima's footsteps. There's no way she simply gave up. If anything, I should expect that she'll be here short shortly. You better hurry, hurry and get ready before she's here, Damon. Sorry. I'm <laughs> just stumbling over all my words right now. Right, about that. Speaking of getting ready, how are you planning to impersonate Hirose? About that. <laughs> um... There's a dusty easel here. According to his notebook, Hirose felt the ha Hirose felt the happiest when he was drawing something here. And Kashima felt the happiest when she was watching him draw. Shall I recreate those happy memories then? 
Ah, geez. <laughs> I can hear what sounds like Kashima's footsteps approaching from the outside. Gonna get a real good look at her now! I mean, we kind of saw what she looked like, but she was pretty far off. Do, do you hear that, Cost? Yeah, Kashima's coming for us. How's she gonna enter this time? The sound of the footsteps stops just outside the school building. That room is on the second floor, though. I doubt she'll climb the wall. Well, you were wrong. Weird cat. Oh, jeez! me of Shinji Manabe friends. We're not, though. Oh, that's happening again. Familiar sense of painful discomfort wells up within my arm. What's wrong, Koss? What's wrong with your arm? I got scissors for me. Kill, kill, kill. Kashima obviously considers us enemy. Enemies? Considers us enemies. The lumps are back. We got the scissor lumps. <laughs> the scissors burst out of my arm again. I'll no longer be able to pretend I'm Hirose. <laughs> what will we do now, Cost? That's what I'm saying! Don't replace your meat with scissors! It's a silly idea! Don't do it! <laughs> Kashima has lumped us in with Manabe and the others. If we could show her that we're not friends with them, she'll stop being hostile towards us. So our first priority should be doing something to prove we're different from them. Maybe we can empathize with Kashima and make her think that we're with her. What do we have? We have the sketch pad and the scissors. Why would you praise the sketch? He made the sketch. We just want to show it to her, right? Don't cut- Don't cut my hair! <coughs> don't cut Damon's hair! Why would you do that? Let's show her the sketch. Because I don't think... Praising it doesn't make sense. That would just be praising Hirose's work, which if we're pretending to be Hirose doesn't make sense. We open the sketchbook and show Kashima the unfinished drawing. I guess unless it was Damon praising it. No, this works. Friends. Never mind, it doesn't work? Sharp pain runs through our arms. That didn't work at all. She's still hostile towards us. Opening the sketchbook, Damon looks at the unfinished drawing and tries to find things to praise about it. I love the overall aesthetic. Why, I wouldn't be surprised to see this displayed in a gallery somewhere. Yeah, that didn't work either. Okay. Sharp pain runs through Damon's arm. Just look like a bunch of art fanatics. Okay. So it has to be something with the scissors? Weird. Show the scissors present- Oh! Oh! I'm an idiot. Okay. I- 
thought all of the scissor options were like cut each other's hair. It's it's no, okay. I am a fool. Let me just make sure it's cost with the scissors. Uh present the scissors. Yes. Hold the hairdressing scissors out to Kashima because we're giving it to her as a gift, like the teacher did. I understand the logic here. I was just a fool. Maybe not? Do I just show her? don't see how cutting each other's hair would do it. We're probably gonna die. Which is gonna be unfortunate. But... Oh... trembling so much I fumble the scissors onto the ground. <coughs> Excuse me. Can I try that again? Yes. I want us to empathize with her. Hold up the hairdressing scissors. I guess I'm not... Do we really have to cut our hair? Yeah, this one's... This one's strange. I'm just like triple checking all the other options real fast. Yes, Damon cuts costs hair? Gently grabbing the back of my hair, Damon cuts the tips of my hair with the hairdressing scissors. Haven't been taking care of your split ends much, have you, cost? Clean things up back there for me. Damon thinking quickly goes along with my act. Hair. My dream. I okay, okay. That that one was a little odd. I do. I like. I remember them saying that like her, like she wanted to become a hairdresser like her mother. But why would that be the way that we like empathize with her? That's okay. I can. I can see the vague logic there. Clearly, I wouldn't have put it together, though, uh, without trial and error. That one was a little weird. <laughs> the logic there? A little backwards for me, but it's fine. Uh, Kashima really wanted to be a hairdresser, and by the looks of it, we jogged her memory a bit. When you put it like that, I, I get it more. That's still a little- that one was a little strange. Still not as, not quite as like disjointed as some of the ones from NG were, but also not great. At that moment, Kashima approaches us. While our hostility toward us has ebbed a bit, it doesn't mean we're in the clear. <laughs> Who are you, Mr. Hirose? Are you Mr. Hirose? Sure. Oh, yikes. Is she going to kill me if I'm not her teacher? Oh, I've got to pull myself together. Maybe this is all a hallucination, just like the encounter at the cemetery. Hey. 
pain has subsided for now. Though there's no guarantee I'll be able to survive much more of this. What are you gonna do, Cost? Are you gonna respond to her? Guess we'll try improvising. Kashima thinks I'm Hirose. It's a misunderstanding, but it's the only thing I have to work with right now. Sketchbook might be the key to respond to Kashima's feelings. Like, maybe I can help her finish this flower drawing? Uh, I don't remember which one was which, and I don't know which one they want me to use in this situation. One was, like, for soft lines and... Okay, blue is for strong lines. Brown is for soft. If we're finishing the drawing, we want the blue pencil, right? Fuck, okay. Um... Hydrangeas were for, like, distance and frigidness, right? Bellflowers were love and cosmos were purity or something like that. Hydrangeas are unfaithful. Bellflowers, eternal love. Cosmos, harmony. I don't want to... I don't want to... Pretend that I'm in love with her. That just feels gross. <laughs> but that's probably what they want me to do. I'm gonna take the hit and yes. just see if we can get away with the harmony one. Opening sketchbook to the unfinished Cosmos drawing. I pick up the blue pencil and draw a line. Okay. Great drawing cost. Mine goes blank because I'm a bundle of nerves and I carelessly start drawing on a blank page. Sketchbook might be the key to respond to Kashima's feelings. Like, maybe I can help her finish this flower drawing as Hirose. Yeah, I, I know. Can we try that again, but not yes. fail this time? My poor boy is at 11 health. Oh my god. <laughs> I had a line on the faint, unfinished sketch. I also must have loved this, this pencil. As long as I can finish the sketch Kashima wished for with this pencil. Take a look at the sketch, Kashima. This is my message for you. Yeah, they want me to do the the bellflowers. Kashima raises her voice in anger after seeing my drawing. I don't like that. Is it my drawing or the pencil? I mean, it's the drawing, right? It's not the pencil. Blue pencil. Bellflower. <laughs> well, if this doesn't work, then we're dead. But that's okay, because we can get through it a little a little easier this next time. Add a line on the faint, unfinished sketch. Uh, yeah. Take a look at the sketch. Oh! Okay, so it is the wrong pencil? I mean, he's dead, so we have to try again. When they say finish the sketch, I assume that there was already the faint line. <laughs> to be fair, we've not seen the death screen yet. Damon and the others have run out of spirit. Well, it wasn't Damon that ran out of spirit, it was me. <laughs> Um, oh god. Yeah, he was having a great time. Well, I'd say great time. He was fine. Demon was fine. Uh, yeah, I understand. Oh, 
Okay. Uh, resume from the checkpoint, please. Yes. Yes, I want to resume from just before he died. Okay. Yeah, we have to do this again. But at least we can get through those first couple of ones a little more easily. I guess I need to use the brown pencil first and then the blue pencil. But which flower? <laughs> I think they want me to do the one that, like, stands for, like, love or whatever. But, I don't know. I don't like that. Yeah, yeah. She's incredibly particular. Listen, I understand that she was, like, an art student. I am not. <laughs> I don't know shit about art. Again, with this first one, <laughs> sometimes you gotta be a little weirdo to appease a ghost who is trying to replace your meat with scissors. Yeah, I guess. It just feels very insincere. <sighs> and I think that's my biggest problem with it. But it's, it's fine. I am skipping all of this because we've already seen all of it. I, I guess I just need to put it out there that I am not a fan of that. I'm not, I'm not a fan of, uh, you know, make, like, making this girl believe that her, that her teacher loved her when he didn't. Um, also, just don't want to encourage that because that's gross. <laughs> Haven't been taking care of your split ends. Alright. Yep, it's your dream. Okay. Uh, our arm's gonna explode. No! She does so much damage just from, like, existing. Oof. Okay, we want to use the brown pencil on the bellflower. Yes. Uh, opening the sketchbook to the unfinished bellflower drawing, I pick up the light brown pencil and draw a line. Please don't fail. Hooray! I had a line on the faint, unfinished sketch. Hiroshi must love this pencil as long as I can show her the right one. Bellflowers, eternal love. Ah, love. Gross. I missed you, Mr. Hirose. Okay. Again, not particularly happy about that. Oh my god! Kasha was totally buying my Hirose act. She moves closer to me. Kashima's mask comes off, revealing countless scissors inside her mouth. I'm sorry, Mr. Hirose. I lost the scissors you gave me. Kashima cries, distraught over losing the scissors she got from Hirose. She's been, uh, she's been looking for those scissors for a long time. If we find the lost scissors, we should be able to save her soul. What should we do, Kost? She's looking for the scissors she got from him. We don't know where those, those important scissors are. Well, we do. They're in her, in her coffin. Or, well, at her grave. Because she was cremated with them, right? Yeah. The scissors that Hirose gave Kashima were supposedly burned alongside her corpse during her cremation. But we have the scissors from Manabe. If that's the case, the scissors Kashima's searching for are... Scissors in Kashima's mouth? I don't think that's correct. Inspect the scissors. Yeah. 
Yeah, she already has her mouth scissors. I hate that it's such a low yes. percentage. We can... We can take a couple of hits if need be for this one. Grasping the hairdresser scissors... Hairdressing scissors, I carefully extend them toward Kashima. Yeah, I didn't think that that was gonna go through. Trembling so much, I dropped the scissors onto the ground. There are abundance of scissors in front of us. <laughs> Kashi was covered in scissors. No matter where she looks, she'll never be able to find those scissors. Let's say that those scissors are out there somewhere. Well, I get... Yes. I don't know. That doesn't... I, I feel like they're trying to tell me that it's the scissors that she has already. But... That feels wrong. <laughs> But they have kind of like, yeah, okay. As I say, they are telling me it's the scissors that she has, and I just, they were very clear about that. <laughs> but it just doesn't feel right. That's all I'm saying. Um, move and return the black scissors. Sixty-five percent. Remove and return the dirty scissors. Remove and return the black scissors. Uh... This doesn't really tell me anything about these. Yeah. That's a good point. The black ones might be burned. Let's try that. Throwing caution to the wind, we try to pull the scorch. Okay, okay. You can't call them black scissors in one and then scorched scissors in the next. <laughs> That makes sense, though. I failed just because the the percentage was very, very slow. Or very low, not slow. Can't get a good grip on them because they're slick. Yeah, that's rude. But it's very, that's very Vincenzo of him. Knowing something and not telling someone. <laughs> Hi, I'm having all these weird visions. No, I won't tell you what they are. Okay, let's try that again. <laughs> uh, let's do that. Costa, grab the scissors. Nice, let's pull together now. Gross. Once we ache the scorched scissors out of Kashima's mouth, we immediately offer them to her. These are the scissors you gave me. Kashima stares at the scorched scissors. She seems happy. Looks like this is the right choice. A pair of scissors, charred black, the ones that were cremated together with her corpse. They became part of her, even after she became a spirit. Not realizing that, she continued to search fruitlessly for her treasure. Oof. Thank you, Mr. Hirose. Excuse me. Alright, that one was a little... That one was a little weird. Um, 
again, I can, I can, it's backwards. It was a little backwards, but I could understand the logic from the first one. Like, from the first bit where it's like, oh, we need to, like, cut our hair so that we can be like, oh, see, like, you like, you liked cutting hair. You wanted to be a hairdresser. Kind of get it. It's a little uh, sideways logic. I can forgive that. The The drawing bit was hard isn't quite what I want to say. But weird. Could get it. Knew what they wanted, just needed to figure out the order. That one was just strange because they said to finish it, but we really had to just like do all of it. Uh and and this one, I guess this one made sense. <laughs> it just it didn't feel right to me. <laughs> Even though they very clear that one was a me issue. They were very much like she was buried with her scissors. She should have her scissors. And I was just like, no, no. It's like, I, I made that a little more complicated than it needed to be. The first one was very sideways logic, though. My thoughts turned to the girl who was consumed by the, uh, the throes of her sad, unrequited love. She was, she was, she was, being, she was just being greedy. Let's be real. <laughs> she just wanted all the scissors and it's like girl you got all the scissors you don't need any more scissors yeah see that's 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 all that's kind of where i was as well with it where it's like like even if these aren't like the exact same brand or anything like that it's like hey like it's cool you lost them i have some new ones for you that's that's where i was thinking with it too um i get I understand why they were like, hey, like, just give her the scissors that she already has. She just needs to know that she's already got them. It's like when you when you put your glasses on your head and you, like, put them up here and then you forget that they're there and you're like, where did my glasses go? I don't ever actually do that because I need my glasses to see. Uh, but my, my dad does that sometimes. He doesn't put them on his head. He'll, like, tuck them into the front of his shirt and then just be like, where did my glasses go? And it's like, I either... Right here. <laughs> On the other hand, Kashima longed for Hirose's love more than life itself. Using her phone flashlight to look for your phone. <laughs> I am being attacked. I did that last night. <laughs> I was laying in bed and like had my phone in my hand and was like, huh, where's my phone? I need to find my phone because I wanted to play whatever stupid little mobile games I had. And so I like turned on the flashlight and started looking around and it took me like a solid like minute before I was like, wait a second. <laughs> uh, yeah. Except the glasses are in your mouth with many other pairs of glasses. Yeah. Yeah. It's exactly like that. Is that not how you handle your glasses when you misplaced them? Oh. Uh, as I pretended to be Hirose and showed her a vision of the love she wished for. I get just, like, appeasing her with what she wants, but it still feels very disingenuous. I get it. I get it. You just want her to move on and, and, and be done. <laughs> It'd be different if she were still alive and we were giving her this weird hope that, like, Hirose loved her. But I still just don't like it. We should be good with this, right? People whisper echoes and dissipates into the darkness. It's a question for the departed who's watching somewhere. I have to go potty again. <laughs> the air is getting colder. Don't tell me I also need to refill my water again. Hi. All right. We just lured her close enough that we could give her the scissors. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> I guess. Slipmouth Kashima flashes before my eyes as if mocking my expectations. It reminds me of Hanako's incident. That this is also the, the Departed's doing. Perhaps Kashima's soul isn't completely saved yet? Last time was I, Idol. 
This time it's delinquent. Show is the scapegoat. I mean, we need to do something more, right? What's with the weird look on your face, Cost? As heavy and unpleasant as it is, I have to share this important information with him. I mean, we just need to go to the cemetery, right? And, like, put the scissors and maybe, like, the sketchbook on her, on her grave. I tell Damon what the departed told me. Excuse me? Nagashima's the next scapegoat? Damon is frozen with fear. There's no reason to panic yet. If we manage to completely save Kashima's soul, Shu's, uh, Sho's life will be spared. You're right. Kashiwagi's still alive. What, we sh uh, what should we do to completely save her soul, though? Still not so sure about that. Oh, cost. What are you planning to do with the scissors in your hand? These? It's the pair of scorched black scissors I pulled out of Kashim's mouth. Can't bring myself to just throw away a treasured item filled with her feelings. I'll hang on to them for now. Who knows? We may need them for her full salvation. We need to go to the... We need to go to her grave and, and put them in there. Got it. I'll put your uh, my faith in your intuition. I mean, your supernatural sense. We got scorched scissors. We got Kashima's ending. Um. Cool. Let's get out of here. Can we... Sorry, I'm very sniffly. I mean, I have been most of the stream, but I feel it. I feel it. I super feel it right now. Um... Yeah, I'm pretty sure we need to go to the cemetery, right? So we can... Put the scissors on her grave. Um, and like, do that. Fully put her to rest. To be like, and be like, hey, look, look, your things. They're all here now. All together. Right, let's. Yes, ride the bus. I would like to go to the cemetery. Thanks. <laughs> go in there. And then we look at this. Number of small boxes of hairdresser scissors are lined up on the grave. Now I know why these are here. They were intended to cheer Kashima up because she aspired to be a hairdresser. However, none of them ever made her feel better because the scissors she asked for aren't here. I pull out the scorched black scissors and place them in front of her grave. We lost the scorched scissors. Then I put my hands together and pray that Kashima will rest in peace. Damon does the same thing next to me. Is it over now? Yeah. Whenever I visit a grave, I feel kind of lonely, as if the autumn breeze is blowing through my heart. Cold, but refreshing at the same time. It's a bit weird. I- you should probably get that looked at. That does not sound healthy. <laughs> Suddenly, the bell starts to ring loudly. This also happened when we were investigating Hanako's case. Could it be... Is this the full salvation the departed wants? Uh, can I go back to the infirmary? <laughs> Great. <laughs> Why did it do that? Our investigation has come to an end for tonight. While we managed to survive, we also failed to prevent another casualty. Yeah, but it was only one this time. Only one person died on our watch this time, as opposed to yesterday. Or two, well, yesterday and the day before. Two people died. So... We're doing better. Mo is the only one in the infirmary. I don't see Sho anywhere. Where did he go? Let's try asking Moe. Um, hey. 
Hey, you're back. Glad to see you're safe. Hmm? Where's Sho? That's what I was gonna ask you. Did he go outside for some fresh air or something? What? No? Didn't you call him, Mr. Damon? You told him to go to the old building because you guys were in a pinch. Hang on. I never called him. What's going on here? Who called Sho then? My body immediately goes cold. Chapstick. Immediately after we saved a soul, the Mark Bearer went missing once again. Same thing happened with I, which means this must be the Departed's doing. They de uh, pretended to be Damon and lured Sho, Sho out. This is bad. Cough, cough. Let's go look for Sho, Damon. How, how about me? You should stay here, Watanabe. No matter what happens, don't leave this room until we return. And don't believe anything anyone says over the phone, understood? Y yeah. Be careful, you two. Okay, let's do a save. Excuse me. Let's go to the connecting corridor, because we have to go to the old building. Uh, once we finish this chapter, we'll probably do a slightly extended break. Hey, old man. Sho, are you fine? Sho comes running from the courtyard. Thank God, you're safe, Sho. That should be my line, you know? I rushed over because I heard you guys were in deep shit, but I didn't see you anywhere. Sho, Damon wasn't the one who called you. I think that was the departed. Seriously? For what? I have! I had I had some I had some rice and some beef and broccoli just before just before stream started. Um, but I'm gonna grab a little snacky snack. Some cashews and some cherries. Oh uh I'm refill my water and do some of my stretches, I think. So we'll do like a five, ten minute break. Um, once, like, again, once the chapter is over, so that I can do a stretch, y'all can do stretches if you need to, we can all just go address all the things we need to, but then continue playing, because, like, like I said, like, this is such a, a mellow game, <laughs> say mellow, it doesn't require me to, like, do a whole bunch, I don't have to be, like, as active with actually playing, um, that I could just do, like, a long stream, and that sounds, like, really lovely today. <laughs> also, The Departed! Eek! That thing is... My dear husband, tell me, do you love me? That must be directed at me. How should I answer them? Can I just stay silent? Can I plead the fifth? <laughs> I remain silent, not knowing how to respond. Mean. Well, I'm real glad that we saved just before this. penetrating scream reverberates throughout my mind. My sight goes red. Is this the departed's curse? Oh, Damon! Damon starts coughing incessantly. My heart's pounding like a drum. This is bad. If this keeps up, this fucking chump ass is playing with us. You tell her, show! Show grimaces. He's trying to bury his fear with rage clenches his fists tightly. Show, stay cool. Don't let them provoke you. You're the Departed's target. Fuck that shit. I'm gonna beat him to death. Well. Show rushes towards the Departed. And the instant he throws his punch. Woof. 
show? Wait. Show disappears. And my body feels a lot lighter than it did a moment ago. What on earth just happened? <laughs> Cost. Damon calls to me in a hoarse voice, still coughing up a storm. The departed Nagashima are in the old building. Hurry, chase after them. Okay. Be careful, please. <laughs> Turn my back on Damon and rush to the old building. I can hear the sound of someone collapsing behind me. Ah, oh, shit! And I have no time to look back. This is horrible! Show, where are you? Can I do this again? I think I fucked up. I think I fucked up. Scream rings out through the building again, filled with anguish. It comes from the hallway. I hope I make it in time. Where is he? Ugh. Can't find the departed anywhere. All I hear is the wet sound of someone chewing. No way. Is the departed munching on a spirit again like they were last time? Or is it show? <laughs> the saved Kashima was delicious. I saved my next meal for another night since I am now full. The saved Kashima was delicious. I must eat a lot so I can become beautiful and be loved. It's always the wet chewing. It's so bad. It's such a bad noise. Where is Sho? Once I enter the classroom, I see Sho collapsed on the ground. Is he okay? Hang in there, Sho. Oh, old man? Can you get up? Y yeah. My bad. Didn't mean to cause you trouble. Okay, well now that you're fine and I know you're not eaten, we have to get back to the corridor to make sure that Damon hasn't fucking died? Show mumbled a dispirited apology. His normally fierce spirit's been crushed. What in the world happened to you? D Dunno. My mind went blank the moment I tried to attack the departed. And just like that, I was here. What was the screen just now, then? I, I saw something unbelievably disgusting. Yeah, you saw the departed eating. Eating Kashima, huh? Yeah. The Departed ripped Kashima apart with a sickle and started munching on her. Oh, right. Where's that fucker at now? They're gone. Uh, oh. I don't want to think about that again. Spirit eating another spirit? The Departed ate another spirit, just like they ate Hanako of the toilet. She must have screamed and fainted at the unfathomable sight. Glad he's safe and sound, though. We returned Kashima's scissors to her grave earlier. Yes, that must have been the full salvation the departed wanted. Okay, can we go check on Damon now? Is old man Damon safe? I don't know. Can we go check on him now? <laughs> Please? Oh my god. Leaving the old building, I find Damon lying on the floor. He doesn't verbally respond when I call his name. He only lets out a small groan. His breathing's so shallow, it's like his life's hanging on by a thread. Show, call an ambulance. Uh, okay. Shit. Show takes out his phone and calls emergency services. Damon is transferred to K Hospital. He should be treated well there, given that Mr. Konoi's uh, younger brother is, in, is the director. Show, Moe, and I board the ambulance together with him. That's a lot of people to be 
piling into the back of an ambulance. During the ride, I film Moan and let her know what happened with Kashima. The ambulance finally arrives at K Hospital. They only usually let one person in. Like one... One other person. It's usually family members? I don't know if that's different in Japan, but... Although he's received treatment, Damon has yet to regain consciousness. Following a simple examination, he was diagnosed with... Pneumomycosis? In layman's terms, he's inhaled too much mold and it's infected his lungs. Not good! Common symptoms of the disease are fever, hem hemo hemoptysis, and the coughing. It's unclear if he will ever regain consciousness. Excuse? It's also unknown why Sho and I are fine, even though we probably inhaled more than he did. My mind keeps circling back to one thing that could explain this unscientific situation. Is this because of the Departed's curse? I think so. Let's say... Do you think it's... May or Do you think maybe it's a bad idea to get involved in this case? Yes! <laughs> Damon would be safe if, if he weren't involved. I just want him to be okay! I'm like actually devastated right now. If Damon fucking dies... I am going to riot. But it's too late to turn back now. Mr. Cost. I'm of the mind that there's nothing that I could have done to, like, avoid this situation. And I hate that. Well, he didn't fuck up. It's not your fault, show. Show, Moe, back away from this case. Come again? I'll hunt down the departed by myself. He can't. He's not allowed to. He's <laughs> genuinely... Him and Mashida um, are like my favorite characters from this series. And if he fucking dies... If, if Damon fucking dies, I'm gonna be so mad. <laughs> oh my god. What, what are you talking about? You should pull out of this too. Why do you have to fight them alone? It's too late for me. I've already been marked by them. Hell, I've even been proposed to. <sighs> As you already know, spirits are vengeful. No matter how far you run away, they'll still find a way to kill you. You know what happened to Manabe. My only hope of surviving this situation now is to see this all the way through to the end. Oh, old man. But you guys are different. The Departed won't target you if you just steer clear of Konoehara Academy. So please, I'm begging you, let this case go. Fuck! Sorry, I'm like... <laughs> I am stupidly invested in this silly little game. Oh my god. Sho and Moe want to help me out despite knowing the danger. Not that my explanation is enough to dissuade them. But I still have to draw the line here. I don't want more people to fall victim to the departed. From here on, I'll go after the departed by myself. If the departed's curse is what put Damon in this coma, he may snap out of it if the departed disappears. He fucking better. I wonder what kind of future awaits me. I've reached the point of no return. <sighs> yeah, we gotta save the boy. We gotta save the boy. Damon is the best. I love him. I just want him to be okay. I'm gonna save... here. Because with this one, there was the option to, like, go after someone... There was, like, a weird choice there, and then there's a choice here as well, and I do want to see if that, like, changes things. I'll do that, like, on my own time, but I am curious. Um, but that is the end of that chapter. So let's pause and do our little extended break. We can all feel our feels. 
about Damon being in a goddamn coma? I'm so mad. I'm so mad. I say I'm mad. I'm I'm invested. I am mad because I'm invested. How dare they? <laughs> This has been so good so far! Even with the, like, the confusion of, like, how to stop, uh, Kashima in the last one. Like, this has been so good! Um, but yeah, we'll take, like, a... I said, like, five or ten minute break. It'll probably be closer to, like, ten, fifteen minutes. Um, so yeah, take this time to get up and do a stretch. Go get a snack or some food if you haven't eaten recently. Um, stretching is important. I know I already said that, but you gotta go do that. I'm gonna go do my PT exercises real fast, so, like, you should do some stretches, too. Uh, drink some more water. I don't know. Take care of your dang self. We'll be back shortly. <laughs> <laughs> Can we quit the song? I don't know if it'd be bad or worse than the magic thing. It is an extremely powerful weapon! Where is it? Is he visible? Fine! That's not all I'm tired about. <laughs> Can we change topic? Look at that guy, he's got big teeth. They're like the shads of a broken abandoned carriage door window glass. Jeff, and the gas is back on. That's a relief. Tells you he's irreplaceable. Yeah, well, I'm afraid you're gonna have to find a replacement. Can we get some F's in chat for, for Jeff? <laughs> Thank you, Commander Jeff, for all your all your hard work and services. <laughs> oh. Hello, sir. No. Fuck. Okay. Thanks. See, dead horse, man. Self-defense. <laughs> you 
can't be mad at me. I was defending myself. <laughs> Leeches do not fear the sun or fire, and they do not burst into flames or ashes when they are caught under rays of daylight. But it hurts them good, real good. I personally chained a vampire to a tree to see what would happen when the sun rises. Its skin blackened in a few minutes as if it was burning from the inside. Its eyes and flesh melted and I saw its unholy bones move and squeal as the beast tried to escape all day long. In the end, only a desiccated corpse remained which started to slowly regenerate when the sun disappeared behind the horizon. I cut its head off to finally destroy it, and when I tried the same test with fire, the bloody leech never came back from the ash. Got another pencil. I'm gonna leave now, sir. Thank you for helping me. Let me know if I can call anyone for you. Bear! That's bear! A, that's a lightning bear. Bear! Bear! Ah, oh, bear! Ah, oh, bear! Lucky it's fine. not boomerang bear. That'd be impossible to dodge. Demon dick and demon wolf, that's all on me. <laughs> but yeah, you're right, demon wolf. <laughs> all right. Okay, 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 fine, 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 fine. Quick, someone re remix that. Oh, this isn't gonna be good. Okay, hold on, actually, actually, no! <laughs> we got it! It was planned! The whole thing was planned! I knew it was gonna be fine! <sighs> okay. <laughs> I, I didn't know it was gonna be fine. No, don't do that! Sir! Have you considered not? Have you considered not doing that? Please! <laughs> like we're only reading it for the first time. Am I a murderer? You're a lot of nasty women. I do Henry Filler classes. Whoa! Uh hey bud! I can I can see your insides. <laughs> Then potential shotgun, shotgun, shotgun. No, I. <laughs> one of you is Mr. Bear Bear. <laughs> I'm sorry. We're all Mr. Bear Bear. That is terrifying. I don't like it. I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna hit the button. Don't learn to like it. Frank is going to hit the button. Never mind, Frank can't interact with the button. Yeah, Whose shoes are these? Oh, they're very nice. Damn it. <laughs> I miss Frank already. Ah, oh, shit, I didn't pick anything. <laughs> David. <laughs> David. <laughs> you had... Yeah, you had one job.
do again. Yeah, right. This should work. Okay. I am I am a time vampire. Hey yo. So I bet if I, now that I've done that, we'll like you know, go back to the present. Can I go up here? Bud, me and the gang. Yo, yo, yo. <laughs> we have broken Emmy. I'm not. <laughs> started um but yeah we can at some point if we would like excuse me Ugh. at some point we can uh test out all the different voices see if that's something you want that's the one that's showing up with the morning stars and this is a problem! That's two whole dang dragons! Man juice. <laughs> I dunno, I kinda like man juice. Kimberl, no! You know not what you say! <laughs> Exactly what I wanted it. No! <laughs> oh, this is a good goof. You did a good goof there. <laughs> uh, let me see if I can just get a quick wiki of <laughs> all the nuts so I can enlighten chat with some of the names. We've got <clears throat> Nourishing Nut, <laughs> <laughs> Invigorating Nut, <laughs> Fortifying Nut, Tough Nut. Magic nut. Do they Resistant know what they've nut. done? Do they know Sharp what they've done? Nut. They have to know, right? Slippery nut. <laughs> Critical nut. Oh, jeez. Severe. I'm scared about the critical nut. And then lastly, it's just a light nut. It's just, just a light nut. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> Double sixes! Sorry, okay, let's go. Let's fucking go! Music stopped. Okay, here we go. Didn't like that. <laughs> Please. Ah, I'm stuck on a corner. <laughs> I was 
unprepared! I was unprepared! Get away from me! I'm so sorry. I was so excited by the explosion that I just... completely... That's a, that's a, a, a hell of a, hell of a password he got there. <laughs> I also read that in his course. <gasps> oh, wait, I wasn't done reading that. Oh, that scared the shit out of me. <laughs> this, this thing. This thing just stares at you. Hold on a second. Say hi to our boy. Say hello to our beautiful boy. This is a this is a hell of a situation we found ourselves in. <laughs> The chalky milk did deserve better. Man, I wasted that good, good bottomless chalky milk. I am the sad. A special news report. In a forest near Science Hill, the burn... I could poison my system for the first time in years, and the fact that my whole perception of reality has been turned on its head. Probably a combo. <laughs> Doesn't feel awful, to be honest. Always draw me. I just want to flirt with him. That's it. You, you're sure you're okay with sitting for a portrait? I'd love to draw you. There's a quality to drawing that's almost like catching memories, as sappy as that probably sounds. Do you want to synchronize Rip and Rip eggs? Hell yeah, I do. <laughs> Is this even a question? Where are you? There you are. Okay. Yeah. On the count. On the count of three. So one, okay. two, three, go. One. Two, three, go! Yeah! Rip and rip! It's gonna be a jump scare, isn't it? Ah! <laughs> I knew it was gonna happen too! Rude ass! God. I. <laughs> yeah, at this point, it's more obnoxious than it is scary. You need to stop growling at me, bitch! What the fuck? Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh fuck. I am cornered. Nope, nope, nope! Lady! <laughs> Choice. Oh god, who are you? You're another dog. Okay, <laughs> that's fine. And a grandma! Yeah! Yeah! Fuck them up! Get them, kids! Oh! Oh, you want me to help? Hi. I'm back. And I have some cherries. I was I was gonna add some cashews to my cherries. But I was like, fuck it. I just want some cherries. 
Um, I meant to pay attention to the time when when I left, uh, so I knew how long it had been before, when I when I came back, and um, yeah, I didn't do that. <laughs> so I don't know how long we've been gone for, but I'm back. I did my little stretches. We uh, I have water. I have cherries, which I will be snacking on. And, um, I got, I got, hey, hold on, hold on. That's not, that's not correct. I was very incorrect. It's fine. It's because I forgot to set up my camera for that screen. But here's, here's a little treat for you. Shh, listen. Rip it, rip it. <laughs> All right. Um... Hopefully, y'all are doing all right and have gotten your things done. If you're still doing your things, that's okay, too. Thank you, stars. <laughs> Just gotta grip it and rip it. Um, I am ready to do more of this silly little video game. How about you? Let's hear about the history of Konohahara Academy. Oh, God. 1927. Konohara Academy is founded in M-Town, H-City, by the millionaire Genzao Konoe. <gasps> nice, nice, nice! Listen, you gotta, you gotta do little sips throughout the day. You gotta do, do little sips of water throughout the day. But I also very much support chugging water. <laughs> We're very much here for it. Um... That's what I do. Usually when I go to, like, refill my water, especially if it had been a little bit, I'll, like, I'll make my drink. Because I usually, as we as we all know at this point, I always put, like, like flavoring in my water because I drink so much of it um, that I need something to punctuate the, the actual drinking of the water. Otherwise, I won't know how much I have drunk in a single day, especially when my bottle is, is um, you know, not clean. I need to... I, I did, I did clean it. I, like, washed it this morning. And so it's ready to be used. I just haven't filled it up yet. <laughs> but, like, especially when I don't have my water bottle. I need to know how much water I've drunk through the day. And so having, having flavoring in it. But I'll, like, make up my water. Chug some. Usually the whole glass, but at least half of it. And then make up some more. So that when I come back, it's like I've got my full glass of water. Because I would, would have the tendency previously before to like make up my water and then between the walk from the kitchen to back to the office I'd have drunk like most of it it's like that doesn't that doesn't work oh my god all right also welcome back fruit B. I know you do that <laughs> we've talked about it before <laughs> but that's that's the move. You gotta drink it once you refill it before. Like before you get back. As soon as you refill it, slam that shit back. And then and then get more. <laughs> um anyway, that's I bet that was fascinating to hear about. Let me tell you about my water habits. Um Alright. 1927. Built by, built by millionaire Genzo Konoe. 1928. The construction of the school building, the old building, is completed. 1937. The clock tower is built to commemorate the school's 10th anniversary. 1938. Konoahara Academy's first headmaster, Genzo Konoe, passes away. How old was he? 1945. During the Great H City Air Raid, a firebomb is dropped on the school. Both the school building and the clock tower are miraculously left unscathed. What dark magics have they done? 1955, the school's address changes due to the town's merger. 1958, the Konoahara Academy Student Council is launched. 1987, the construction of the new building and the special building are completed and the old building is renovated. 1990, clock tower stops working due to age. 1994, the bu uh, old building is officially shuttered. 70 years of history. 
There were likely some tragic incidents that occurred during those decades. Does anything here give me a hint as to the Departed's identity? Probably somebody that Genzo fucking murdered or some shit. The Departed's presence. How many chapters are in this one, actually? Hold on. I usually like to not... I mean, I like to know. I won't. I don't want to say I don't like to look it up. But I try to like avoid it. But um, I like, forgot what uh, we were playing for a second. Seven chapters. Holy shit. Okay. <laughs> I closed the Konohara Academy brochure once I finished reading it. Then I take a sip of the coffee I brewed, so we're like halfway through the game. Jesus. It's been three days since the end of Slipmouth Kashima's case, and there's yet to be a new notice. In the interim, I borrowed several documents from the school in a desperate bid to find any clues related to the Departed's identity. Nemo? The investigation is not going so well. I feel like I'm treading water in the middle of the ocean and I can't see the shore. Instead, my sense of uneasiness keeps growing larger and larger. Time to get going. Mr. Konoe called me in today. I better head to the school. I have to, like, wiggle my drinks around so I can, like, grab both of them without knocking either of them over. <laughs> I'm feeling much better today than I was last time, so I decided to take my car. After cresting steep slope, the school grounds finally come into view. Mr. Konoe's already left by the time I arrive at the faculty room. Without any direction, I decide to go to the infirmary. But, ju but just then, someone asks me to fill in for an absent teacher. Oh no. I'm still not used to standing in front of a class. However, I do my best to remain professional and struggle through it, teaching a lesson cobbled together from stray bits of my knowledge. Um, can I ask a question? female student timidly raises her hand. It's not related to the lesson, though. What is it? I heard you're investigating the Departed. Does the Departed really exist? Oh, fuck. Um... <laughs> I don't want to cause panic among the students, you know? But I don't want to lie to them. But I feel like if I say they do or I don't know, Sakamoto is going to be on my ass immediately. We're going to pretend we don't know. Well, I don't know. Oh no. My answer causes a stir among the students. Um, obviously, I know the departed does exist, but I can't just share this fact with them. In this end, that's the response I decide to leave them with. <laughs> oh, jeez. The chime signaling, signaling the end of class sounds. Saying my goodbyes, I leave the classroom and walk toward the infirmary. School is over. Time to start my investigation. None of the mark bearers will be here today since I didn't tell anyone I was coming. Had I just made this decision earlier, they'd all still be alive. I'm always one step behind. Mr. Konoe should be back by now. I better go to the faculty room. What do we have? Oh, I 
4%. Or up to 4%. Okay, it's fine. The bag enchantments are, like, so optional. Um, but I'm sure that if we do all of them, like, the the one before the the end chapter or whatever is gonna be like, it's a, like, a 50% bonus or some nonsense like that. It'll be worth it, probably. Hello, Cost. Sorry for making you wait. Has there been a new notice? No, I didn't call you because of that. I just wanted you to directly report your results in the slip-mouthed Kashima case to me. Go ahead. Oh, fuck. <laughs> okay. I give him a general report about uh, the slip-mouthed Kashima case. It's also been decided that the broken glass and the dirty floor in the art room will be left as is for the time being. I can't blame them considering the current state of the old building. I see. It just keeps getting worse then. Damon's been attacked and the departed's identity still eludes us. Are there any clues that could help unravel this mystery? I've been digging through some of the school's documents, but I couldn't find anything linked to the departed. Mind lending me any uh, other documents of interest if you have them? I'm especially interested in the older ones. Barely seen any, which is odd for a school that's got 70 years of history. How much shit have you swept under the rug, you freak? Oh, about that. Um. Of course, you would use this as an excuse. I assume you've learned that our school was firebombed in an air raid during the war, right? Aside from the old building and the clock tower, everything was burned down. That included the building that stored the school documents. Of course it d it, d it does. Even without the physical documents, you can always ask people who might recall the history you're interested in. Do you know anyone offhand who might remember? Let's see. If the previous headmaster was still in good health, they'd be a prime candidate. He was curious about Konohara Academy's past and did some digging on his own. Where is he now? He died of a heart attack last month. That's why he's the previous headmaster. And I'm the current one. You said if he was in good health! <laughs> I mean, yeah, death is pretty detrimental to one's health, but, like, if you're gonna say if he's in good health, or if he were in good health, uh, to, to imply that he's in bad health right now, that would still imply that he's fucking alive. Oh my god. Oh. Okay. Say cost. I want you to be completely honest with me. Are you confident you can solve this case? Yeah. Yes. Hold on. Sorry, I have to put my slippers back on. I like that attitude. I don't trust this man. I'm gonna say it every single time he shows up, but I do not trust him. <laughs> Just bear this in mind. There are only so many strings I can pull if people continue to... disappear. I'll be held responsible for the fallout, and you'll be removed from the case. To put it bluntly, our investigation will be stopped. I'll remember that. That's all I wanted to say. Oops, there was actually one more thing. This morning, Doryu, the student council president, asked me if you'd be coming to school today or not. Why don't you go see her? Why? <laughs> I mean, I'd rather see her than, like, half the other people here at the school, but... You know. Um. Both Doryu and Michiho are in the student council room when I arrive. Hello, Mr. Cost. <laughs> Thank you for the other day. Looks like Michiho's fully recovered. She doesn't seem sick or dispirited. Mr. Konoe said you're looking for me. Yes, there's something I'd like to discuss with you. Though I don't feel like saying it myself. Michiho, can you help? You're such a scaredy cat, Hime. Alright, take a look at this photo first. Picture's worth a thousand words. Oh! Michiho shows me a photo of the pool at night. I have to say, the empty water at night is pretty eerie. What, do, what, do you not see the thing? <laughs> Thank you. What is that? Something pale floating above the water's surface. The photo is too blurry for me to make out what it is, but it looks like the puffy, swollen face of a human. 
I was the one who took this ghost photo. The swimming club came to us to share their concerns about the pool ghost. I snuck into the school a while ago and took this picture. That's literally trespassing. <laughs> oh, come on. Don't be so uptight. I did it to try and keep the student body calm. Still can't believe I managed to get this snap, though. My, uh, my supernatural sense is truly something else. Michio grins from ear to ear. Seems like she hasn't learned anything after what happened to her during Kashima's case. Are you telling me to investigate the spirit? Exactly. I've heard there have been a lot of strange incidents in the swimming club recently. If a spirit is behind those incidents, we have to do something about it before it gets worse. Do you mind investigating it for us? Only until new notice arrives. Thank you. Now, tell me more about the spirit. Where should we start? Um... I mean, the identity, if you have that. While we still have no idea who the spirit is, some say it's a girl. During club activities, some of the sw uh, swimming club members said they heard a weird female voice. Some also claimed that they saw a severed head at night, like the one in that photo. Um, when did the rumors start? <laughs> I believe it started after the fuss around Takai died down. What fuss? Care to elaborate? Oh, you haven't heard about that? Yoko Takai was the first notice victim. While she's said to be missing, the rumors say she was killed by Hanako of the toilet. Is she talking about Ribbon? Now that I think about it, I never actually learned who Ribbon was. I made a comment on that where it's like, oh, we're just gonna keep calling her Ribbon? <laughs> okay. Horikoshi told me about Ribbon. She used to be in the brass band club with Izumi and the two of them bullied Hanako together. Well, yeah, I can't deny that. She was on bad terms with Akai ever since they were first years. Did something happen between them? Oh, it was just Takai's personality. She was always an attention seeker. She'd form a clique and have them fawn over her. She really loved that. Akai was invited to join her circle one time, but she refused. Is that what turned their relationship sour? This is just a hunch, but... Izumi's bullying of Hanako might have escalated because he had Takai by his side. They had shared a bond of hatred. Takai was known for her flashy red ribbon. Everyone knew she wore it all the time, and she didn't care because it was given uh, by her boyfriend, or so I'd heard. She really treasured that thing. When you touched her ribbon from behind for fun, she'd get really angry. Then her boyfriend? <clears throat> That's enough, Michiho. You're flying off on a tangent now. Takai doesn't have anything to do with the pool case. Unless... <laughs> When they're swimming, all of a sudden, they feel like they're being suffocated and almost drown. That kind of thing was supposedly happened more than ten times. Too much of a coincidence, don't you think? Bet the spirit was trying to suffocate them with their curse. Uh... That's all we know. Please take care of the rest for us, Mr. Cost. I'll try investigating it later, at night. Right, I forgot. Wait here. Do I have to? Michio writes something at her desk. Take this. This is the dorm's number and my phone number. Call me if anything happens. I don't want to. Or if you're feeling lonely. Gross. No, thank you. Jeez, Michio, don't be a weirdo. Yeah, for real. <laughs> I can't help teasing him, you know. He's way too serious, you know? Ma'am. Quickly leave the student council room, putting distance between myself and their cheerfulness. Cool rumors. Alright. <laughs> Let's go. Um... I guess... Excuse me. Uh, I still have some time before students leave school grounds. Let's go to the special building and gather some more information. Oh. Okay. Uh, the library? I spot a familiar looking boy while glancing over the spacious library. Not him. Once he noticed my presence, he immediately approaches me with a smug smile on his face. Hi, Abe. Yep, there he is. 
Well, well, look who we have here. If it isn't Mr. Cost. Big congratulations to you for surviving the oh-so-terrifying slit-mouthed Kashima. I expected nothing less from the renowned spirit doctor that you were actively telling me I was going to die. <laughs> I was just lucky. I think so too, actually. You are blessed by the goddess of fortune. Unfortunately for Mr. Damon, he couldn't escape his cruel fate. I heard he's hospitalized at K Hospital. You sure know a lot about my situation, don't you, Abe? Don't you think it's time you tell me what sort of tricks you have up your sleeves? Oh my- or oh goodness me, to think you would be interested in my secrets. I'm attracted to you, Spirit Doctor, and you're drawn to my mystery. Please don't put it like that. We're basically meant to be. I don't dislike the sound of that. I do! Don't dodge my question. How did you... What a silly question. I don't see any need to answer that. Don't you know? What makes a mystery fascinating ca and captivating is the fact that it remains a mystery. Let's keep our relationship this way. I'm in no mood to alter it. <sighs> now, if you'll excuse me. Again. Yeet this boy into the sun. With a chuckle, Abe leaves the library. Got no idea what to make to, what to make of that kid. Thought we'll ever understand each other. Feel like I'm talking to an alien. Is this what they call a generation gap? No, this is just <laughs> this is just called talking to a weird goblin. <laughs> Step out of the library after that conversation, feeling rather frustrated. Are they all gone? School will be closing shortly. All students, please promptly vacate the school grounds for today. I guess that's enough for my evening investigation. I return to the infirmary to prepare for the night's investigation. Well, let's go. Might as well wait until the sun sets. Since I'm dealing with a spirit here, they should appear at night. Despite having no appetite, I forced down some cup noodles I bought on my way here to replenish my en energy. Top it off with a cup of instant coffee with extra sugar. Hmm. Doesn't compare to the stuff I brew myself. Coffee is still coffee, though. It's a hot black drink chock full of caffeine and chlorogenic acid. I'm telling myself that, I gulped the drink down. Yeah, okay, nerd. <laughs> Affectionate. Alright. The night is getting late. Time to head out. Got a call. Who's it from? Hello? Good evening, Mr. Cost. It's me, Yimiko Doryu from the Student Council. Why'd you need to call me this late at night? There's something I wanted to tell you. Remember how earlier I said Takai had nothing to do with the pool case? Actually, it's the opposite. Did you find out something? I asked one of Takai's friends at the dorm. Turns out, Takai used to be in swimming club. Hang on, wasn't she in the brass band club? She quit the club after injuring herself during practice. After that, she joined the brass band club. But apparently, she still often came to watch the swim club practice. And she, I heard she asked one of her friends in the club to let her swim from time to time. Because of that, the swimming club members kept away from her. Wait, sorry, what? I heard she asked one of her friends in the club to let her swim from time to time. Because of that, the swimming club members kept away from her. So she just did her own thing? There's more, though I don't know if it's related to the case or not. Are they just mad that, like, she would just, like, come and swim despite not being part of club? Is that is that what I'm supposed to understand? <laughs> uh, right before she died, she apparently lost her ribbon in the pool. Didn't she love that ribbon a lot? Sounds like that would have been rough on her, huh? Yeah, I heard she was flipping out. She searched all around the pool, the locker room, and the members' bags, but never found it. She was even saying she'd drain the entire pool if she had to. 
They were having a hard time stopping her. Did she find her ribbon in the end? No. And after that, the notice appeared. Doryu stops talking. I guess that's all there is to the story. Thanks, it'll help my, in my help my investigation. I should be apologizing for troubling you. Please call Machio if anything happens. She'll come flying. Anyway, have a good evening. I'm still not sure whether Kyoko Takai is connected to the pool case. Maybe I'll get a better understanding once I go to the pool. Yeah, okay. Oh. Just that. How many souls do we have? There are four in this chapter. Kind of zoomed through that. Only four. Okay. Weird. Let's save. And let's go to the pool. I leave the special building and head to the pool. After a bit of walking, I arrive at my destination. The entrance is blocked by a low palisade. Obviously, given that school hours are over, it's locked. Forgot to borrow the key. No choice but to bulldoze my way through. Jesus. Putting my feet on the palisade, I managed to shuffle myself over in one try. Oh, I thought he was gonna, like, actually just, like, break it down? <laughs> uh, this is the pool in question. Not sure if a spirit will appear tonight, but let's take a look around first. Oh, there's a lot to look at. Okay. Hmm. There are benches by the pool with dead insects scattered on top. Hmm. Pointless. The bucket and floor brush have been left out. Someone forget or did someone forget to put them away? Yoshi. Each lane has a diving board. Find a small object on one of the diving boards. Toof? Toof. Teef, 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 teef. Hmm. There's some benches by the pool. Judging by all the mold growing on them, these benches must be pretty uncared for. Right, just making sure there wasn't anything up above before we pool. check the actual pool. See nothing on the surface of the water. Certainly not a severed head. The water is cloudy and clumps of algae float atop it. I'm guessing no one's using the pool these days due to the incidents. I would still think they would like try and take care of it, but... What was that voice? Oh! Oh, what the fuck? Who who's there? Oh, come on, please work. I aim my flashlight toward the source of the voice. There, I spot a bloated ghost that looks like a drowned corpse. It's such an awful sight to behold that I can hardly keep myself from looking away. Now that I take a closer look at her, she's wearing a Konohara Academy uniform, I guess? <laughs> Judging by the hoses wrapped around her body, she looks like a victim of Hanako. Is this spirit of Kyoko Takai, the missing person named in the first notice? Save me. Save me. I start to get strange chills all over my body. Shit, I won't be able to endure this for long. Takai keeps saying save me over and over again. It's like she's begging for forgiveness. Monica's no longer here, though. She can't forgive her, nor save her. How do I save her now? The only things I can use at the moment are the bucket and the deck... The deck brush by the poolside, sorry. I, again, my brain just kind of shut off partway through that sentence. It happens. Um... What do we have? Scoop up air, scoop up pool water... Scoop up floating rubbish. Scoop up rub rubbish in the water. 
Are those not the same thing? I don't know what to do. Uh, scoop up some pool water. Yes. I guess. Try scooping up pool water with the bucket. Will you be saved if I do this? Sakai's spirit stares at the pool, murmuring something in a relieved voice. I know this was just a dumb hunch, but maybe I stumbled on the right answer? Was it? Why? There. More. Did she say there? More? I guess I need to do more to save the soul. I start to get strange chills all over my body. What should I do? Scoop up deeper water? Sorry, I'm like very like I don't I don't know what they're wanting from me. Yeah, and while well, it was above fifty percent, it's usually like if it's under eighty, you're less likely to do it. Uh, or you're like more likely to fail. I don't know. The percentages are weird. I'd like to try and scoop up that deeper yes. water again, please. Try putting the bucket deep in the water before scooping. The bucket's so uh, deep in the water that it's quite full. Slowly lift it up. I'm guessing she wants me to go get the bucket deeper into the water when she says there more? In that case, how's that? Scoop deep like you want it. It could, I mean, it could also be that she just wants more of the surface water out of the way, right? Because there's all the gunk. And she's trying to look for a ribbon. Takai's spirit stares at the water inside the bucket. Oh, never mind. We did it right. I follow her gaze and see something floating inside. What's this? It's her ribbon. It's a flashy red ribbon. I think I remember something about Takai wearing a flashy ribbon. Is this what you've been searching for all this time? Looks like this is the right choice. Okay, cool. I heard Takai disappeared while she was looking for her favorite ribbon. She was probably killed by Hanako before she ever found it. We need it. Takai's spirit laughs happily as she disappears into the darkness. I do like that we we're, like, coming across, like, smaller spirits that we can help out as well. The regret that Takai's soul, uh, lost soul bore has been dispelled. She shouldn't appear here again. Let's go back to the infirmary. Was that it? <laughs> Alright! <laughs> Little ghosts. Well, I was gonna say, like, in the last one, for, uh... Uh, for the slit mouth woman. Like, it was cool that we had, like, a, like, an encounter with one of her victims and stuff like that. And then we got to help, help them rest. It was just, it was little and it was neat and I liked it. Um. Yoshi. This was cool, but I <laughs> hope this wasn't, like, a whole chapter. Cool. Just triple checking everything for, uh, mm. teeth. Hmm. Okay. No teeth. But we also haven't gotten the, like, chapter start bit. 
Sorry, I would I would warn you when my controllers vibrate, but by the time my brain has processed that that is what I have felt, the jump scare has already happened. <laughs> so, you know, not particularly helpful. Light's kind of dim. My eyesight will only get worse if I read books in this kind of lighting. No need to stay here any longer. Well, I was gonna look for teeth. But if it's not gonna let me... There's no one in the faculty room. Her teachers work overtime a lot. Looks like the teachers here have a healthy work-life balance. Well, that's good. Good for them. There's no one in the student council room. Their ability to take action is rather surprising. Is it because they're both in student council? Talking about Michio and uh, Doryu. Oh, hi. Window. The window. That should be closed. There's a friend out there. Well, I say friend. This concludes the requested investigation. Yet the night is still young. What should I do next? You should look at the window. <laughs> <laughs> the departed do be going. <laughs> some reason I feel a set of eyes on me. For some reason! I don't know. Bro! Chenzo's bad at using his eyes. <laughs> Something on the other side of the window. <laughs> Bye! You should close that curtain now, please. Was that... The Departed? Where's my other little mouse pad? Hold on. Why were they here, though? Just said he has the bad eyes. <laughs> I mean, I guess. There's an unfamiliar, unfamiliar item on the desk. This is... Oh. Hand delivering their notices to us now. <laughs> the Departed's notice. Dear student council, I will kill you tonight. I'm watching, hiding in the school. Your beloved, the departed. Oh, is it Doryu? Are we targeting Dor Doryu or are we targeting both of them? <laughs> student, student council? Do they mean Michiho and Doryu? Shit, what do I, what to do? First things first, I need to check whether they're safe or not. Better call them now. Um, okay. <laughs> I got the note that Machio gave me, and then I punch in the number written on the paper. Michio isn't answering. Well then, let's call the dorm and check if they're in their rooms. Hi, Konohara, Konohara Academy Student Dormitory here. The languid voice of a middle-aged woman is transmitted into the receiver that is pressed against my ear. She must be the dorm manager. My apologies for calling this late at night. My name's Kost. I'm one of the teachers at Konohara Academy. Have Himiko Doryu and Michio uh, Kinakawa returned home? Hold on, Mr. Ko uh, Mr. Kost, right? So you're the teacher who's been hitting on those two- Excuse me? What? Playing dumb, I see. I've heard it all from the kids here, you know. They say there's a four-eyed, middle-aged teacher who's been hanging around Doryu and Kinikawa an awful lot. I've been talking to them! Oh my god. Hang on a second. This is... My goodness, how immoral. There have been more and more indecent teachers trying to put their hands on these innocent students. Just admit it already. That's, why you're, uh, that's what your intentions are, aren't they? Ma'am?! This is getting me nowhere fast. She's prejudiced against me. Why is this happening now of all times? What can I do to make her listen to me? I'm gonna bring up Mr. Ko Konoe. I don't like the intimidation route, but... Oh, okay. I'm investigating a case at the request of Mr. Konoe. If you refuse to cooperate, that's your choice, but I'm letting you know that he'll be hearing about it. Okay, we are going the intimidation route. Are you alright with that? Huh? Oh, hold on a second. You're joking, right? I need to let my hair down. It is getting too heavy and making my head hurt. 
Why don't you try calling him and see whether uh, or not he thinks it's a joke? So what are you gonna do? Your call. Uh, dorm manager remains silent. Merely mentioning the name Konoe seems to be a pretty effective tactic within the school. My apologies. You see, the female dormitory has been getting a lot of weird calls lately. I didn't mean to offend you at all. I'm just taking precautions for the girl's sake. You know that, right? Oh, fuck off. Now she's finally willing to listen. So where are Doryu and Kinikawa? To tell you the truth, both of them haven't returned, and it's already past curfew. Excuse me? I always warn the kids that they need to get back to by, the, uh, by the curfew, but they... Dorm manager offers up a bunch of half-assed excuses. She obviously just doesn't want to be held accountable. They actually left after coming back. I let them go since it was before the curfew. I didn't do anything wrong. Did you ask where they were going? No, I respected their privacy. But I distinctly remember that Kinakawa was talking on the phone before she left. Um, judging by their conversation, I assumed she was invited out by someone. Oh, okay. I'll try looking for them. Ignoring what the dorm manager attempts to say after that, I immediately hang up the phone. This is bad. Stifling my mounting anxiety, I quickly try to organize my thoughts. They got a phone call and left the dorm. Luring their target out with a phone call is a trick the departed has used over and over again. Knowing that, it's probably a sign that they've been lured back in onto school grounds. I need to find them, and quickly. Alright. Council room? Doryu and Michio aren't here. Okay, so they're probably like in the new building at this point. The two of them have to be at school somewhere. But where to look first? Come. Place connect past future. A clock tower? A feeling just now. Not whisper. It's the same voice that told me to pretend to be Mr. Hirose during Slipmouth Kashima's case. Is it the, um, is it the doll? Is the doll communicating with us? Come to the place that connects the past and the future. The voice is trying to guide me somewhere. Okay, I didn't think I'd be allowed in there. But I gotta check for teeth! Teeth, teeth. Okay. Um, or it could just be the connecting corridor. I suppose. Yeah. The flashlight. Y your. It is the doll. Female doll is standing in the darkness. You're... You're the one who called me, right? Of course the words out of my tensed mouth. So, a place that connects the past and the future. Must be this corridor that connects the old and new buildings. What the hell are you? Ah! Ah! It's like peanut butter, baby. Ah! Doll only res responds with a hollow voice. We simply stand facing each other, both of us motionless as time passes. Meanwhile, Doryu and Michio are... feel uneasy thinking about it. Why did you call me? Ah! Ah! L play! Play! Be! What is she trying to say? Place, bell, rings. Okay, so we are going to the clock tower. My... Doll in the red dress disappears, blending into the darkness. What does she want to tell me? Place where the bell rings. My... What's in there? 
Hold on, we gotta go to the courtyard first. Yoshi. Massive statue of the guardian fox stands here. It's darkened, which gives one the impression that it's been here for quite some time. Foxes might be the messengers of Inari, but this isn't the time to make a wish. Hold on, I take it back. This is the perfect time to wish for their safety. Close my eyes and clap my hands. Hope Machio and Dory will be safe. <laughs> well, what was that sound? Fox looks the same as before. Is it just my imagination? Why am I getting chills then? Teeth! Suddenly, something falls out of the fox's mouth. Foxes shouldn't have people teeth. Pick it up. It's an eerie tooth. The explanation is really confusing. I've got a bad feeling. Are they safe? I need to find them quickly. I mean, foxes need teeth, sure. But do foxes need people teeth? That's, that's my question. Do they need people teeth? Is it necessary? Okay, there's nothing else here. Whatever teeth they can get. Alright, fair enough. If you need teeth, you're gonna you're gonna take whatever ones that, that come your way. <laughs> A place where the bell rings, eh? It's only one possibility. See, I had assumed that the clock tower was where we were supposed to go from the get-go just because it's the only thing um here at the school that's like remained since the beginning i mean it's not it wasn't made like it wasn't here when they first made the school but it was made like after the school had been open for 10 years right it's one of the older structures the clock tower a landmark of Konohahara Academy that was built to commemorate the school's 10th anniversary. Having fortunately escaped the fiery ravages of war, it became the symbol of the school along with the old building. Clock stopped working seven years ago, so there's no way the bell can ring. But I've often heard the bell since coming here, especially on occasions when the departed's presence is strong. The bell is ringing. Well, we gotta get in there ASAP. That scream just now. Was it Doryu? She's nearby. Probably inside the clock tower. Oh, jeez. The door of the grand clock tower is slightly ajar. Almost as if it's beckoning me to enter. The moment I put my hand on the rusty doorknob, double doors fling wide open. What exactly am I seeing here? Well, we would, we'd been doing so good though. Both Doryu and Michio are laying on the floor in their underwear. What the hell happened here? You guys okay? I don't think they're okay. Yes. Doryu replies weakly. She can't think straight. I don't think she's doing okay. <laughs> Mr. Cost! Michio groans and calls my name. Can you stand? D don't think so. Can't move my legs and arms. Yeah, you got, like, dust on you. <laughs> the dust is holding you down. Oh, no, it's a blob. Okay. Huge blob is wriggling around them, restraining their limbs. Looks like a massive slime mold. Ew. I'm gonna rip it off. But wait! Don't provoke the bugs! They'll bite! A swarm of insects are crawling on their skin. Some are venomous, including the centipedes. If this is the departed's doing, then these are likely no ordinary insects. There are bound to be massive consequences if I mess this up. These girls could end up like Damon. Ugh. Better be extremely careful and take things step by step. What should I do first? Put a blanket over him. Um, I mean, get Doryu out of there. I need her to stop putting her ass in my face. 
First, I rip off the slime mold that's binding Doryu's limbs. And then I carefully brush the bugs from her body. Can you hear me, Doryu? Uh, Mr. Cost? Let's get out of here. Can you walk? Y yes. Help Doryu back to her feet and get her out of the clock tower. We're just leaving Michio behind? We should be safe here. I'm going back for Michio now. Wait here. I return to the clock tower and do the same thing in the same exact order to help Michio. Lastly, I scoop up their uniforms from the floor and run outside with her. Did it matter who I chose first? Close the doors behind me and heave a huge sigh of relief. It all went well. While the two are getting dressed, I look up at the clock tower. Is it just coincidence that they were put here? I don't think so. There must be a reason for it. And a calculated one at that. Mr. Cost, we're done changing. I have to ask them what happened. Before that, let's get back to the infirmary. Hmm. Once we arrive, I make them some instant coffee. Both of them sip their drinks in silence. We've gone 12 hours into the game and have our first, like, major... <laughs> major undie moment. I mean, we've had a couple of other smaller ones before, but they weren't... I mean, aside from, like, Michio, like... straddling that statue. <laughs> but she was a horrible monster. We could see Hanako's bra at one point. But that was... I don't know. It wasn't as... Yeah, they're... <laughs> they're doing better compared to the first one. Ugh. But come on, guys. Please. Their faces have regained some color. Looks like they've calmed down a bit. They should be able to talk now. And at least with the, the ones earlier in the game, it wasn't like... Again, up until Michio straddling that statue... It wasn't, like, that wasn't necessarily the focus <laughs> of the CGs either. Um, <laughs> but, come on. Come on. <laughs> Looks like they've calmed down a bit. They should be able to talk now. Alright. Mr. Cost, I'm fine now. Feel free to ask us anything you need to know. That goes for me, too. Despite their trembling voices, they're trying to be strong. Honestly, I'd rather not make these kids recall their, such painful events, but I don't have any choice. Time to figure out what happened in the clock tower. Um, We can wait to tell them about the spirits. Why did they come back to the school? Dorm manager told me you were invited out by someone. Who called you? Uh, it was you. It was not me. Me. You asked us to help you because you were trapped at the clock tower. So Hime and I went out there. I think that was probably the departed pretending to be me in order to lure you out. Are you serious? Damn, they're a tricky enemy. What happened in the clock tower? The door was open when we arrived at the clock tower. The moment we stepped inside, a swarm of insects attacked us. They were crawling under our uniforms, so we took them off and tried to get the insects off of us. I started panicking, and everything went blank after that. If they were just normal insects, I wouldn't have been so scared, but I saw some venomous centipedes among them. My limbs refused to move when I tried to escape. And then you just- or you came just when we were at the end of our ropes. You really saved our lives. Well, it didn't really tell me much of anything, but let me tell you about the spirit in the pool. I tell them that I've managed to resolve the situation with the spirit in the pool. Thank you, Mr. Cost. To think that spirit was really Takai. So she was murdered by Hanako, and then became a spirit. Kinda scary to think about a spirit giving birth to another spirit. Takai isn't the only victim that turned into a spirit. Shinji, who was killed by Kashima, was haunting the gymnasium. I have to wonder if this entire series of awful events was set in motion by the departed. Um... Was the departed the one who sent those insects to attack us? 
most likely. Saw a notice that they, uh, that they were trying to kill you two. Student council. Why us? Might have an idea why. You mind telling us? So, I've noticed that the Departed's targets fall into two categories. People directly targeted by the Departed, like you were, and those who are targeted by other spirits. Everyone who's been directly targeted by the Departed, Departed have all been people I'm close with. Then that means we were targeted because we're close with you? I think so. Oh, I see. I think it's more that it's not that we're necessarily close. It's just that the Departed perceives us as being close and is jealous of the fact that I am spending time with people that aren't her. And it's like, well, yeah, my friends aren't trying to kill me constantly. So I like hanging out with them. <laughs> and or we have a business relationship and are working on solving some some cases. And they're not trying to kill me. <laughs> I'm sorry, Doryu. Sorry, Michio. You wouldn't have had this horrific experience if I hadn't asked for your help. I'm a curse. I shouldn't have gotten involved in this case. Then Damon wouldn't have had to go through such terrible things. My chest tightens as feelings of regret well up inside me. Yeah, one of my favorite things about my friends is how rarely they try to kill me. Um, I really like it when my friends aren't actively trying to murder me. It's like, it's just this, this thing that we have. How we bond. We bond through the lack of murder. And it's really nice. <laughs> I really like it when my friends aren't trying to do a murder on me. But we were saved because of you. Or you? You still saved our lives. That's not something that just anyone would have been able to do. You did it because you have the skills. Not the. <laughs> what is this music? Where is this? Where did this come from? Yep, yep. The other adults don't believe in the departed. You're the only one I can rely on to protect us. So please don't apologize for caring about us. We're really grateful to you. Michio. Thank you. But just know that this is only because I'm an adult. Oh yeah, that one was a thing that we saw. But that's like... I mean, that's borderline edgy. <laughs> But this was mild compared to the, the Vine one in the first game. Even after experiencing many terrible things, they never lose their smiles. They never turn away from the terror lurking in the darkness. Instead, they're trying to fight against it. I don't know if it's because they're brave or have a strong sense of justice. One thing's for sure, though. What those two are doing is not something that just anyone would be capable of. Witnessing their strength and resolve has given me encouragement. The two of them shine brightly, like a beacon in the darkness. Sorry, my nose is, like, itchy. <laughs> but not, like, anywhere that I can actually, like, scratch. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's, like, right on the outsides of my nostrils. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Mr. Cost, there's something I'm curious about. Is the departed really hiding in our school? Yeah. Izumi and I said they're pretending to be human. Do you know who they are? No, unfortunately. They're one cautious foe, disguising themselves and leaving no clues at all. Mr. Cost, would you like to try deducing the Departed's true identity with us? Oh, nice idea. Let's give it a shot. Three heads are better than two. Yeah, sure. You better try it. Their suggestion piques my interest. Who knows? Maybe they can ac actually can feel the Departed's presence. This music, though. 
So the departed is targeting those who are close to you, right? How would you know, uh, how would they know your circle of friends and who you're close to, though? Since they're a spirit, they might have used their supernatural powers to figure it out. Or they might have discovered it when pretending to be a human at the school. Why don't you try exploring that option? If we assume they're just using powers, that won't leave us any path to deduce anything. There's only a handful of people who know about I and Sho at this school. Are we... I don't want to suspect... <laughs> I don't want us to suspect Damon is the thing. Um, and now I'm sitting here being like, oh, but what if he... <laughs> what if he's doing a... And then there were none situation where he's... He's put himself into a coma, but he's not actually in a coma. It's not Damon. It's not Damon! It's not Damon! Could be Mr. Konoe, though. I don't trust that fucker. First up is my client and the headmaster of the school, Mr. Konoe. Since I report everything related to the case to him, he would have learned a thing or two about me during the process. I like this music. Next, we have the curriculum coordinator, Sakamoto, who I also don't trust, but I think it's more that I just don't like her. Um, mysterious and cantankerous individual, she might have heard things about me from Mr. Konoe and her colleagues. Next, the male student named Haruakia Abe. He's, he's just a nerd. <laughs> For some reason, he knows a lot about me and my connections. He called me Spirit Doctor, so he may know about the Mark Bearers, too. He's just a dweeb. He's just a little guy. It's not Abe. And then we have Himiko Doryu. And Michio Kinokawa, who I absolutely do not trust. Michio, not Doryu. Although, like, I've considered Doryu. It's not that I don't trust Doryu. It's just that I don't know her is, is the reason I suspect her. And also she's so like unsuspicious that that makes her suspicious, right? <laughs> it's one of those, you would never suspect her because she's just, she's just there. But I do want to know about the, again, <laughs> in just a, in a, in a spiritual sense. I want to know about the mark on her face. Um, because it is reminiscent of of the, the mark that we had in the first death mark. And I just want to, I just want to know what's up with that. No one, literally no one has commented on it, except for that one time when we just stared at it for too long and she's like, hey, you're making me uncomfortable. And, and then we were like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I apologize. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, I just saw your comment about Abe. He's just a guy who sucks. Yeah, no, that's correct. And yeah, it's just like, hey lady, why are you purple? Do you know you're purple? Oh, sorry, there's like a wet spot on my shirt. <laughs> okay, it's fine. <laughs> um... So yeah, that's just more of a, like, I wanna, I have considered her and she's like in my, on my list of people that I suspect, but like, I don't know. I don't know. I flip flop with her. I just don't trust Michio, but the fact that she was possessed last chapter drops her down a little bit for me, but not by much. Because that could have just been a ploy by by the departed, you know? I don't know. Both of them have been working with me, so they know I and she as well. Show, excuse me. Is the departed among them? If so, who is it? <laughs> is Seizo Konoe the part? I don't think I don't think it's Konoe. I definitely think he's involved in why the Departed is here. I don't think Konoe is the Departed. If that if that makes sense. Um, like I think whatever his grandpa uh, and his father and he 
what what any or all of them or some of them were up to has brought this situation on us. Um, but I don't think he is the departed. Are we just, can we just like go through the list? Is that what we're doing? If that's true, it means this whole investigation is part of the departed's plan. Both the notices and the students' disappearances were all traps to lure you out. Oh, so he's like a mastermind pulling the strings behind the scenes? I'd be op uh, been operating under the impression that the departed was female, since they refer to themselves as a bride. So what, why would they have assumed the form of a man when they could have just as easily taken the, a female form to throw you off? I, 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 I'm not, I'm not, I'm not tracking this logic because it literally could be, they could, they could be presenting themselves on the opposite side of the gender spectrum to like, be like, oh, you'd never guess it's me. <laughs> this isn't as easy as I thought. I just don't have enough clues to deduce the, the departed's true identity yet. Can only press on with the investigation, all the while wondering who are my allies and who are my enemies. Okay, I'm glad we don't suspect Damon. Before we realize it, a long time has passed. I'm sad that we weren't able to like go through all of the options, um, because if I had assumed we would be able to, which is why I chose Conway. Um, I think Sakamoto is high up there, uh, just because. She says it's because she doesn't want to harm the reputation of the school, uh, but she's been very not forthcoming with information for us um, and is making us go out there and, and solve everything on our own. Again, I understand it from a, like a, a, a gameplay aspect. We need things to do. But also, lady, <laughs> it could be Doryu. Um... Because while we've spoken to her a lot, the game hasn't drawn a lot of attention to her. Which then makes it seem like they just want her to, like, blend into the background. And and have you kind of forget that she's there. And she's very much not a threat. Um, she's not making a fool of herself by, like, hitting on us. Oh, let me turn that down just a smidge because that was too bright. Um, and, like... I played V3. I played Danganronpa V3. It's it's always the one that they they draw the, the least attention to. Um and also like nobody has talked about the purple mark on her. And then and 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 then Michio is just Michio and is weird and wants us to pay attention to her all of the time and it's like ma'am, I am like at least twice your age. <laughs> Go away. <laughs> so I think it's, I do think it's like one of the ladies. Um, one of the three ladies that we have just discussed. Abe's just annoying. And Konoe is involved somehow. I just haven't been able to discern how. Um can't just keep these girls out when they've already broken their curfew. We better leave the infirmary as soon as we're ready. Alright. Anyway. That's my breakdown of everything. I TLDR. I don't know who the fuck it is. <laughs> and that's, that's, that's that. Uh, after closing up the special building, we leave the school. Um, Mr. Cost, would you mind sharing more details about the case with us? Maybe we can help you come up with something. Well, you have a point, but... You don't want us to get involved? It's too late for that. We've already been targeted by the Departed. You solving this case is the only way we're going to get our normal lives back. That's why both of us want to help you out. Please let us help, Mr. Cost. Fine. All right. All the deaths, grotesque occult phenomena, the fear of being targeted by the departed. My heart is overburdened with all this stress. I want to let it all out. I just want to vent to someone. Anyone. 
So once these two press me, I give in easily, opening up like an unlocked diary, spilling the details of the incidents up to this point. How Horikoshi and Manabe were killed by spirits, Damon's hospitalization, as well as the female doll and the numerous visions she's shown me. Something I didn't even tell the mark bearers. Well, you should have. You should have told them. Guess that's just about everything. <laughs> They're both like, have you considered a therapist? <laughs> Maybe don't trauma dump on us. <laughs> Because some of that stuff's pretty fucking heavy. Both of them stare at me, stunned. I must find it hard to believe. Honestly, it'd be more of a shock if they believed it at all. Um, Mr. Cost? That doll in a red dress. We know her. Oh? Say what? We saw her before at the clock tower. On the day we received this curse. What curse? I'm not following you. What a turn of events. I have to ask for details. It was two months ago, during summer break. We went to the clock tower for the school's 70th anniversary project. Oh yeah, weren't you guys planning to get the clock tower moving again? Yeah, we wanted to inspect the inside of the tower before moving on with the project. That was when we saw a female doll in a red dress placed on the altar. Did the doll move? No, she was just sitting on the altar. It immediately gave us both the chills, so we decided to get out of the tower. But it was too late. We were already cursed. Is that what the purple mark on your face is? Does Michio have it somewhere else on her body? Um, is it okay if I tell him he may? Sure, go ahead. Only because I'm sure you'll believe us, Mr. Cost. You're right. Chio looks serious, which isn't a sight of her I've seen often. You can see them, can't you? My white hair and the mark on Hime's face. Oh. Yeah, they really stand out. To tell you the truth, other people can't see them. That... That explains a lot, actually. <laughs> um, that would explain her weird reaction when we commented on, like, her white hair. And the same reaction that we got from Himiko uh, when we mentioned that we thought it was strange that Michiho was able to, like, have white hair at school and nobody was reprimanding her. And also why she got really uncomfy... Well, I mean, I just, I just feel like anyone would be uncomfortable if somebody was just, like, staring at your face. Like, at a spot on your face. Um, but, like, that would explain the extra level of discomfort from Himiko when we were staring at, at the mark on her face. Okay. I mean, there's still, there's still a level of distrust here, but, you know, if it's a lie... That's a good lie. Um, and if it's not, that makes so much more sense now. <laughs> what? Aside from us, the only one who can see them is you. That's impossible, but how? Now that I think about it, there was definitely something off. Doryu's never even tried to hide her mark from others, and none of the mark bearers have ever commented on Michio's white hair. Well, maybe because they're not rude. <laughs> Consider. No, it's uh, it all makes sense now. It's because I'm the only one who can see them. We've been this way ever since we met that doll. This must be the doll's curse. Uh, why they never mention their curse? I mean, probably because nobody would believe them. We actually told the dorm manager about it before, but she didn't believe us. She thought we were just being weird kids. It's really hard on us. After that, we decided not to speak about it to anyone else. Or you saw only ca casts her eyes downward. Seems like this has really taken a toll on her and Michio. After that, we met you. I thought I noticed you staring at my mark. I was wondering whether you could see it back then. Remember when you complimented my hair before? That convinced me you were the only one who could see these things. I was really happy about that. Michio said uh, we should talk about it with you, but I was afraid. I was scared you'd look at us weird. 
However, tonight, I finally got the courage. Why am I the only one who can see these things, though? Hmm. I'm not too sure about, uh, about why that is. Aren't there some spiritual occurrences that are only visible to you? Maybe our curse is like that. So is this another effect of my gifted supernatural sense? The woes of being cursed. I recall the mark that was carved on my body four months ago. It was a death curse. Undoubtedly, their curse is also also has the power to bring misfortune upon them. Have you experienced anything strange ever since you got the curse? Like a health condition, hearing or seeing things? Nothing at the moment. I'm not sleep deprived and still have my normal appetite. How about you, Hime? I'm fine too. I, I knew it. This curse is bad news, right? I mean, it's called a curse for a reason. Do we think it's a curse or do we think that the doll is like trying to protect them? Because so far, and I mean, granted, again, our track re record with dolls, not ideal. Um, but like thus far, the doll has done nothing but help us. And again, that's that's what Mary did in the first one, or seemed to have done, uh, and she turned out to be bad news. <laughs> but like, oop, don't play automatically. Is it is it a curse or is it like a protection? I don't know. Uh, d don't scare me like that. I feel like I've probably gotten all the information I need from them at the moment. Mr. Cost, I've been thinking about this for a while, but do you think the, de the Departed's true identity is that doll? I... I don't think so. Like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna write that off. And obviously that's like, I feel like that's something that like most of us would have thought at some point during this playthrough, right? Is that, oh, maybe the doll is, is the departed. Or maybe they're like working together if they're not, if they're not one and the same. But, I don't think so. She put a curse on us though. Isn't she like bad news? I'm sure she's the departed. Evil spirits that were sealed in the clock tower have come out. And I'm sure that was our fault. But she looks different from the Departed. If the Departed can transform into a human, they can probably turn into other things too. No, I, I don't think it's... I wish... I wish he didn't say that. I understand why he did. But I don't think it's... It just seems weird. Sorry, I'm trying to think of... I'm thinking it through while I'm speaking, and, and so I have to constantly stop to amend what I was about to say. <laughs> I guess there's the possibility of it, because The Departed wants us to, like, save these spirits, right? Um, so that they're tasty. And what the doll has been doing has been essentially helping us to save the spirits. But it seems like a really weird and convoluted way to, like, go about it. And while... I don't know. I don't, I don't think they're the same. I'm not gonna say that the doll isn't evil. But I don't think the departed and, and the doll are the same. Um... And I can't really give any more reason other than that's just my gut feeling. <laughs> but yeah. Even this curse of ours is the departed's doing. That means it's gonna be lifted once they're gone. You don't know that it's the departed's doing. It's it's the doll's doing. Michio gives an abnormally loud shout. She seems to really believe the female doll is the departed. She was already investigating spirits in The Departed when we first met. I understand why she was doing that now. She wasn't my rival. She was trying to find a way to lift her curse. 
If what Michio said is true, The Departed's case isn't just something that's happening randomly. They're incidents uh, that both of us caused. Who are you? We have to put an end to this case. It could be... Sorry, I'm thinking about, like, the Mary situation again. Um, it could be... Because if, re if I remember correctly... And again, it has been a minute since I played the first one. Um, one of... One of the main character's family members. I want to say his dad? Um, but it could have been his sister as well. Someone... Someone in his family was making was making Mary, right, to like trap the 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 spirit that was Mary inside the doll to like keep her from hurting people. And he was like performing rites and stuff on her, right? To like keep her uh I'm trying to think of the word. Sorry. Just to just to keep her placated not placated. Um but chained, more or less, so that she couldn't hurt people. It could be that this doll is this is similar to that, possibly even being made by the Kujao family to like trap the departed in, right? Um Which is why like the clock tower didn't explode when when the bombs were being dropped. But that maybe just like after years and years of, of neglect and wear and tear and just generally existing like and and probably not being tended to since like the whole of the Kujao family aside from ourselves has like died um either it was just bad timing on Himiko and Michiho's part sorry I'm like very much into just like trying to figure out what's going on before they tell us what's going on <laughs> <laughs> Let me just hypothesize for a little bit. Um, either it was just bad timing on Himiko and Michiho's part, or they, like, knocked something over and, like, released the departed that was being stored in the doll. But the doll is still trying to, like, do its job of, of keeping the departed, um, you know... <laughs> like imprisoned and so it's trying to help us get through these so that we can like figure out who it is and be able to to stop it I don't know I don't know those are a handful of thoughts that I have um I don't know if any of that made sense to any of you but that's what that's what's going on in my brain right now <laughs> please let us help you out <laughs> I like, I like this game. Good game. Uh, I've learned new information from the two of them. The evil darkness surrounding Konohahara Academy continues to deepen. I wonder when that darkness will finally be cleared away and replaced by sunshine. Where is this? Oh, it's the dorms. Okay. When we arrive at the dormitory, the dorm manager is waiting for us. Given the fact that they broke the curfew and returned this late at night, it's no wonder she's beside herself with rage. But I've already learned the trick to dealing with her from our earlier phone call. She's only concerned about who's going to be held responsible for all of this. Once I promise her that I won't tell the school about the curfew violation, she takes it down several notches. I say goodbye to Doryu and Michiho and leave the dormitory. Time to head back to Kujao Mansion. I'm... I'm surprised that he's not, like... I know he's trying to, like, do research into the uh, Konoe family and, like, the school itself. But I'm surprised that, especially after seeing another, like, living ball-jointed ball doll, he hasn't, like, checked the notes that his family has left behind about whether or not they've done something for the Konoe family, you know? Like, even if it's... it's I mean, it's such a... It's, if you first saw it, it would feel like a bit of a stretch. But that's also, like, it's only been four or five months since, <laughs> since like, the first death mark happened. I would... I don't know. I would, I would look into that, personally. 
There, I start compiling all the reports I need to submit to Mr. Konoy, accompanied by a cup of sweet coffee. How should I summarize this? If I mention the clock tower incident, I'm gonna have to bring up the girls breaking curfew as well. That would betray the dorm manager and ruin the image of those two students. <laughs> Excuse me. Guess I should just stick to mentioning the pool ghost. The black telephone rings loudly. Who's calling me this late at night? Hello? Um, it's me, Himiko Doryu. Oh, I wasn't expecting you to call this soon. Before we parted ways, I gave them the number to the Kujao Mansion, just in case. I just didn't imagine that she'd be using the number this soon. So why did you call? Well, I wanted to thank you again for earlier. Same here. Thank you for uh, sharing your information with me. Glad I could be of help. I never expected there'd be an adult who would take us seriously. It made me very happy. Of course I believe you too. I can literally see the proof of what you're telling me with the mark of yours and Michio's hair. Does that mean you wouldn't believe us if you couldn't see my mark? Uh, I mean, I'd still probably believe you. Glad to hear that then. Just to let you know, I also believe in you, Mr. Cost. I know you'll solve this case. Feel free to come to me anytime. I'll be more than happy to help you out as the student council president. Might be, might be bad with all this spirit stuff, but I'll try my best. I appreciate your courage, but don't push yourself, okay? Y yes I'll be careful. I have to go take a bath soon. Good night, Mr. Cost. You don't need to tell me that, but okay. Good night! <laughs> Happy cleaning! I hang up the phone once the conversation's over. I need to wash off my sweat and get some shut-eye, too. I just don't- I don't need these underage kids telling me what's going on. That's all. I don't need them being weird at me. Don't want them to be weird at me. Y'all are kids. When I close my eyes, the smiles of the two girls I saved tonight run through my mind. My tension melts away. I like to hang up the phone before this conversation's over. It just keeps them guessing. I mean... <laughs> You'll never know, A, when, the, <laughs> when it's gonna happen. Ugh. Or what's gonna be said next. For this first time in days, I experience that pleasant bliss of floating to dreamland. Unburdened by the past few days' events. However, I know this tranquility is fleeting at best. Once a new notice arrives, I'll have to face the specter again. Chapter 4 We did it. Um. It's not been too long since. Well, I guess it's been a bit since our last break. I need to use the bathroom again. Is the main thing. Um, so let's do that. A little, a little break. Little break this time. We'll be right back. Also, we didn't get see Cheshire get smushed. Was I imagining that? Uh, the game just closed? <laughs> I'm 70% sure that means we won and it didn't play the last cutscene properly.
let me see if I can just get a quick wiki <laughs> of all the nuts so I can enlighten chat with some of the names. We've got <clears throat> Nourishing Nut, <laughs> <laughs> Invigorating Nut, <laughs> Fortifying Nut, Tough Nut, Magic Nut, they Resistant know what they've Nut, done? Do they know what Sharp they've done? Nut. They have to know, right? Slippery Nut. <laughs> Critical nut. Oh jeez. <laughs> Severe. <laughs> I'm scared about the critical nut. And then lastly, it's just a light nut. Oh, it's just just a light nut. <laughs> oh jeez. <laughs> okay. I was expecting a j an Amy jump scare, but I thought she was Jimmy for a second because he was one of the audiovisual booths on the seventh floor. Oh! Uh, I can be a zombie. Listen, I can do the weird sounds. You want me to do the weird sounds? I'll do the weird sounds. Get him! I figured you'd turn up since I haven't seen you in a while, but I never expected to see you here. N Nagito! Uh, huh? Why are you in such a dangerous place? Same to you. Why are you here? I I heard the body discovery announcement, and I thought something happened in this room. Time. Five minutes has started. Um. But yeah, we can uh, at some point if we. I'm back. <laughs> but it's just like I said, just a quick break. It's a little break. Ah, uh, a few days have passed since the incident at the clock tower. Oh, jeez. Hey, hospital is surprisingly empty for midday. We're gonna go see the boy! Forgive the expression, but the place is basically dead. Bruh. <laughs> Inappropriate. Um... From the other side of the hallway, a familiar looking man is approaching me. Next to him is a small girl. Oh, okay. I was like, what's happening? Hello, Mr. Cost. Are you also here to visit Damon and Ida? Yeah, pretty much. She asked me to come with her. <gasps> My baby! Suzu! Good afternoon. This girl is Suzu Morimiya. Oh, she's but a grade schooler. She's also one of the mark bearers. After a previous case, she's come to idolize Ida and treat him as her older brother. I love that. Ida, why are you taking Suzu here on a weekday afternoon? She's not skipping school, right? Today is her school's anniversary. Um, I heard the situation from Ida. Mr. Damon's still asleep because of a spirit's curse, isn't he? Most likely. No way. Her eyes are filled with deep sorrow. Don't you worry, Suzu. Mr. Cost and I will definitely save Mr. Damon, alright? Ida proudly taps his chest while making that claim. I have no idea where that confidence comes from. Despite my skepticism, the display brings a smile back to Suzu's face. Ida, Mr. Can I trust you too? Only guarantee in life is death, kid. Jesus! We'll just say, of course. Thank you, mister. Anyway, Mr. Cost, I'll continue to back you up on your investigation. I know about that. Oops, let's save that for later. I've got to get Suzu back home. I'll go to Kujao Mansion after that. Help me if we need anything. Ugh. See you later, mister. Bye, Suzu, I love you. 
Glad to know you're doing great. I don't know to leave after that. Crap, that was my chance to tell him. Following Slipmouth Kashima's case, I told Moe and Sho to stay out of the investigation. But Ida wasn't around, so I haven't told him yet. You should listen. Listen. Oh, I missed some teeth in the last one, didn't I? Would have just been two. Would have been just two teeth. Finish my visit with Damon and leave the hospital. He's still comatose, showing no sign of leaving Limbo and rejoining the ranks of the conscious. Where, where would I have found those? Whatever. The doctors have yet to identify the root cause of his coma. If it's truly the Departed's curse that is behind his condition, he won't pull out of this so long as the Departed still exists. I drive my car to Konoahara Academy. A new notice hasn't been discovered yet. But Mr. Konoe asked me to teach a class this afternoon. Hmm. I don't think we should, like, chase away the other mark bearers. I think having them, like, stay is important. Like, let them know, like, hey, like, if you're doing this, you're gonna be in, like, you know, mortal danger. <laughs> but, like, don't just, don't just chase them away. Enter the classroom and take my place in front of the students. And I proceed with the class like usual. When Konoe first asked me to teach as part of my investigation, I thought it would be an absolute disaster, but surprisingly, I'm doing just fine. On the other hand, the students, the students seem to be markedly less fine. The number of fidgeting students that can't focus on class is too large to ignore. Considering some of them also asked me about my investigation, it's obvious what's on their minds. The Departed isn't just a fringe rumor anymore. These students have gone from being amused to being terrified. The human heart is a fragile thing. Seeing these kids with their flagging spirits, I know I need to hurry up and close this case. In what feels like the blink of an eye, class is over. First time I taught, it felt like time stood still. It's kind of troubling to realize I've now been at it long enough that I'm used to it. After school, I start my investigation solo. Think back to my conversation with Doryu and Michio the other day. The part might be someone close to me. In order to narrow it down, I make the rounds asking teachers and students alike about the people involved in the incident. However, my efforts are fruitless, and all I get is a lot of small talk and wasted effort. I attempt to take a different angle to figure out the Departed's true identity and think it over. Well, there she is. The Departed is good at hiding. Let's say they're able to take the place of someone else. And when they do, they can perfectly duplicate that person's looks, memories, and personality. It'd be the perfect disguise. Nobody could see through that. With that level of deception, the only real chance to know their true identity would probably be once, they've achie once they'd achieved their goal. Which will likely be when they exchange vows with their dear husband. And for me, that would either be death or a fate worse than that. So I have to find the answer before then. Glance up and notice that it's already dark. It's time for the students to leave school. I'm not getting anywhere by blindly hunting for clues. Better go to the infirmary and put together a real plan of action. Find a woman in a white coat waiting inside the infirmary. Oh, is it the, the other doctor? For a moment, I think she's a school nurse, but then I see her face. Dono. It is! Madoka! It's Hiru! Hello, Kost. Never, never would have imagined you be a teacher here. I was really shocked when I heard the news from Damon. Hiru? Why are you here? To help you out with the investigation. What else would I be doing here? I never would have imagined I'd hear the word help come out of Hiru's mouth. There's gotta be a reason. She's Madoka Hiru. She wears a white coat, but not because she's a doctor. Hiru's a- oh right, she's just a- she's like a researcher. Hiru's a mark bearer who works at a pharma company as a researcher. If I remember correctly, you don't handle paranormal phenomena all too well. But, well, true. I mean, after all the suffering I was put through before, how could I be expected to like it? So why are you here now, then? Jeez, you're so annoying. I have my own reasons, alright? 
She's rather intelligent, but Haru has also uh, has quite the cowardly streak. However, there are times when her curiosity gets the better of her and she ends up poking her nose into bizarre incidents. Call it a test of courage, I suppose. To tell you the truth, I'm here because Damon asked. In the event that something were to happen to him, he asked that I come help you in his stead. Hence, I'm here, using up my paid leave. I appreciate you taking your obligation to Damon seriously, but this case is extremely dangerous. There have been a lot of casualties already. Oh, come now. Don't patronize me. I'm fully aware of the dangers present. Then why are you... Because I want to save Damon. Simple as that. They're my friends. Too, or they're my friends too, not just yours. Valid. I <laughs> I need Vincenzo to understand that people want to do this because they want to do this. Uh, and, and that they are all... Well, most of them are adults. But all of them are consenting. <laughs> and understand the dangers that they're facing. So, like... Uh, let's talk about the investigation. Demon apprised me of the situation. A spirit known as the Departed issues notices targeting people and then has other spirits kill them, correct? Yeah, and it's been pretty successful. We have a number of victims already. Um... That spirit seems to have some human tendencies, eh? They behave a bit like a serial killer. The Departed is different from any other spirit I've encountered so far. They're cunning and they possess the ability to pass themselves off as a human and hide within the school. And I've also heard they're obsessed with you, no? You sure have a strong connection with spirits, Cost. Guess so. I wonder if that's just another aspect of my lineage, like the way I seem to be able to see paranormal phenomena that others can't. Well then, shall we proceed with the investigation? Wait a minute, Hiru. I'm going to investigate alone. I don't want to get you involved in this. Say what? You're just going to disregard my feelings? I don't get a say in the matter? Hiru. Don't you understand what I told you before? You aren't the only one who feels frustrated about what happened to Damon. So you better ditch that weird, I'm the only one who can carry this burden, I'll sacrifice myself mindset. It really gets on my nerves. But... Just take matters into my own hands if you keep insisting I stay out of this. Just give it up. A triumphant smile brightens her features. I don't think I'm going to win a war of wits against her. Moving on to your investigation. I've heard there's no uh, no new notice yet. As of this moment, that is, uh, that is correct. I have a feeling one will arrive soon. Um, let's go check the faculty room. You have six cents? Six? sense or something? I guess you can call it that. I have a feeling the departed wants me, their dear husband, to continue pursuing this case. If my hunch is right, that means they'll be more likely to issue a notice while I'm here at school. Hiru. Alright, what do we have here? Just the bag enhancement still. There are eight in total for this chapter. Okay, well, let's go ahead and spend those on this. What do you mean I don't have enough? Wait, how much? Three? Well, shit. Okay. Kind of sad that I I missed I missed some in the last chapter. Then that's annoying. Where else would I have looked? There wasn't like really any place for me to go. Oh well, it's fine. I Devo. When I get to the room, one of the teachers inform me informs me that Mr. Konoe is away at the moment, which unfortunately means I'm gonna have to ask Sakamoto. Horrible. Goodness gracious, you again. Sakamoto's cold tone is uh, a voice makes it apparent that she finds this meeting just as, for as unfortunate as I. What's your business here? I have work to do. Has a new notice from the departed arrived? Notice. Oh, now that you mention it, I did get a report of something like that earlier. What about it? Why? What are you being so nonchalant for? Why didn't you tell me sooner? 
I believe I've made pos my position quite clear. I find this investigation of yours to be, at best, a pointless waste of time. Sakamoto shoots a withering gla glare in my direction, looking like she just swallowed a bug. She's usually pretty open about her dislike of me, but she's taking it to another level today. I got a report from the dorm manager the other day. She informed me that you took Doryu and Kinakawa out and made them violate their curfew. Why would the bitch say that? <laughs> Sorry. Oh! <laughs> Headmaster might have ordered me to let your absurd behavior slide, but this is unacceptable. So that's why she's being particularly hostile toward me today. I didn't make those girls break curfew, but I can see how it'd skew the way in Sakamoto- or skew it that way in Sakamoto's mind, and I doubt my explanation would change much. Those notices are pranks. It's mere coincidence that the students disappeared when the notices were issued. The departed, ghosts, and the supernatural, it's a bunch of ludicrous nonsense. To think a man like you has sullied the good name of teachers just to investigate this rubbish. Sakamoto's practically got steam coming out of her ears. I wonder what I could do to calm her down. Try to reason with her, ask her to be ask her to at least cooperate or be delicate. These are all garbage. <laughs> Trying to convince ardent non-believers in the supernatural can only make both sides frustrated. It's a waste of energy to try. Let's just get what I need and get out of here. Where's the new notice? I don't have it with me. I told the student who picked it up to throw it away. This bitch! <laughs> you told them to do what now? Which student was it? K uh, Kakuda from the disciplinary committee. Found it when patrolling the school. What does he look like? Big beefy boy? He's a strapping well-built boy. He's in the karate club. I think we met him the first time around. I think when we were looking for uh, the brass, brass band members. Oh my, look at the time. I have to go now. I have a meeting. Sakamoto! Before I can even protest, Sakamoto's already left the room. Other teachers are following suit. Well, she's clearly not a fan of yours, Cost. Oh, you pretty much earned that treatment for hitting on high school students. I didn't hit on high school students! It's not what happened. Stop making things weird. Looks like we're gonna have to put in some effort to find this, uh, Kakuda guy. I mean, we might stumble upon him simply by stopping to talk to each stout student we see on the way. But it'd be nice if we had a bit more information to go on. More information. Doryu or Michiho might know him. Sakamoto's obviously going to be keeping a close eye on my contact with those two, but I can't let that interfere with my work. It's like every single time except for this last time <laughs> that we've met with them. We've always had somebody else with us. Please, someone defend my honor. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Doryu is organizing documents in the student council room. Oh, Mr. Cost, thank you again for your help. Sorry, but I'm in a hurry. You know Kakuda? I've heard he's a big guy from the disciplinary committee. I know him. He's in 2C. How about you try looking for him in his classroom? Got it. Thanks. Thanks. 2C. That's gonna be upstairs. Also, gotta look for teeth. Wanna go home together? The sun's almost set. Why me? So you don't care if I get killed by the departed on my way home? What? That's not what I said. Let's go home together then. Fine. What a pain. Two people who look like siblings leave the classroom. Can't check that. I like that she has, like, the same walk animation as Damon. Not that run! Hold on a second. Ma'am? <laughs> oh no. I look at the board. Yeah, there's a this red thing looks like mold, huh? 
Do you mind if I collect it and analyze it? Oh, I mean, go for it. Go outside and continue the investigation in other places. Ho? Oh? School is getting strange these days. I know, right? It smells musty here. Is it because of the departed? Oh, I've heard there's an outbreak of mold somewhere in the school. Yikes. Just imagining that makes my skin itchy. Anyway, let's go home. Yeah. The couple leave the area. Mm -hmm. No sister students are posted in the bulletin board. Club activities will be halted for the time being. Head home as soon as classes are over. Spirits only appear at night, so we'd be fine during the day. I guess you can never be too careful. There's not really gonna be anything in there. Door won't open. Uh, can I actually... Don't sense anyone's presence. I have no business in the corridor now. Okay. Again, sorry, I'm trying to... We're looking for teeth. <laughs> So it's gonna take us a minute to get through everything. Oh, hey! Michiho is there. I don't think there would be a tooth around at this time of day, right? Hi, guy. I saw a big guy going to the back of the hallway earlier. Probably Kakuda from second year. I wonder what he's up to. Oh, oh, so he's up here. Well, in that case, back down we go. Hey, Michio. Oh, hello there. Had a painted lady in the courtyard earlier. Want to watch some butterflies together? No. Sorry, but I'm in a hurry now. Do you know Kakuda? I've heard he's a big guy from the disciplinary committee. Oh, I saw him going to the third floor just now. What business do you have with that karate guy, though? Is the new notice targeting the karate kid or something? I don't know yet. Thanks for the info. Before we go there. Again, I do th I do think they only show up at night, but I'm still gonna... poke around, because... teeth. Also, I want to know what all these students have to say. <laughs> Are we the only ones left in the school? Nope, I think the student council members are still here. Damn, they sure like to stay late despite all the rumors. I don't really fear the departed since I know you're gonna protect me. What heck are you talking about? I'm totally not saving you. I'm not good with ghosts and stuff. Anyway, I'm gonna go home now. What? Me too. Bye. Plus we get to chase all the students away, so that's, you know, fun and exciting. <laughs> I guess. I guess you could say. You could describe it as such. Um... There's nothing here. Whoop. Chairs sit atop the nicely lined up desks. Fascinating. <laughs> Actual menace? Or just doing my job as a teacher? It's both. The answer, the answer is both. <laughs> Listen. I'm, I'm on the lookout for teeth. I gotta find the teeth. What's in here? Yes. Windows are covered by curtains. Just wonderful. Wonderful commentary, my guy. Delightful observations. What would I do without your insight? <laughs> Chairs sit atop the nicely lined up desks. I don't. But that's not teeth. Find a door leading to the emergency exit. Wait, where is. Oh, oh, there he is. I was like, but where's the guy? He's right here. 
There's a big, well-built guy standing over there. He looks pretty strapping. Are you Kakuda? Who's? Yeah, the name's Shinichi Kakuda. Where's the departed's notice? I hope we can have thrown it away already. No, I still have it. Miss Sakamoto told me to trash it, but... I felt like I should show it to you since you're investigating them. Thank you! Thanks a lot. <laughs> you should thank Doryu and Kinokawa. They've been asking everyone to pitch in and help you out. That's very nice of them. <laughs> Pulls out the departed's notice and hands it to me. If that's it, I'll be heading to my classroom. Feel free to come by 2C if you still need anything. I'll be at school for a while. Thanks, Kakuda. I was worried that you were going to be like... A mean meathead? But you're just a sweet guy. <laughs> Here I was, disparaging you the other day, being like, Oh, he's just a cop in the making. I mean, he still is. But... He was nice. For now. Quickly scan the new notice. It has all the hallmarks of the previous notices. An accordion folded piece of paper with eerie handprints on it. So this is what our notice looks like, eh? <sighs> it's really giving off the horror vibes. Hurry up and check it out. Come on. Dear Hooligan, Kokuri will kill you tonight. I'm watching, hiding in the school. Your beloved, the departed Hooligan. Hmm. The next victim is Hooligan, and the spirit is Kokuri? So by Hooligan, they mean those boorish thug types, right? Yeah, so f So I think we should try and gather information that would lead us to the identity of these two things. Yes, Hiru! Asking the remaining students would probably be more fruitful than asking the teachers. Faculty doesn't seem so cooperative. Yeah, and the... Maybe that student council girl will tell you. I mean, she actually appears to be trying to help you. Also, I'd like to hear more from that Kakuda guy. Oh my god, Hiru! <laughs> What's with you? Yeah. Come on, give me more to work with than that. Well, you kept interrupting me! This is your operation here. Don't make me handle everything alone. Oh, okay. As much as I want to point out that she's cut me off every time I've tried to speak, I hold my tongue. Besides, Hero's plan of attack is basically what I would have suggested. Better start asking around about Hooligan and Kakuri. <laughs> Gotta go talk to Kakuda! Seems like a nice guy, Kakuda. Gonna go talk to Kakuda. It's about time to leave school anyway. I've got to prove to, uh, that the departed won't appear even if I stay here alone. Hanako this, Kakuri that. People in this school are wacky. Who even believes ghosts and demons exist? Looking closely, the male student's legs are obviously trembling. Aww. Aww. Alright. Did you find Kakuda? Yes, thank you. I'm happy that I can help. So, what do you want to talk about? Actually, we found a new notice. Oh, so another one's finally here? Show me. I show Michio the departed's notice. Mm, so the next spirit is Kakuri. Well, Kakuri usually refers to that old fortune-telling technique, but I'm not- or I'm sure you already know that, right? I thought these- I thought this said of course and I do, and I was like, well, that's not helpful. I don't know about this, I don't think, so let's just say I don't know. Let me explain it to you then. Kokuri is a fortune-telling technique that uses a coin and a piece of paper. You summon a spirit named Kokuri and ask them some questions. It can be dangerous since you're dealing with a spirit after all. There are some people who get a big scare out of it. But the Kokuri mentioned in the notice is a ghost, not the fortune-telling technique. So Kokuri is both the name of the technique, oh excuse me, and the summoned spirit. And the rumor is referring to the spirit. Can you tell me more about Amichio? Sure, why not? That reminds me, Yumi and I were called by Miss Sakamoto this afternoon. Do you know what she said? Don't get too close to Mr. Cost. He doesn't belong here. Oh, okay. Sorry, I shouldn't have talked to you. She's probably gonna give you a lecture. Don't worry about it. You're my lifesaver, and you're hunting down the departed like I am. Yeah, Misaka Moto needs to kind of, like, fuck off. 
<laughs> Do that with other weird teachers. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just hunting for ghosts. So about the Kukuri and the notice. I have a feeling it might be referring to Mr. Kukuri. Ooh. Who's Mr. Kukuri? There's a rumor like that at Konohara Academy. Mr. Kukuri. Kukuri Ojisan. Have you ever gone to the corridor on the second floor? Of course not. That place is restricted. Do you know why? It's because of the Kokuri Shrine. That place is cursed. I'm not lying. It's the truth. I've even heard stories about it. Oh, jeez. <laughs> One rainy day, some delinquents were hanging out on the second floor's corridor. They were kind of notorious. They were getting in fights on a daily basis. There were even rumors that they were doing- or that they were into drugs. The drugs. I guess they must have been bored. So they were messing around with the shrine as a dare, all laughing with their stupid faces. They were kicking the shrine and scribbling on it, all sorts of things. One of them even put a, out a cigarette on it. Listen, I don't- I'm not a particularly, uh, superstitious human being. But that's just- that's just disrespectful. <laughs> that's just- that's just rude. I mean, I guess they are hooligans, delinquents, menaces to society. But like, why would you do that? It just sounds dumb. <laughs> uh, one of them even put out a cigarette on it. And then they got what they deserved. The wind and rain got stronger. The delinquents were about to head back inside. At that moment, they heard a voice mixed with wind. But also, why would they have a shrine like this at this school? Like, I don't... Again, my my general... I have, I have weird bits of knowledge about Japan. <laughs> and I know that they do, like, sometimes there are shrines in weird places. But that's because they were, like, put there and then they built around it. Uh, like, I remember seeing or, like, hearing about a, a shrine that's, like, in the middle of a... Of, like... <laughs> not a... Not a highway. But just, like, a really busy thoroughfare. It's, like, dead center of this, like... Yeah, of this, like, thoroughfare for, like, cars and shit. And it's just because, like, that's where it was erected originally and then they kind of just, like, built around it. And it would have... I think there's like I think there's like superstitions about moving shrines. Um but this just seems like a very odd place. The second floor like balcony to put a shrine? I don't know. Uh they heard a voice mixed with the wind. <laughs> Kill hool again. That voice though. They turned toward the old shrine, the source of the voice, figuring someone must have been playing a prank on them. Except they were the only ones in the corridor. Obviously, they thought they were just imagining things. Those delinquents looked at each other and ran away from the corridor as fast as they could. But that night... One of the delinquents, the one who snuffed out a cigarette on the shrine, felt a pain in his ear felt a strange sensation when he touched his ear. It was dry and rough. It was weird. Like there was something in his ear. Is it the- is it the ear snail? Did the ear snail come out and say hello? We've all got snails in our ears. That's just- that's just a thing. Sorry. <laughs> Terrified, he went to go check himself in the mirror. Oh! He got mushroomed! Mushrooms were growing from his ear. Folded cat mushrooms that looked like maitake. The mushrooms continued to spread. From his ear to his neck, his cheeks, then his chin. And this is how The Last of Us started. 
It's not actually my take. It's Cordyceps notes. That's yeah. The delinquent shrieked, and then and then he called an ambulance. The real horror here is the the cost of the ambulances. Oh, sorry, I'm confusing that with American healthcare. He got himself checked into uh, checked at the hospital. He found no trace of mushrooms. But his ear had a really bad infection. His skin was rotting away, so they had to cut his ear off. Jesus. <laughs> when a teacher heard the story, he said, It's the curse of Kokuri Shrine. Yucky ear is a symptom of Link's disease. <laughs> Should get that looked at. Go get that looked at. The voice must have been Mr. Kokuri's, and that was his work. The rumors say Mr. Kokuri is the apparition of a priest who haunts the shrine. Again, why is this shrine here? <laughs> Gotta get some clay from a prison. <laughs> I need to rewatch that. <laughs> I've been thinking about, I know it's only like tangentially referenced. Um, I have been thinking about this house has people in it though this last week and just being like I should watch that again I should just watch all of that like all of the like Alan Resnick and uh, Wham City stuff again <laughs> it's a good time for it yeah, it's a weird little part of this house. The house has people in it, but they like they've like released like I say full episodes, but there there are like there's supplemental material for what is it like the fuck what is it called the like artist something or other whatever that bit <laughs> they have like they have like. There's like supplemental material for is it? Sculptor's Playground, thank you. <laughs> Listen, I can see it. I can see it. I know what it looks like. There's an episode and a website. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah! It's good stuff. I love. <laughs> there were there were a lot of hidden websites with this house has people in it. There was a lot of there was a lot of like ARG ass. Well, I can't even call it ARG because it didn't like actually affect anything, but there was a lot of supplemental material for it, which is great. I love it. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe I watch that again sometime soon. Uh and that was the rumor about Mr. Kokuri. They had Link's disease. He got the yucky ear. So please stay away from the shrine in the second floor's corridor. If you're cursed by the mushrooms, your lovely face will be ruined. Is Mr. Kukuri the name of the shrine? Correct? It's called Mr. Kukuri because the shrine has a mysterious voice. No one knows what Mr. Kukuri looks like as they've only heard his voice. Creepy, isn't it? <laughs> uh, hooligan? Hooligan? Hmm, I can't think of anyone. Maybe Izumi, I guess? But he's dead already. All right. Well, that's enough of that. By the way, Mr. Cost, I've never seen the person beside you. Is she a doctor like Mr. Damon? I'm a researcher, not a doctor, though I do also deal with the health of living beings as part of my job. Oh, I see. An idol and a female scientist, huh? You sure have some amazing and gorgeous assistants. Michio, please. By the way, which one do you prefer? They're both dependable in their own ways. I has the stamina, Hiru has the intelligence. It's not what I mean. Oh well, it was stupid of me to expect something. You two sure are close. This girl might be the departed, you know. Shush, Hiru. Oh, I don't mind, as long as Mr. Koss trusts me. I don't. Here's a secret. I don't. Sorry, it's a joke. I'm kind of on edge since we don't have any idea who the departed might be mind. In this kind of situation, it's natural to have some suspicion. I miss my normal school life. Hey, Cost. Shouldn't we be able to pretty much guess who Hooligan may be? Based on what Michiho told me about the Mr. Kukuri rumors... 
Shinichi Kakuda, a bad teacher, a delinquent student. I mean, it's not Kakuda. The delinquent student? I agree with you there, but I have no clue who it might be. The rumor said a delinquent student was cursed by the shrine in the second floor corridor. Why don't we go take a look there? Wait, are you serious? Aren't you being too cavalier here? We're gonna be stepping into some deep shit if we approach that shrine. I'm not doing it for entertainment, it's for the investigation. You can stay here if you don't want to go. I, I never said I didn't want to go. I just wondered if there was a better way to do that. Th that's it. I'm not scared at all. Okay. Okay, if you say so. Um, actually, can we go back down to the... Let's go back to the infirmary. I want to go to the, uh, student council room and see if Doryu has anything to say. About, or, like, if she can fill in any of the gaps. I know, like, we're not necessarily supposed to talk to the girls too much. Did you find Kakuda? Yeah, along with the new notice. So there's another new notice. Mind showing me? But I might as well. She might have more information that Machio might not have. I showed Doryu the departed's notice. I don't imagine she'll have more information about Kokuri, but she might have information about the delinquent. So they're threatening to kill someone again. And it's my job to prevent that from happening. If you've got any information that could help, please let me know. Sure. Actually, during lunch break... I went to the clock tower. Why? <laughs> you shouldn't be taking risks like that. The spirits don't show up during the day, so it's fine. I didn't go inside, though. The door wouldn't open. That's weird. Did someone lock it? That's unlikely. The key to the clock tower is missing. Nobody's able to enter the clock tower right now. But it was open that night. Was that the Departed's doing? Guess we should investigate the clock tower. Understood. I'll try searching for the key. Uh, can you tell me anything about Kukuri? <sighs> Sorry, I don't really know much about spirits. You should ask some Chio instead. She's over on the second floor of the new building. Yeah, I didn't think she would have anything to say about that. Hooligan, huh? Compared to model and pianist, this one's got a lot more room for interpretation. Finding the target might not be so easy. Okay, so just incredibly unhelpful all the way around. Great. Finish my conversation with Doryu and leave the student council room. Uh, Sakamoto's not gonna talk to me, is she? She's not even here. Never mind. She, like, left. <laughs> um, library? Is Abe around? No. Not that I want to hear from him. Why am I looking for him? <laughs> I don't want to hear from him. Uh, to B was Kakuda's homeroom, right? I want to go talk to him before we go look at the shrine. Um, what was it to C? Kakuda? There he is. He is very large. Hello, Mr. Cost. Do you still need anything from me? I've actually read that notice. A spirit named Kakuri is going to kill Hooligan tonight, right? Well, Mr. Konoe told me not to discuss the incident with the students out of consideration for their mental well-being. Can't just give him a dismissive reply, though. No need to hide it. The rumors have spread. Izumi the pianist and Horikoshi the model have been killed, just as the notice said, anyway. And the one who killed them was a spirit named The Departed, right? They're hiding in the school right now. Rumors of the incidents have already spread to this extent. I'm not doing anyone any favors by keeping my mouth shut. I doubt that these rumors have been purposely spread by any one target. These students believe in The Departed, and they're connecting the dots and spreading the rumors on their own. The weaker students must be tired of living in fear. I guess they're scared of the idea that the person next to them might be The Departed. Are you not scared, Kakuda? Me? Scared? <laughs> no way. 
If a spirit dare shows itself to me, I'll just go to work with those with these fists. <laughs> I'd believe it. <laughs> I don't really understand spirits. How about asking Kinakawa from student council? What? Okay. Uh, that's fine. Do you have any idea who Hooligan might be? That's the person mentioned in the notice, right? Do you have any idea who it may be? If we're talking about hooligans at the school, I can only think of the delinquents. Those punks keep ignoring the school's rules and it's really pissing me off. Kakuta's on the disciplinary committee, so it's not surprising that the behavior of some punks has got him all riled up. But that's not helping. Can you tell me who the delinquents are? Can you give me names? Be a better cop. If you're gonna be a cop, then be a fucking cop. Commit to it. Don't be a cop. Alright, second floor's corridor just ahead. There's a crumpled paper in the gap between the doors. Yeah, you know, it's it's off limits. Trying where people supposedly heard Mr. Kukuri's voice should be right here. Excuse me. Looks like the door's unlocked. Let's check the place out. Alright. Oh! Right, we did meet a delinquent girl earlier, didn't we? Before we talked to her. Just want to see what's over here. Door's locked tightly shut. Can't enter the old building from here. What was that? Uh. Do you know what the big straw rope in front of the door is? I have a feeling it's telling us not to enter, like, in a spiritual sense. Getting goosebumps. Oh! <laughs> she does not look like she's doing great! A tanned, ostentatiously styled girl is absent mindedly lingering near the shrine. Give her a friendly greeting. Hello there. Her reply is unintelligible. More of a groan. Just ignore her cost. Something's wrong with her. Uh, uh. Okay. Hmm. Okay, okay. Uh. <laughs> An old shrine is standing here. This has got to be the shrine from the rumor about Mr. Kukuri. Let's take a closer look. Inspect. First thing that stands out is that it's a rather small shrine completely weathered after being exposed to the elements for a long period of time. Another noticeable feature is the number of talismans on it. The image on the talismans looks kind of like a centipede. It's a small gap in the shrine door. It's too dark to tell what's inside, though. We need to open the door first if we want to see what's inside. I guess we're opening. I restored the door to check what's inside. Old man. Excuse me? Female student next to me groans and slowly forces out some words. Don't do anything bad to the shrine. Well, I'm not going to do anything bad to it. Old man. You're... Oh, fuck! You're <laughs> A hooligan! Growling, the female student launches an attack. Well! That's unfortunate. With the terrifying look in her eyes, the female student raises something resembling a baton. I see something that looks like mushrooms around her neck. Maybe she's possessed? Uh, what do we have? Take the attack or attack. I mean, we take the attack. I assume we're like blocking it with the bag, right? Yes. We try to use my bag as a shield to block our attacks. Cherries away from me. 
I don't have that many left, but... Clutch, clutch the bag tightly and block her attack. Nice! Yeah, it either means block with bag or get punched. Fair. But we blocked. It's fine. Female student recoils. Grab her, Hiru. A second, sorry. Okay. Calm down. He recaptures the student's arms from behind. Helping out, I immediately restrain her. She is unhappy. Student lets out a yell and then goes quiet. Looks like this is the right choice. Why did the sound cut off <laughs> like that? <laughs> we survived. Survived. Student faints and the mushrooms on her neck instantly vanish. Oh. So it really was a spiritual phenomenon. Assuming the rest of the rumor is accurate, that would mean the mushrooms were the shrine's curse. Keep an eye on her, Hiru. I'll investigate the inside of the shrine. Sh sure thing. I walk toward the shrine and put my hand on the door. There's a talisman on it. Inside the shrine, I find some bizarre stuff. Ew. Petri dish used for experiments. Inside the dish is a dead centipede. Some red substance appears to be growing from the centipede. What in the world is it? Is it the same gunk on the notices? Oh, I see you found something interesting. Those red filaments are probably mushrooms. It's difficult to tell without the caps. Without me realizing it, Huru's already appearing over my shoulder. Are you look are you watching the student like I asked you to? Looks like, like those are mushroom hyphae growing on the dead centipede. I think they're Ophiocordyceps. Oh Ophiocordyceps sinensis? Sin 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 sinensis. Very interesting. It is cordyceps. What the what the fuck? <laughs> What's it doing here? Old shrines aren't usually a place where you'd store lab equipment. What are you gonna do with the petri dish? Bet you're gonna keep it. I I guess so, yeah. Right, that's what I'm saying. Are we doing the last of us? I mean, cordyceps in general. Um, even pre they were a thing that I knew about before. Uh The Last of Us. Just in general though, they are kind of terrifying. Um <laughs> Fortunately, thus far, they have not evolved to be able to take over human brains, but it's still just, like, scary that it just overwrites everything within, like, bugs and shit and, like, I don't want that to happen. <laughs> Pressed by Huru, whose eyes are sparkling with curiosity, I collect the Petri dish. It made me, like, very excited when The Last of Us did come out, because I was like, I know what those are! This is terrifying! <laughs> we got the creepy Petri dish. What are we gonna do with her? It doesn't seem like she's going to regain consciousness anytime soon. Can't just leave her here. Let's take her back to the infirmary. I do like, I don't know if it's intentional or not. Well, I mean, the some of the corpse party references have to be intentional. Um, but I do like some of these like other references to other games. I, again, I don't know if that if this one in, in particular is intentional. It, it, it feels like it should be. But I like it. <laughs> we got mushroom people. I hoist the female student onto my back and leave the corridor. From there, I walk straight to the infirmary. <laughs> the smell of cigarette smoke assaults my nose the moment I enter. Much Wish I was here. You're finally back. I've been waiting. Inside, I see a sharp eyed man tossing a cigarette into a portable ashtray. Probably shouldn't be smoking in here. Anywhere in here. In in this specific room or this building. Um but I love you, Mashita. <laughs> Mashita. 
Ugh, smell of cigarettes. Hey, no smoking inside the school. There are kids here. You're a terrible influence, you know? Where's your common sense, Mashita? <laughs> they do they do got mushrooms on the mind. Horrible. <laughs> Oh, is that how it is? Back in my day, the teachers would openly smoke in the faculty room. Well, times have changed. You need, you need to be more considerate. What a pain. Anyway, who's that kid on your back? Let me lay her down first, then we can talk. I put the unconscious girl down on the bed. She's totally out of it. Guess I'll just have to leave her here for the moment. Alright, can you give me the details now? Don't exactly expect to reunite with your friend and find them carrying an unconscious girl on their back. Fine, I've got some questions asked too. <gasps> Mashita, my sweet, angry boy. Satoru Mashita, a mark bearer and former detective who's now working as a private investigator. He's not really all that knowledgeable about spirits and paranormal phenomena, but after the events of our shared past, he often joins me when I'm on spirit-related cases. Never would expect it to come to a place like this, even on an investigation. You mean a school that's still in session? Yeah. A place full of brats sounds like nothing but trouble to me. Hell, I got scolded just for having a freaking smoke. Sneaking into an abandoned school is way easier. Let me just make one thing clear, Mashita. I'm begging you, please try not to attract any unwanted attention. No guarantees on that one, pal. I'm just gonna do things my own way, and if anyone got if anyone's got a problem with that, they'll just have to deal with it. He's such a dick. <laughs> Corner of his mouth twitches into a mischievous grin. She does a man who will do anything for his investigation. Mr. Konoe and Sakamoto will not appreciate his presence or methods. But his eccentric methods have a way of dragging the truth out of situations where a more civilized approach would fail. Have you finished your job, Mashita? Yeah, can't tell you much about it, though, since I'm under NDA. And just when I thought I'd be able to relax for a bit, Hag Yo uh, Yas Yasuoka asked me to help you out. He's a real slave driver. This man is different from the other Mark Bearers. Because of his job, he's a seasoned vet veteran when it comes to cases involving dangerous and bizarre spirits. If he's offering to help, I'll jump on it. His help makes it that much more likely that Hiru and the Departed's targets will survive. Sorry for causing you trouble. Save your thanks for the old bag. I'm just a, uh, I'm just here to work. What do you think about the case, buddy? Yasuoka gave me a summary of the case. Spirit masquerading as a student, huh? Wonder how their grades are. He's cracking jokes, but his eyes show no trace of a smile. Under the surface, he must be just as tense as we are. You wanna know what I think? Basically being jerked around by the Departed's notices. All those spirits from the notices, and you're still no closer to figuring out who the Departed is. Maybe you're right. But if I just ignore the notices, someone's gonna die. Shh, then what's your plan? Just gonna keep dancing to their tune until they get bored and quit? That's... Don't get sidetracked and forget your original goal cost. The only way you can solve this case is to find the Departed, hi departed hiding in this school. Now what you should do is start looking at everyone around you as a potential suspect. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I already kind of have. I'm doing it, Mom! By the way, Cost. Mashita jerks his head over in the direction of the girl on the bed. Tell me about her already. How long are you gonna make me wait? Yeah, about that. I share everything I've learned about Mr. Kokuri and, the, and Hooligan, and the events at the shrine. So this kid attacked you. School violence is kind of a lost art these days. What a special moment in your teaching career, hey, Mr. Cost? Cut it out with that. Hearing you say that makes my skin crawl. No matter how much you choose to look at it, this kid isn't normal. She called us hooligans and had mushrooms growing along her neck. Right, considering that, maybe she was possessed by Kokuri. I recall the time Michi uh, Michio was possessed by Slipmouth Kashima. She was fully under the control of the spirit, led by their desires. The student might have been the same as her. Who is this kid anyway? She doesn't have her student handbook, and no matter how much we shake her, she's not showing any signs of waking up. Waiting for her to wake up is such a waste of time. Let's just ask someone else about her. 
Should be able to find someone who knows who she is pretty quickly. She's obviously trying to stand out. Let's ask around about the Petri dish, too, while we're at it. Who knows? Maybe we can learn who placed it inside the shrine. So we're just going to show that thing to the students? They're going to start talking about me. Too late to worry about your reputation. You already tricked two female students into breaking their curfew. I don't care if you get all chummy with those brats for the investigation, but... Better not do something weird that ends up blowing back onto me, Cost. Give me a break, you two. I'm not a creep! Really hope this puts a stop to this topic. I'll have whoever I don't bring with me keeping an eye on the unconscious girl while, while I resume the investigation. See if anyone at the school can tell me about this girl or the Petri dish. Great. We are taking Mashita with us. That's just grizzled, unorthodox ex-detective. I love Mashita. Um... I have to use the bathroom again because I have now been drinking a soda. So we will be right back. Give me like two minutes. <laughs> um, oh, but now we got a body, so we gotta take care of that. Get out of my way, donkey. Donkey! Donkey! Okay, well, I'll keep the 23. Uh, it would have a, a, like a nice roll to see me die immediately from that, by the way. Are you kidding? Yes, um, if you walk forward at the start of this level, you quite often just die in one hit to the sniper. <laughs> Welcome to Cyrus. What the fuck? I can, uh, go between... How? No! I'm about ready to just call this one a bust, because I am bored. Yeah, it definitely seems like they upped the difficulty in finding, like, evidence, but it's also- Oh shit! Oh fuck! Oh, she heard me talking shit! <laughs> I'm sorry, Susan, I'm sorry! Punching asshole. He lets you power always tank. <laughs> I got water. I drink water. I got water. It's fine. Um. Yeah. <laughs> I'm ready. We're probably gonna call it soon ish. Um. Because we've streamed for almost six hours today. Whoopsies! <laughs> Uh, I definitely feel like I could, like, go longer. But. I should get up and, like, do things today. 
before I, you know, continue to stay up at my desk for for movie time this evening. <laughs> it's been a long stream. It has. I just like really like this game. I've been really just like digging it and it's been like I said, like it's been a weird week. Um it's been a rough couple of weeks. <laughs> And so it's been nice to just, like, kind of just, like, turn my brain off. Or at least, like, not think about anything else that's been going on and just, like, focus my entire attention on this. Um, it's been fun doing that for the last couple of days, but today especially since, like, I, you know, didn't have to work and I've just had the day off. It's like, hell yeah, I can just kind of, like, just, like, super enjoy it, you know? <laughs> I don't do, like, ridiculously long streams very often, but when I do, we go hard. <laughs> um, do you know that insects and bugs are actually different? So what do you want to ask me? Uh, I want to ask you about this, this Petri dish. Dish. And take out the creepy Petri dish and show it to Michiho. Oh, a Chinese redhead. Colopendra... Subspinipis mutilans. Did you know? Even though the name centipede means 100 feet, there aren't uh, many centipedes that actually have 100 feet. I think, like, only a few soil centipedes have that many feet. Seizing the opportunity to talk about insects, Michio immediately begins flexing her knowledge about centipedes. She doesn't even have a reaction to the terrible sight inside the dish. <laughs> Unbothered. She subspin on my pits till I... <laughs> Till I, what was it? Edge edge nart. She sub spin on my pits till I edge nart. <laughs> hey um, I appreciate the centipede lesson, but what about the mushrooms? Hmm. So these red thingies are mushrooms? No clue. It's beyond my scope of knowledge. <laughs> she subs been on my bits till I nart my edge. It's true. <laughs> Find you a partner who subs been on your pits till you nart your edge. Oh, I see. Thanks. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Judging by that reaction, Michio won't be able to tell us anything useful about the Petri dish. Alright, that's fair. Uh, can you tell me about the delinquent girl? I described the girl who attacked me and asked if she knows her. I think I've seen her before, but I don't know her name. I'm not a delinquent, after all. You know someone who might know her? Hmm. He may, I guess? It's part of the student council president's job to know the names and faces of all the students. What a shitty job! <laughs> nope, don't discuss topics. Get out of here. I want to go to 2C to see if Kakata... Kakata has any... anything to say... Big boy! Oh, Mr. Cross, do you still need anything from me? Do you know the delinquent girl? I described the girl who attacked me and asked if he knows her. Yeah, I know her. She always hangs out in the connecting corridor. She, she keeps going there even though I've warned her so many times. This is why I hate delinquents. Stupid. Do you know anything else? Nothing in particular. Don't really care to know about delinquents. If she wasn't a girl, I would have punched her in the face. Bro. <laughs> Calm down. Kakuda, chill. Hey now, aren't you in the karate club? Male or female, students shouldn't fight with each other. I'm just joking. Martial arts should be used, uh, should be used to train your mind and body, not hurt others. And yet, here you are, constantly making jokes about hurting others. He is a cop. Kakuda, I liked you. I hated you, and then I liked you, and now I'm back to just being like a cab, bro. Take the creepy petri dish from my bag and show it to Kakuda. Whoa. The moment he sees the dish, his eyes bulge. What's wrong, Kakuda? No, it's just... My apologies, it's so disgusting, I don't even know what to say. Centipedes alone are already gross, but the mushrooms just make it so much worse. Where did you find it? The science room? No, it was inside the shrine in the second floor's connecting corridor. What was this thing doing in there? I have no idea either. 
doubt it's a prank. Oh. I have to get back to patrolling. Sorry, but I've got to end our chat here. Sus! Sus! Kakuda bids us farewell and quickly leaves the classroom. Do you think Kakuda is the hooligan? Hey, Cost. Something off with that brat statement. You must have noticed it too, right? What's off about Kakuda's statement? Uh, I mean, he knew what the he knew that they were mushrooms. It's the mushrooms, of course. When I first saw the petri dish, I didn't even realize they were mushrooms. But Kakuda noticed that right away. It's a bit strange. Correct. So your brain is working just fine. He may know where the mushrooms came from. Better speak to Kakuda again. Should still be at school. Let's go find him. I need to see Mashita's run. I don't know that I was paying attention. Oh, it's just the same as ours. <laughs> All right. Uh, do you know where Kakuda went? So there was something about m female mantises eating male mantises. We know about this. Uh, no, I can't ask her about Kakuda. Okay. Um, I mean third floor. Kakuda! Do you have anything to say? Kakuda? He's not here. Okay. Well, that's good to know. <laughs> we'll probably stop once we get to, like, the night investigation. Because I imagine that's, like, fast approaching. Have we... Spoken to... No, we need to talk to, to Doryu about... Um, about the hooligan. The delinquent, actually. Excuse me. They are two different people, I think. We have to ask if she knows the girl, is what I'm trying to say. How much have you learned so far? Delinquent girl. I described the girl who attacked me and asked if she knows her. I think I have an idea of who she is. Might be one of the first years. Saki Maruhashi. What's she like? I don't know her personally, but some of the first year council members were telling me some things. They said that she's never had any friends and is always on her own. She's got a bad rep because of it. There's nobody to defend her. There are all kinds of rumors surrounding her, saying she likes to go out at night, drink, and smoke, and she's associated with a biker gang. These may just be rumors, but if they're true, that makes Saki Maruhashi a kid worthy of the name Hooligan. I mean, yeah. It just seems weird that she'd be, like, possessed. Rather than just, you know, murdered. <laughs> Take out the creepy petri dish and show it to Doryu. She's gonna hate this, and, I, and I'm sorry. What is that? Dead centipede? And what are those red things? They're actually mushrooms. Do you know anything about this petri dish? N not at all. I don't know anything at all about that. Can you... Please keep it away from me. Sorry about that. Yeah, I didn't think she would know anything or like that. <laughs> Doryu breathes a huge sigh of relief when I put the Petri dish back into my bag. Her reaction's totally normal. Machine and I have just become so desensitized to these th sorts of creepy things that we forget how normal people view them. Me, when people come over to my house. <laughs> me, with my, my tray of, of bones. Finish my conversation with Doryu and leave the student council room. Alright, let's, uh, I mean, he's probably in the corridor, right? Slash, like, it would be, um, yeah, it's fine. My teeth, they're in the other room. I can see them, though. I see them. They're right there. Hi, teeth. Um. <laughs> we, uh... What was I saying? Right, he's probably... Oh, excuse me. In the connecting corridor? And, like, I, I, I wouldn't say that, like, thus far the game has, like, concealed who the targets are. Per particularly, like, hard? Um, like, they've, they've done, like, a little bit of, like, you know, they give us some intrigue about it and stuff, but it's not been, like, you'll never figure out who it is. Um... And so it very much could be Saki, but 
Would it also be that weird if it was our guy? Oh, he's not here. Okay. Um, would it be that weird if it was Kakuda? Just given the, I don't know, like, yeah, he's part of the, like, um, disciplinary committee and shit like that, but, like, I don't know. <laughs> he, like, he keeps threatening to, like, hit people. And his reaction to the mushrooms was strange. Just have to look in every room, I think. He wasn't on the third floor, though, because that one boy said that, like, he wasn't there. Where is he? I am glad that, like, the change between the screens isn't, like, too long. Uh... Oh, didn't mean to go into the special building. Well, I guess since we're here, can we check the the library? Is he there? Nope, there's no one here. Okay. So he's not on the first floor. He's not on the third floor. If if that boy is to be believed. Um and we chased him away from the second floor. So is he in the in the connecting hallway? No. Okay, we'll check all the we'll check all the rooms in uh on the second floor. I can see ghosts not knowing the difference between cops doing cop crimes and regular people doing regular people crimes. I mean, yeah. Yeah. What is the difference between cop crime and people crime? The difference is cops tend to get off. Like they're not caught. <laughs> They're not reprimanded for it. Regular people crimes tend to come out of necessity. Yeah, stars. <laughs> Culpability. Um, most, re most regular people crimes, not all, but most, come out of necessity because they don't have the things that they need. Uh, cop crimes are done because they're sadistic bastards who just want to cause harm. And, th and then, yeah, the culpability aspect. They can just get away with that shit. <laughs> That's the difference. <laughs> anyway, we know my stance on cops here. Fuck them. They do crimes for the state to enforce a state monopoly on doing crimes. Yeah! Yeah! Fuck them. We hate them. <laughs> Sorry. It's, my brain immediately started playing a song uh, that reminded me of... of that. <laughs> I mean, there's plenty of them. Um, but... You know... Specifically thinking of, uh... Oh, shit, who's that band? Hold on, I have to look up this band now. I can, I can see the band members. Uh... Song's called Nazi Cops! <laughs> Sorry, it's gonna bother me if I can't think of the band. Death Tour. Pigs, in, in parentheticals, Nazi cops. Death tour, very good. You just want loud music about how- Oh, it's a science room! Just loud music about just how shit cops are. Would recommend. Large shelf with a glass door. Flasks and vials are stored inside. They're clearly lab equipment used for class. I better not touch them. It is true. Sometimes loud music is the exact vibe. <laughs> no one is surprised. I do be loving me some loud music. 
That is my jam. I'll probably post that song later now that I'm thinking about it. Uh, a large shelf with a glass door. Test tubes and tripods are stored inside. For some reason, there are a number of dead insects stuck on the door. Can't get re uh, replicable results when you have contaminants in your re receptacles. You can't get replicable results when you have contaminants in your receptacles. That's too many R words. <laughs> they're not even that close together, but they're just, that's just a lot. Is it like this in every school? Pilot cases used for carrying equipment. I shake it lightly. It doesn't seem, doesn't seem like any like there's anything inside. My ability to read is also like dropping very quickly. Oh hey, hey Kakuda. Kakuda's inside the storage room. Several documents are scattered on the floor below him. Looks as if the room has been ransacked. Mr. Cost, I didn't do this. The room was already a mess when I came in. Please, you gotta believe me. Just tell me what happened here first, Kakuda. Uh, yes. When I was patrolling the school, I saw someone coming out of the science room. It seemed kind of suspicious, so I decided to check it out. The room looked the same as it always does, but... I unlocked the storage room here to have a look just in case. That's when I found this mess. A likely story! That's what you're saying has happened? Yeah, that's what really happened. Damn, I could have caught the culprit if I'd just come in sooner. Uh-huh. Kakuda's eyes dart every which way as if, uh, as he's trying to spin his tail. Four books have been displaced. Disgrace! <laughs> Shame! My gut tells me that he's hiding something. Let's press him for details. Hey, the suspicious person. Can you describe them? You saw someone coming out of the room, right? What did they look like? A delinquent boy with brown hair. He was running at full speed so I couldn't get a good look at his face. Why don't you chase him? I didn't know what I should do. At that time, I had no idea he'd been poking around in the storage room. But if he... But if... I, I, see, I just now saw that there's, like, the storage room key option. But it's like... If it was locked, and you had to unlock it, and he was just some random delinquent, how'd he get a key? How'd he lock it? <laughs> Ask about the science room. Is anything missing from the science room? Mm, I don't think so. But I'm not totally sure, since I don't often come here. My apologies. Did you check if there were any shadows? Someone might be hiding in there. I checked over the room, but I didn't notice anything out of the ordinary. That's why I decided to enter the storage room. Storage room is locked, right? Yeah, so I unlocked it. Since I'm on patrol, I have the keys with me. Is it easy to borrow the keys? <laughs> not at all. Who knows what those delinquents would do if they had these keys? Only trustworthy students like me, someone on the disciplinary committee, would be able to borrow the keys. You've, you've, you've hey. You've just incriminated yourself, buddy. <laughs> That's all I need to hear from Kakuda. Of the three pieces of information he gave me, two of them are inconsistent. He may give himself away if we point it out. Let's put his feet on to the fire, shall we? Um... I mean, it's the delinquent and the and the key, right? You said you saw a delinquent student, right? Yeah, that's right. You said it was locked when he came in, which means the perpetrator locked it behind himself. But you also said the key's under tight control, <coughs> and that it'd never be lent to out to a too untrusty un. But you also said the key's under tight control, and that it'd never be lent out to untrustworthy, delinquent students. Just wondering if you could explain that for me. Um, he must have stolen the spare key. Those delinquents, they have no shame. What else is this guy capable of? Well, I suppose we could always go check if the spare key's been stolen or not. Except I've got an alternate theory. Kakuda, you broke into the room using the key you're holding. Ugh. I have no idea why you did that, but I started acting weird after I showed this to you. You want to see the bad centipede again? There it is. Do you know anything about these mushrooms? I, I don't really know the details. 
I was just told to do this. By who? That's... The sound of a phone vibrating echoes in the room. Fukuda takes out his phone. He then stares at the screen, his eyes wide with intense concentration. Oh. I was summoned. I have to go. Or else... I'll be killed. Killed? Who told you they're gonna kill you? Kuda runs out of the storage room, screaming at the top of his lungs. W wait I dashed over Kakuda with Mashita following hot on my heels. When I saw him running away like that, my mind immediately flashed back to Naomi Horikoshi, who ran away from us right before she met a tragic fate. I'm deter determined to prevent history from repeating itself. But... My stamina fails me midway through the chase and Kakuta disappears into the distance. Shh, the heck is with that brat's stamina? I never even gained ground on him. He must be some kind of monster. Well, he's very tall, and also he's like... He does karate, right? He's really He's in really good shape. He's a big boy. I agree with Mashita. His physical prowess certainly seems like it's beyond that of a typical high school student. Almost as if he's being possessed by a spirit. Oh, okay. Fine then. Let's go back to the science room. Curious what Kakuda was trying to do. Yeah. Science room. I gotta go to the science room. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. His legs do know how to be long. It this this, this never happens. This never happens. But it's happened. His legs know how to be long! <laughs> we return to the science room storage room. <laughs> My whole body feels as heavy as lead, both physically from fatigue and mentally from the looming sense of powerlessness. I'm starting to feel like I'm, uh, like I'm prey stuck in a spider's web, struggling pointlessly while the departed exerts total control over me. Does this struggle have any purpose? Can I even save a single person? Don't give me that, that hangdog look. Don't give me that up, dog look. <laughs> Just focus on moving the investigation forward and don't think about anything else. If you can't handle that, then hit the road. Hero and I can handle the rest. No, I'm fine. Cheetah's right. You need to act, not mope. Let's inspect the storage room. <laughs> not much. What's up with you, dog? <laughs> I wish, uh, I wish Hulu wasn't so expensive to like get ad free watching because I just want to watch what we do in the shadows, but the ads are so long. I miss Colin Robinson. <laughs> Let's inspect the storage room. We need to figure out why Kakuda broke into this place. Fuck. <laughs> There's a large spiral shell fossil inside the shelf. Is this an ammonite? Its distinctive shape looks pretty artistic for something natural. That's what that's what my computer is called. No, excuse me. What did I name? That might be my phone. <laughs> Surprise! I've named all of my devices after uh, cephalopods. And, and mollusks? Yes. Yeah, my phone is the Ammonite. My computer is the Naughty Nautilus. Akuda was rummaging through the shelf until a bit ago. Door's wide open and the documents are all scattered. What is this bear? What's this bear doing? This is a fine stuffed bear. It's not uncommon for schools to have stuffed animals, but a stuffed bear? That's unusual. I'm drawn to it. See something glowing in its mouth. Tooth? Put my hand into the mouth, though I can't fit it all the way inside. 
If you don't name your PC, is it even alive? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, every electronic that I, like, can, like, team up with something or, like, am allowed to name, I, I, I name it. I have to. It's important. <laughs> it's necessary. What'd you name your PC? <laughs> what in the world are you doing? Oh, I'm... There's something inside, but I can't reach it in... Or, can't reach it... Mm. I can't reach it since my hand doesn't fit. Oh, then I won't be able to do it either. I need to find someone with slimmer hands or just rip this bear open. Don't do that. If you do something like that here, we'll definitely call unwanted attention to us. Well... Being deja vu for some reason. Okay, is there anything else? We need to check these. We're gonna go back. Because I'm gonna get Hiru. Here's this Princess Bubblegum in its old case. Uh, but its new case has little feet and it looks like a creature, so it's Bubblegum Beasts now? Or bu Bubblegum Beast, excuse me. That's that's precious. I love that. <laughs> I'm here for this. <laughs> My last computer um was was huge. It was unnecessarily large. Uh and the case around it was like gigantic um and very durable. <laughs> um because it used to be, like, it was a, a computer that a, a friend of mine made for me. Um, but it was made out of, like, an old, like, servo uh, case. So it was just huge. Unnecessarily large. Um, and it was called the Armored Nautilus. It's like, I could throw it downstairs and it would be fine. <laughs> Never did that, but, like, you understand. Um... It was, it was delightful, except for the fact that the thing was, like, 75 pounds. Like, no joke. I have, <laughs> I have a harness that I had to use anytime I took it anywhere, because I used to do LAN parties all the time, right? Um, and it was a really good computer, but it was so fucking heavy that I did have, like, leather daddy harness for it, because otherwise I couldn't carry it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, I took the thing to land parties because I didn't have, so, like, I didn't, <laughs> I have, I, despite the fact that I don't have the, um, I don't have, like, the, the actual case anymore, I do still have the harness, um, it was really great, like, it's, it's, uh, it has, like, pockets and, like, zippers and things so you can, like, store all your cables and it was delightful, um, but yeah, like when I <laughs> when I originally like was telling my friend about this and he was gonna make it for me, um, I did like specify I was like I do need it to be like portable because you know I go to land parties and like uh, I need I need to be able to like take this places. Um, but I also needed to like be secure because a lot of the the land parties that I would go to um, were very much out of town. I had to drive like an hour plus to like get where um you know where we were all gathering to play games and shit the official land party tactical leather pc harness yes um it was very great because like most of the most of the people in the group were kingsters anyway um <laughs> but it was it was a delight um but no i was like you know like i need to make sure that like it's durable but portable and we got we got one of those! <laughs> he didn't have any other cases available, which which is why we ended up using the, like, the, the server case. Um, which, like, is great, because, like I, like I said, like, I had to, like, travel, like, an hour plus to, to get to these parties. Um, but it did complicate things. I meant to look at the bear first. Hold on. Um... But no, because it was the... <laughs> what? A group of nerds? Unusual. We were all very queer, and uh, I think, like, at least half of us have since come out as trans. So, like, you know, what? it was inevitable. <laughs> all of it. All, every aspect of it. No, it was a good group of, good group of folks. Um, but yeah, so it was... 
I had I had the armored Nautilus, and then when I built this PC, it's very it's also very durable, but it's not quite as um, it's not quite as as bulky, uh, and it's definitely very sleek, and I think it's real sexy. Um, it's just a good piece of tech, and so I was like, you know what, we're gonna stick with the Nautilus theme, but it's gonna be the naughty Nautilus. <laughs> Um, and, and that's, that's how that one got its name. Anywho, I've just gone on, like, this giant, like, tangent, uh, about land parties and my computers. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just figured I should, like, because there is a, a backstory with it, it's like, I need to, I need to clarify why it is the Naughty Nautilus. <laughs> um, but yeah. So there are several documents on the floor. This must be Kakuda's doing. Pick up one of the documents and look at the cover. It was necessary. Okay, I'm glad I'm glad you agree as well. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, I look at the cover. There's a label with a caption written on it. Research on native plants that grow around Konohara Academy. There are two dates written under the title. One from 11 years ago and another from 9 years ago. Did this research span two years? I find a preface on the next page. The fox forest behind the school seems to have a special environment. A variety of plants native to the area can be seen here. As a science teacher at Konohara Academy, I set out to catalog all of them. Very ambitious. <laughs> Following the preface page, there's a summary of the research done on various plants. There are photos of plants and moss, complete with the detailed research information. It's thorough, yet a surprisingly easy read. It's clear that the author is both a fine writer and educator. What in the... page between Fox Azalea and Foxtail Fern has been torn out. I skipped through to the end, but I don't find anything about the red mushrooms. Maybe what you were looking for is on... is on the torn page? Most likely. Kakuda must have done this. I bet it's why he snuck in here. Why would he do that, though? If he got caught, he'd be expelled. So you're saying that mushroom data must, uh, would have to be worth that risk for him? Guess he thought it was. Can't even imagine what information would be that important, though. If we can find that lost page, we may get a step closer to understanding Kakuda's motives. Should we report this to the school cost? No, we shouldn't. We'd back Kakuda into a corner if we did. We can always decide to turn him in later once we've heard the side- once we've heard his side of the story. Mm -hmm. Find stuffed bear. Yeah, can you... Why are you staring at the stuffed bear cost? Oh, there's something inside, but my hands are too big to fit all the way in. Do you want me to give it a try then? Didn't mean it that way, but would you mind trying it for me? To be honest, I don't really want to do it, since it looks like there will be weird bugs in there, but I guess I have no choice, huh? Yuru timidly puts her hand into the bear's mouth with a gloomy expression on her face. Just a little bit more. Nice! I got it! Here you go. Toof! Toof, 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 toof. Uh, it's still seven more teeth left. Mr. Cost, finally. Oh. Ape showed up earlier and left me a message. Seekers of wisdom, I shall await you in the garden of knowledge. What does that even mean? Don't ask me. I've got no clue e either. Well, that's all. See you later. Beep. Having finished your business with us, Michio strolls off. Okay. Um... Oh god. I thought we would be getting the nighttime investigation. <laughs> uh, but that is not the case. So let's. Mm. Garden of knowledge. Let's go talk to Abe real fast and then we'll then we'll call it there. I wanna say he's probably in the courtyard, right? Unless... 
It's the library. But let's start with... Okay, yep. It's the library. <laughs> um... Why can't he just tell me where he is? Why does he have to be a weirdo? Also, let's get Mashita back in here. Also, I have enough for the bag enhancement. So let's do that. And there are seven teeth left. Again, if we don't if we don't get all of the teeth, that's fine. Um it would just be nice. I just, I just, I like finding them. It make it, it's, it's exciting to me. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> I just think they're neat. Okay. Uh, there's no one inside the library. Okay. Oh, or so I thought. After a beat, a boy suddenly emerges from behind the bookshelves. I was gonna say, like, I literally don't know where else I could go. Uh, that even remotely describes what he said. <laughs> Welcome to the Garden of Knowledge, Mr. Koss. Seeing that you're here, that must mean you're in need of assistance from the sage, aka me. Fuck off, Abe. You're the one who called me here. Goodness, so you haven't realized it yet. My left eye said you wanted my wisdom, hence why I told you where I was in advance. Consider this my being generous and proactively pro providing you service, sir. I can't follow his line of thinking at all. One thing for certain, he's being nice to me today. Maybe he's in a good mood or something. This is a good chance to get information out of him. Let's play along. Didn't realize that your clairvoyance let you see so far ahead. You really are incredible. Just as you mentioned, there was something I wanted to ask you. <coughs> Excuse me. That's right, ask away. I'm listening. You seem to be in a good mood today. What's got you feeling so upbeat? <clears throat> what fine perception. I expected no less from the one and only spirit doctor. I will be meeting my mentor for the first time in a while today. So they're the reason you turned out this way? I mean, are they the person who got you interested in paranormal phenomena? <laughs> Correct. My great master taught me the truth of the world. They made me the man I am today. They're the reason why Abe has developed such an interesting personality. They just warped his mind and completely ruined a kid's life. You hate to see it. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Please wait, Mr. Cost. I shall share information regarding the departed case on one condition. That condition being, you must complete my trial. <laughs> it's all good, thanks. <laughs> I've been, my, I, the weather here has been, like, super all over the road the last couple of weeks, which has also added to everything just being stressful. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, it's just made my lungs very unhappy. Um, but, pro but props to you for getting dishes done. You got this. Uh, that condition being, you must complete my trial. Oh, one, uh... What trial? I want to see your true abilities as the spirit doctor. <laughs> it's it's definitely gotten better in the last couple of days, but it's just like, it was really cold, and then it was really hot, and then it was really cold again. It would do that like two or three times during the day, and my lungs were just like, hey, can we not? <laughs> hey, maybe don't. It's like, I... I would love for that to be the case. Uh, be it your spiritual state or power, show me everything. I'm busy with my investigation, though. It'll take but a moment of your time. Are you ready? Yes. Now, allow me to explain the trial. I have three talismans with me. Take them and get a good look. Each talisman has a symbol on it. Triangle, square, or star. I'm going to envision one symbol in my head. I'm sure you already know what you should do, right? Oh my god, we're doing this gimmick? You merely need to read my mind with your supernatural powers and seek the symbol I'm picturing. What a silly game. Prattling of outsiders is not necessary for this trial. This is my trial for Mr. Cost. 
but I'm not a psychic, let alone someone with supernatural powers. Humbling yourself, I see. I've selected a symbol. Now demonstrate your powers to me. Abe starts mumbling something, as if he's meditating. Same one is what they call a pentagram in divination, which would be star. But he might be trying to throw me off. And the correct answer could be either triangle or square. Jesus Christ! Sorry. I don't know, again, as usual, I don't know if my microphone is picking that up, but it's horrible. Um, do I need to give a correct answer, though? Iraqi's talismans. <laughs> what? <I do. laughs> How do I win this battle? I show him my creepy petri dish. What is the other option? Look into the petri dish. If I look into it as if I'm divining something, maybe he'll just be like, wait, what the fuck is that? Why does showing the Petri disc cost, cost more? I just want to show this Petri dish to everyone. I just want to freak him out. Both of us try opening the lid of the Petri dish to see the inside. The hideous centipede shows up the moment I open the lid. Pretty sure Abe's terrified of bugs, Machine. Oh yeah! He's the bug boy. <laughs> awesome. Goss, why don't you give the little brat a look at what's inside the dish? I present the petri dish to Abe, making sure he gets a good look at the centipede inside. <laughs> Excuse me. Centipede! Get it away from me, please! Are you gonna give me your information then? You underhanded scoundrels! This is unfair! There's a lesson for you. Never under uh, underestimate the craftiness of adults, you brat. What will you do now? Oh, fine, I lose. Get the petri dish away from me now. Looks like this is the right choice. <laughs> I wonder if you can, like, select the right shape that he's thinking of. I mean, it's very much like a, a guessing situation, right? But I wonder if they did, like, code that. So if you happen to guess the right one, you'd, like, earn his respect or something. <laughs> I might look that up later just to see if that's a thing. I I've learned a lot. So this is how you exterminate spirits. You observe them and then strike at their weaknesses. How incredible. Spirit doctor. I mean, we still earned his, his respect, I guess. I fulfilled my end of the bargain, Abe. Time for you to spill everything you know. Understood. Kokuri! I'll let him know that a new notice has arrived and ask him about Mr. Kokuri. So this time it's Mr. Kokuri, huh? I know him, obviously. A spirit that haunts the shrine in the second floor's connecting corridor, as well as the fox forest, is it not? Forest? That's news to me. Goodness me, the spirit doctor didn't even know that trivial bit of information. I guess you leave me no choice. Okay, nerd. <laughs> Allow me to tell you the rumors I've learned. Okay, there we go. This was a well-known rumor that spread around ten years ago. There's an old shrine gate in the north corner of the school grounds. Beyond the gate lies a path leading to the forest. It's said he appears there at night. Oh. Oh, fuck. <laughs> That's just a man with a gun. <laughs> a man clad in white garb and a fox mask. <laughs> he is Mr. Kokuri. So basically what I'm hearing is you can just be some dude with a mask and a shotgun and then you can just go around pointing it at everyone and being like, I am a ghost. And, and then everyone will think you're a ghost. He was dubbed Kokuri because of the mask. 
As I'm sure you know, the ritual used to speak with the dead, Kokuri, summons a part fox spirit. I believe he was given the name by someone who knew he was a fox spirit. That is a man with a gun. <laughs> right? That's what I was... Like, I also would not argue with a man pointing a gun at me being like, I am a spirit! Be like, yeah, you absolutely are, my dude. Um, can I leave? <laughs> <laughs> it said Mr. Kukuri used to be a priest of the shrine in the forest. In his past life, he patrolled the path and performed ritual cleansings to keep the shrine free of negative energy. <laughs> when you say performed rituals of cleansing, do you just mean he went around and shot everything? I just said, why does he have a gun? <laughs> He continues this routine even after death. He will never forgive anyone who disgraces a shrine. Should he find one, he fucking shoots you. Yeah, oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> he will shoot that scoundrel right in the head. That is the Mr. Kukuri I know. Jesus Christ. We have ghosts with guns now, y'all. Shit's just gotten <laughs> Shit's just gotten serious. <laughs> Ghost power of gun. I'm scared. Thank you for allowing me to impart my wisdom. I was unnerved with some of the other ghosts, but I am terrified of this one. Ghosts got a gun. <laughs> Guns don't work on ghosts, but if it's a ghost gun, it'll work on us. That's different from the rumor I heard. There are two rumors of Mr. Kukuri, after all. The Fox Forest rumor predates the one about the second floor shrine. Perhaps details have changed over time through the retelling of the rumor. Or, what if both rumors are actually true and none of the details have been changed at all? What if Mr. Kukuri actually shows up both in the forest and the corridor? Interesting. Unfortunately, the Mr. Cor uh, Mr. Kukuri of the Corridor is completely different from the one in the forest in terms of the period, place, and the curses they wield. Do you still think they're the same? Yeah, I think they're the same. So you still believe they're the same spirit, despite all these notice notable differences. Do you want to tell me what the differences are? Because we really don't have that much information about, about Kukuri in the Corridor versus Kukuri of the forest. It sounds like they're both protecting their shrines when they get disrespected. Um, and while one has a gun, I don't know how the other people... Well, I guess <laughs> there were mushrooms on the one dude's head. I don't know. I think they're the same. <laughs> Is this the sixth sense, sixth sense of the spirit doctor? My, I've witnessed something nice today. What do you think, Abe? I have no idea. A definitive conclusion would require more information. Should we assume both rumors are true, though, that means the two spirits are connected. Is there anything that leads you to that conclusion? More or less. The priest that became Mr. Kukuri is said to have traveled the forest path, forest path in his past life. That path connected two shrines. The first one is the shrine in the forest, and the other one is... Kukuri, sh Kukuri Shrine on the second floor. Sorry, I need to drink some more things. I think my mouth is just starting to get dry. <clears throat> Hi, I've been reading for six and a half hours. Okay. <clears throat> Kukuri Shrine on the second floor. You see that shrine was originally on the ground. Okay, so he's just pissed that somebody moved it. Kokuri appears in both shrines because they are connected. Is that what you think? Precisely. Two shrines and two rumors related to Kokuri. What could this mean? Uh, hooligan? Hooligan, huh? A person who's a far cry from the upstanding citizen? I am. Oh my god. I have the faintest idea who that might be. Do you know the delinquent girl? I described the girl who attacked me and asked if he knows her. I'm not familiar with such an individual. My left eye refuses to even see those of low spiritual state. Whatever. I take the creepy petri dish out and show it to Abe. 
So stop it! It's too much! I quickly return the Petri dish to my bag in light of Abe's feelings. Okay. Great. After I finish talking with Abe, I leave the library. Machida's phone is vibrating. Who the heck's calling me? Machida answers the phone and begins to speak. Based on the part of the conversation I overhear, I assume the caller is Hiru. Hiru said that brat's awake. She said, it's too much for me to handle. Please return ASAP. Well, it's a good thing we're like right outside. Shall we head to the infirmary? It's almost time for students to leave school anyway. You do you do the talking cost, seeing as how much you're a teacher here and all. I'm not super confident, but I'll give it a shot. Alright, infirmary. And with that... Oh, fuck. I need to get to the safe spot. Okay. I find the delinquent girl glaring at Hiru, who is clearly flustered and frustrated when I arrive at the infirmary. Oh, thank heavens. You're finally back. I tried to explain what happened to her. But she didn't even respond. I don't know what to do with her. Please do something, Cost. So the situation falls to me. Once I'm all ready, I should talk to the delinquent girl. Oh, 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 cool. Okay. We will save that for next time. Um, my God, <laughs> we have played a lot today. Um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll call it here. Um, the Kashima chapter was, was fine. It was fine. I'm much more invested in this one, and I enjoyed the little, the little romp we had at the pool. I don't know. I'm I'm very much enjoying this game, obviously, because I've just sat here for the last six and a half hours, uh, playing it. <laughs> so you know, <laughs> let that uh tell you how I feel about this game. Yeah, thanks for hanging out for as long as you have. I know that it's like, <laughs> I don't usually do like super duper long streams. Um, but we've been, we've been, I've been enjoying this game and it's been fun to share it with everyone. Um, I don't know. We haven't like had like too many, I mean, we've, we've, I, we're still, we're always doing our fair share of horror, but it's been like, it's been more mild. We've doing a lot, been doing a lot of Cults of the Lamb and there were some breaks in there as well. Um, and we've had like Silent Hill on the weekends and stuff like that, but yeah, I don't know. I've been, I've been really enjoying this. It's been very fun to like be scared um but also just enjoy the really lovely art and just a fun story i really like death mark um i think i'm gonna start playing ng uh like you know in the evenings when i'm settling down for bed because i do want to like because i never finished it um and i want to give it a try again i stopped playing it originally when i was just like playing it with emmy and we were both just kind of like eh, about it um Hold on, let me get these right messages up. Because I think we're going to go say hi to Gucky. Gucky is streaming. And it looks like Gucky is streaming some Blotro. Um, so funny cards. And and like we just said earlier, I haven't seen a Gucky stream in a while. And I've, and I've missed the last couple of Guck streams. So let's go do that. <laughs> Guck, yeah! That's what I'm saying. Um, but no, it's been really fun. And like... I don't know. I was having like a really good time doing the Realms of the Haunting playthrough on on YouTube, um, and I've had fun with with Cult of the Lamb. Do not get me wrong; it's been so fun with the new content and also just like getting as far into it as I have. Um, but this is just like I don't know. This is new, and it's part of a series that I really like, and it's just very exciting. Um, but yeah, we'll uh, see what we're gonna do in in the future. Uh, I don't know what's going on tomorrow. Maybe more of this. We might finish Homecoming. Depends on what I'm feeling. Because I am very... I'm sorry. It's just... It is just Deathmark brain rot right now. That's what's happening. But yeah. We're gonna go say hi to Gucky. Raid messages are above. Um, and we'll see y'all next time. Bye, friends. <laughs>